Hi and welcome back to my channel. This is The Country Bride. I have to apologize because at the end of the last video, The Professional Bride, I said that this is going to be a week for a groom from Billionaire Marriage Brokers. But I had completely forgotten about our country bride. And I can't skip her and just put a groom out there because the protective groom is the brother to the female main character of this book. And so without her and her family introduced and all of those things, it would like put a hiccup in everything. So had to bring out the country bride this week. Now, having said that, I was shocked that I had forgotten about Paige. And the reason I was so shocked is because this was the book that just took this series and blew it up when the series came out. This was the one. And um, so that just really surprises me that I forgot about her because she was my gateway breakout novel, so to speak. And so I'm really excited to share this book with you um, for that reason. And I apologize because now you're going to have to wait one more week to get one of the grooms from the Billionaire Marriage Broker series, but you can look forward to getting Paige's brother. Um, It'll be a lot of fun. He's really cute. So without further ado, I will let you jump into the story. I know you're going to love it. And I will see you on the other end. The Country Bride, a billionaire marriage broker's romance novel. Written by Lucy McConnell. Narrated by Christina Dimmick. Chapter 1. Paige Baker sat on the first row of bleachers, right in the center, where the auctioneer couldn't miss her. Even though it was considered spring in California, the morning temperature was cool enough to warrant a hot chocolate, and she'd wrapped an old quilt around her shoulders to ward off the chill. I've got five thousand, do I hear five five? called the auctioneer in his nasal voice. If Paige hadn't been able to see him center stage, she would have thought he was plugging his nose. He wasn't, though, his hands waved around almost as fast as his lips flapped, pointing at bidders and horses and information projected onto the screen behind him. Paige raised her eyebrows. This was definitely a higher class auction than she was used to. Most of the ones she attended on behalf of Camp Buckeye, her family's business, were held in someone's barn or arena, and you just yelled out your bid until someone yelled one higher. Still, she didn't feel as out of place as she thought she would, especially after her dad went off about the highbrow affair. Her faded jeans might not have had a designer label like the ones on the stunning blonde woman sitting next to her but that didn't stop the cowboys from checking her out when she came in at the crack of dawn to inspect the animals before the show. She'd flirted with a couple of them, but quickly moved away as their flirtation swelled to innuendos and off-color jokes. Why were good guys so hard to find? Did they really think women enjoyed being the objects of crass comments? Bidding or selling? asked the blonde. Bidding, replied Paige, checking her notes against the next horse on the block. It was a quarter horse, chestnut brown, with a sway back that spoke of better days. His docile eyes and bloated belly would have been exactly what Paige was looking for if she were buying for Camp Buckeye, her family's equestrian summer camp. But she wasn't here for mediocre. Today, Paige was after the kind of horse that could change her life. The horse was moved out and replaced with a 16-year-old gelding, who fought the lead rope and nickered in disgust at his handler. Paige relaxed against her seat. What would you say about that one? asked the woman. Paige pointed to her chest. You're asking me. My opinion? Yes. Paige turned and really looked at the woman. She was dressed in expensive clothing with a hint of western, but nothing that said she'd used a wide-mouthed shovel in a horse stall before. Cultured, and yet, she'd chosen to sit next to Paige, whose boots were covered in dust and who knew what else. Um. Paige took a moment to watch the horse canter around the arena. He's a bit high-strung. He's sound. The woman leaned closer. Come on. Don't hold back. Paige grinned. I think his attitude is rebellious. He'd be hard to handle for anyone without experience, and those who can handle him would need to establish who's the boss before each ride. 
Holding out her hand, the woman nodded once. That's exactly what I thought. Pamela Jones. It's nice to meet you, and I appreciate your candor. Paige took her hand and gave it a firm shake. Paige Baker. What do you think I'll get for him? Paige cringed. He's yours? Yes, but he's an investment, not the love of my life. Well, if she appreciates candor. You'll be lucky to get three grand. The bidding started and ended less than 45 seconds later, with Pamela pocketing just over $2,500. Paige ducked her head, feeling sorry for the poor sale. Pamela had probably spent that much in the original price of the horse and the cost of feed. We're on to page three, everyone. If you would please turn to page three in your program, said the announcer. Paige sat up taller in her seat. This was it. Folks, Grey Jet comes to us from Serenity Stables. She's a real beauty, as you can see. Her manager, Christopher Ramirez, says she's been saddle broke and is ready for roping, steer wrestling, or whatever else you want to throw her way. I'll bet she is, muttered Paige as she watched the strong, fine-looking animal enter the arena. The dapple gray was one of the most graceful horses Paige had ever laid eyes on. Darker than other dapples she'd seen, who looked like washed-out Dalmatians, this horse held its head high as it circled the dirt. Maybe Dad was right. Maybe horses do know what they're worth. Serenity Stables paraded three drop-dead gorgeous animals through the auction before the object of Paige's desires, Annie Mae, high-stepped her way in. Paige pressed her program to her chest and gasped. Every bit the stunning animal her mother was, Annie Mae was a lady antebellum love song, a lazy afternoon ride, and a Friday night under rodeo lights all rolled into one. The horse was coiled and ready to spring but waited for the signal, and she never faltered, never took more lead than her trainer allowed, never disobeyed. She. Was. Perfect. The bidding started, and Paige waited until the lowball hopefuls dropped out. No sense upping the cost until she had to. When the number reached ten grand, there were only three people left, Paige, an old dodger on the back row who kept his hat so low she couldn't make out his face, and some punk in a suit. Paige caught Pamela signaling the suit to drop out. He did, and it was just Paige and the mystery man. As the numbers climbed, Paige watched the handler work the lead rope between his hands, the horse now standing just behind his left shoulder. Paige lifted her arm as the announcer asked, Do I have 15,000? 15,000 going once. Paige kept her eyes forward. That was all she had. If she lost this bid, she'd lose the horse and her chance to start her own farm. Sold to the pretty lady on the front row. The gavel hit the platform and Paige let out a whoop as the thrill of victory overtook her. Laughter filled the arena, and Paige's face turned pink. The Dodger stormed out the back exit. That's all we have for you today, folks. If you'll come settle up, we'd much appreciate it. Paige hopped to her feet, ready to claim her spoils. Congratulations. Pamela beamed as if she had won the bid. Thank you. Paige was so happy she wanted to pinch herself to make sure this was real. I own a company and I have openings every now and again. If you're interested, give me a call. Pamela handed her a business card, and their eyes locked. The world tilted, and Paige felt like she was spinning round and round. Then, it just stopped, making her lurch out to the sides to gain her balance. I have a good feeling about you. Pamela smiled and then joined the suit at the exit. They spoke for a moment, and the suit glanced back at Paige. Squealing, she hurried over to the long table to settle her account. Tucking Pamela's business card into her purse, she dug out her debit card. She didn't need a new job, she was going to build herself a horse training business. Chapter 2 A light breeze crossed Cody's skin, and he felt goosebumps prickle to life as he stared at the oasis in his backyard. Counting his blessings could take him days and that was why, in moments like this, he felt shame for wanting more. Not more things. 
just one thing that he'd had once and loved more than life itself. But Kylie wasn't coming back, and he had a little girl who needed a goodnight kiss. Being as quiet as possible, in case Addison had already fallen asleep, Cody climbed the stairs. At the top, he stooped to pick up one of Addison's princess pony books off the floor and heard Ava's voice as the nanny tucked Addison into bed. Not wanting to interrupt a story, he leaned against the wall outside to listen in. His daughter soaked up stories, remembering little details and adding her own during the telling. For the life of him, Cody couldn't understand why her kindergarten teacher classified Addison as learning impaired. She was bright. Yes, she struggled with letters and such, but some kids learn faster than others. When the school year ended, he withdraw her name from the roster of that good-for-nothing school. He'd need to find a new elementary for fall, but he hoped this summer would be a time for Addison to regain her confidence. And the king sent a proclamation throughout the land that the prince could marry a woman no matter her station in life. Ava's voice was like too much salt on popcorn, and Cody frowned. What station in life? asked Addison. Well, back in olden times, a person's station was decided by the amount of money they had. If they didn't have any money, then they had a low station. If they had a lot, like the king, then they had a high station, answered Ava. So the servant girl was able to wed the prince and move into the palace with her child. Did she get a new daddy? Cody cocked his head to listen closer. Addison's voice had taken on a slightly different tone, the one she used when she was thinking things through, and he wondered what was going on in that little head of hers. She did get a new daddy. Blankets rustled, and Cody heard Ava set the picture book on the bookshelf. What about you? Do you want a new mommy? asked Ava. Cody about swallowed his tongue. The only thing keeping him from barreling into the room like a mad bear was that a small part of him wondered if Addison felt like she was missing out. He did his best to provide for her every need, but there were some holes a father couldn't fill in a little girl's life. He'd hoped he had at least a few more years before the subject came up. She was only eight months old when Kylie died, so she had no memory of her mother. In many ways, Addison was well beyond her age. Ava continued, a mommy would be able to tuck you in at night and take you to school and come to your class with cupcakes on your birthday. Mommies bake cookies and make dinner and braid your hair and take you shopping. They love you forever and ever. Would you like that? Cody held his breath in the silence, but it didn't stay quiet for long. Addison must have nodded, because Ava continued. Maybe I could be your mommy. We could be a real family. Cody's curiosity evaporated under the angry inferno, consuming his mind, and his face turned scarlet. Ava had gone much too far with this fairy tale. It was one thing to make advancements toward him when Addison wasn't around. Which Cody laughed off or sidestepped to the best of his ability. But it was completely inappropriate to brainwash his daughter into believing she needed a mother or that they weren't a real family without one. Bedtime. Cody announced as he burst into the room. Ava stepped away from the bed, yanking her hands back as if she'd been caught stealing from the till. Cody wished she had just stolen his money. That would have been forgivable. Manipulating a child, his child, was deplorable. Walking quickly to Addison, Cody kissed her on the forehead and then the nose. Are you snug? he asked, tucking the blankets around her legs and working to hold back his anger. There was no need for Addison to think he was upset at her. She giggled. Yes. Good. He tickled her knees until she squealed. Love you. Addison kissed his stubble-covered cheek. You're like a porcupine, daddy. He tickled her once more, just for good measure. Love you, she said. Cody straightened and met Ava's gaze. He motioned for her to follow him out, and he didn't stop until he was at the bottom of the stairs. With each stair, his steps grew heavier until, by the time he reached the bottom, he was stomping. Ava, he began, working to keep his voice low so as not to disturb his daughter, I overheard what you said to Addison. Ava bit her bottom lip and shifted so she was closer. 
I hope it wasn't too forward. I think we're both thinking the same thing, and I wanted to gauge her feelings on the subject. Cody leaned away from her. And what is it we are both thinking? Might as well hear it all. I've seen the way you watch me, and together we are so good with Addison. Ava's hands went to his chest and slid up to his shoulders. He fought the urge to swipe them away as if they were spiders or snakes. You need to let go of the past, Cody. Let me help you forget your pain, forget Kylie. Her hands caressed his arms. We could have a June wedding. Cody jumped away. He didn't want to forget Kylie. Why would he? She was the bright star in his life. Ava, this isn't happening. He wagged his finger back and forth between the two of them. Ava's arms had remained frozen in the air at his sudden withdrawal. Only now did they drop to her side. Are you sure you wouldn't at least consider us? She asked, her voice small. We could keep it under wraps and just see how things went. Cody tried to picture a life with Ava. It was preposterous. He'd hired her because of her degree in education. He'd thought she'd be able to help Addison catch up before starting school in the fall. And she'd worked on Addison's reading, but he felt no spark, no draw, no attraction toward her. Though she was what many men would consider fetching, the idea of making her his wife was repelling. I'm sorry, he said evenly. Ava's lips pulled back into a sneer. In her seamless transformation from sugar sweet to downright nasty, Cody's remaining doubts about sending her away were set free. How much of Ava's happy countenance was balderdash and how much of it was sincere, he'd never know, nor would he care to take the time to contemplate the question. Her true colors were written in that scornful look. I'm wasting my time here. Ava flounced up the stairs. Cody followed quickly behind. Not because he wanted to change his mind or keep her here, but because he wanted to stand guard over Addison until this wretched woman left his home. He stood in Addison's doorway, making a mental list of the things he had to do once he escorted Ava out. Top priority was changing the key code to the front gate so she could never get back in. Following Ava out the back door, Cody grabbed his cell phone. Neither of them said a word as Ava chucked her suitcase in the back seat of her sedan. She slammed the door and, with a final flip of her hair, gave Cody the bird and pulled out. Cody raised an eyebrow at the farewell. He hit a button on his cell and pressed it to his ear. The squabble with Ava was a minor inconvenience. As the owner of several dealerships, he'd learned to let angry gestures roll off his back so he could move on. Tonight, he had more pressing matters to spend his mental energy on than an exploitative nanny. By the time her taillights hit the main road, Ava was already a distant memory. As he listened to the phone ring, Cody's eyes roamed the pool, the private hot tub with a waterfall, the palm trees, the palm fronds, the closely cut grass, and the padded lounge chairs. The yard was meant to be a piece of paradise, and yet he hardly used it. You're the boss. Christopher gave his customary greeting upon answering the phone. He was twenty years Cody's senior if he was a day, and Cody enjoyed his company. Just checking in to see if we're all ready for the auction tomorrow. We. You mean you're coming? Cody got the impression he was needling him. By we, I mean you. Right. We're good. Grey Jet and Grey Rose should fetch a fair price. The two geldings will bring in some good money with the training they've had. It's Annie Mae who'll bring in the big bucks. You sure you want to part with her? Cody clenched and unclenched his hands. Annie Mae was the offspring of Mae June, Kylie's champion barrel racing horse, who had died in the same accident that took Kylie's life. He hadn't seen Annie Mae since the day Addison had climbed into one of the stalls and he'd banished the horses from his property. Kylie had meant for Addison to have Annie Mae when she began racing, but that wasn't going to happen. Horses were a huge part of Kylie's life, and for Cody, being around them was like scrubbing an open wound. He didn't hate the animals. He still respected them. Because of that respect, he was doing what he believed was best for Annie Mae. 
she would be much happier learning to compete and answering the athletic call that came through her bloodline. Selling her wasn't an act of desperation, it was, at least in his mind, an act of mercy. I'm sure. When do you pull out? I'll leave the stables at six in the morning. That will give me time to get the horses settled and happy before they go on the block. Sounds good. Thanks. Yep. Christopher hung up without saying goodbye. From anyone else it would seem rude, from Christopher it was familiar. An hour later, Cody was at the keypad in the front of the house, his guilt over selling Kylie's horse tucked safely away. The front door was more of a front gate as it sat between the one-bedroom guest house that functioned as a pool house and the side of the garage. Once through the gate, you were in the backyard, and then there were two doors into the house itself. The first one on the left opened into the living room, which was connected to the kitchen and dining room in an open floor plan. The second door went to the master suite. Cody had just gotten through the ten-step process of resetting the four-digit code when the sound of tires on his tree-lined drive brought his head up. A black SUV pulled into the open parking area in front of the garage. His friend Gabe Russell got out and went around to open the door for his wife, Michaela. Cody groaned even as he pasted a smile on his face. With everything that had happened with Ava, he'd completely forgotten Gabe was coming to pick up a donation check for the children's center. Gabe wanted to open a branch of the charity in Norco, near one of Cody's dealerships, and, knowing how much good the foundation was doing in other areas, Cody had immediately agreed to help. He waved hello and quickly punched in the new code for the front door locks. He'd have to send the information to the maid service, the cook who came three times a week, and the maintenance company in the morning. Good to see you. Gabe offered his hand. Cody shook it, making himself relax and forget his own sorrow. Gabe was a good guy, and this meeting should be pleasant. You too. Michaela, how are you doing? Good. We're moving ahead with the expansion, and it's busy, but going well. Wonderful. Why don't you come inside? Cody held out his arm to indicate that Michaela should go first. She gasped when she stepped through the gate. This is beautiful. It looks like the resort we stayed at on our honeymoon. Without the ocean view, amended Gabe with a smile. He slipped his arm around Michaela's thin waist and pulled her to his side. We should go back. Soon. Michaela's eyes sparked with desire as Gabe kissed her neck. Cody felt like an outsider in his own backyard. He cleared his throat. Do you want me to leave you two alone? He teased. Just be careful, Addison's window is right there. He pointed to the one overlooking the pool. Michaela's cheeks turned a pretty pink color, and Cody could see why Gabe had fallen for her fast enough to elope. We'll be fine, thank you. But if you ever need a house sitter, Gabe kissed Michaela's temple and earned a playful shove in return. Cody shook his head. Gabe and Michaela had an amazing house themselves, one he wouldn't mind spending a week vacationing in. Come on inside. I have the check in my office. After inviting them to have a seat in the living room, Gabe went to fetch the donation. He came back to find Addison on Michaela's lap. Her hair was bunched in the back like she'd been tossing in bed, but her eyes were bright. What are you doing up? Cody asked with a smile. He handed the check to Gabe and took Addison's hand. I wanted to meet my new mommy, but she says she's not her. Addison pointed to Michaela, who smiled fondly. Are you getting married? Gabe asked. Wanting to get out of this conversation as quickly as possible, Cody kept his answer short. No, Cody picked up Addison and put her on his hip. I'll be right back. Addison leaned her head on his shoulder. It wasn't like her to wake up once she fell asleep. Cody worried that by dismissing Ava, he disrupted his daughter's life once again. Ava was the fourth nanny in less than eight months. If the constant turnover kept up, Addison could develop some real commitment issues. He tucked Addison back into bed and left her door open. 
With Ava gone, he'd sleep on the sofa upstairs so he could be close if she needed him. Rubbing his hand over his face, he resigned himself to a couple weeks of poor sleep. When Cody hit the bottom stair, Gabe asked, Are you sure you're not getting married? Addison was sure she was getting a mommy. Cody scratched at his cheek. Gabe never was one to be put off easily. It was wishful thinking that leaving the room would change the subject. Sinking into the chair across from his guests and propping his feet up on the coffee table, Cody crossed his ankles. It's been a long day. His eyes went back and forth between Michaela's and Gabe's expectant looks, and he decided he might as well fill them in. First he explained about Ava hitting on him, and then he went over her attempt to sway Addison to her cause. Michaela made a face. How awful. So you understand why I had to let her go. I was just changing the locks when you two pulled up. That is a rough day. Gabe leaned back and threw his arm over the back of the couch. Michaela leaned in and they locked gazes, some sort of communication passing between them. Finally, Gabe nodded. Straightening, Michaela cleared her throat. If you were interested in finding someone. Cody leaned forward. I need a new nanny. Yesterday would have been a great day to hire her. What are you looking for, exactly? asked Michaela. She exchanged a knowing look with Gabe. Cody picked up a coaster from the side table and turned it over in his hands. I need someone who can look after Addison. Someone who has experience with children. She'd need to live here and be available at the drop of a hat. Gabe leaned forward placing his hands on his knees. Aren't there nanny services? Cody ran his thumb around the edge of the coaster. There are. I've used several since Grandma Mia retired last fall. The first girl turned out to be pregnant and claimed I was the father, though I'd never so much as looked at her. The second said she was looking for something long-term, but was really only interested in covering the break between semesters. The third had a parte, if you know what I mean, in the backyard while I was out of town and Addison was locked in her room. And you've just heard about Ava. Cody rubbed his eyes. I just, all the stuff Ava said about a mom made sense. I feel like Addison is missing out on all these little girl things. I'd like someone who isn't interested and wouldn't become interested in me. Does that make sense? Gabe nodded. I know exactly what you mean. Michaela rested her hand on Gabe's back. Tell him about BMB. Cody's hands went still. If they had an in with a great nanny service, he'd be all ears. He's not going to like it, Gabe told her. Michaela nudged Gabe. It's the perfect solution. Tell him. Gabe shook his head. Confidentiality agreement. Cody was more than intrigued by Gabe's tight-lipped behavior. He enjoyed watching the two of them go back and forth and wondered how this would end. Michaela folded her arms. Pamela won't mind. If you don't tell him, I will. Her voice was light and there was no malice there. Cody wouldn't have even called it a threat. Gabe took a big breath, lifting his chest as if he were gearing up for a big project. He dug out his wallet and found a business card, which he handed to Cody. Pamela Jones. BMB. What's BMB? Cody pointed to the card. Billionaire marriage brokers, Gabe mumbled. Cody dropped the card and held up both hands. No way. Told you. Gabe leaned back and threw one ankle over the other knee, looking smug. Michaela crossed the space and picked up the card where it had fallen. It's not what you think. She spoke softly, like she was trying to get a colt to eat his deworming medicine for the first time. Pamela specializes in business marriages. She matches up people who have specific needs or talents. Cody eyed the card warily. Business marriages. Is that even a thing? He looked at Michaela, letting all his doubts show on his face. Gabe enjoyed a good joke. Maybe they were pulling one over on him. 
They. They. The gears in Cody's head came to a screeching halt. Michaela's hasty involvement in Gabe's charities, their elopement, Gabe's overwhelming trust in Michaela from the first day, despite what he'd gone through with his ex-girlfriend. Cody turned to Gabe. You, he accused as he pointed to Michaela. Gabe lifted his chin. Best decision I ever made. Michaela threw a smile over her shoulder at Gabe before turning back to Cody and pressing the card into his hand. Not all B&B marriages turn out like mine and Gabe's. We weren't supposed to fall in love. She shrugged. But it happened. Pamela would find a wonderful woman to watch over Addison. You don't have to love your business wife, you just have to be able to work with her. Cody gently pushed Michaela's hand away. Thanks, but I'm just not interested in marriage. I'll find another nanny. A nanny who would last longer than three months. He'd learned they were difficult to come by. Gabe stood and joined Michaela. If you change your mind, let me know. I will, said Cody. But he knew all the way down to his boots that there was nothing on God's green earth that would move him to change his mind about getting married again. Chapter 3 Paige pulled into the barnyard with a thrill of anticipation. She planned to get Annie May settled in, introduce her to the other horses, make sure they were all getting along, and then get on with the rest of her responsibilities. If she hurried, she'd be done by early afternoon and could spend the evening in the arena working Annie May. A melancholy feeling overtook Paige. Yet again, she'd spent a Saturday night with a horse instead of a boyfriend. As much as she loved her animals, they were no replacement for the strong arms of an attractive man. She was loath to admit it, but her dating life resembled the old mare with the swayback at the auction. Not going anywhere fast, and with little hope of any excitement. Shifting into park, Paige let her mind drift away into a daydream about a man with dark brown hair and day-old stubble, who was kind to children and looked good in a saddle. Her dream man had a smile that made her heart pound and... Knock. 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 Paige jumped in her seat as the pounding on the window increased. What the? Dad pointed to the barn and then stormed off. Lord, don't abandon me now, she muttered as she squeaked open the heavy truck door and slid out of the seat. It would do no good to act repentant for spending every penny she owned on Annie Mae, because she wasn't sorry at all. Dad paced the length of the twelve-stall barn. His boots sounded heavy on the concrete floor. Paige hovered at the doorway before striding confidently to stall number three and swinging the door open. It had been empty for weeks, and she needed to make sure the manger was clean and the water barrel full before she could move Annie Mae inside. You gonna wear a hole in the floor or just say what you have to say, nettled Paige. In her opinion, the pacing and the huffing and the grumbling were a bit overdramatic for the situation. You deliberately disobeyed me. Dad yelled. You've thrown away your money as if it falls from the sky. Paige spun on him, indignant. I'm 27, I don't have to obey you. I followed my gut and it led me right to that horse. She jabbed her finger in the direction of the trailer. She's everything I'd hoped and more. Dad's eyes had gone as big as oranges. I taught you better than that. You don't speak to me that way. You buy a fancy horse and all of a sudden you forget where you come from. He was still yelling, working himself into a tizzy. Paige folded her arms. Came from, she ground out. What? A sense of peace washed over Paige, starting at her shoulders, calming her racing heart, stilling her rolling stomach, and ending the restlessness in her legs. She dropped her arms and straightened her back. Came from, not come from. I've been offered a job and I'm leaving. Pamela had offered to place her somewhere in her company. Dad took a step back. His hand shook as he brought it up to cover his eyes. Paige's confidence wavered. Angry dad she could handle, vulnerable dad was not familiar territory. When, he asked. A couple days, she said softly. In truth, she had no idea if Pamela would hire her 
though she'd seemed sincere in her offer. You'd better take that horse with you. I'm not paying to feed it while you're off playing around. Dad spun on the heel of his alligator boots and disappeared out the back door. Paige let him go, her eyes stinging. Nothing worth doing in life was ever easy, her mom would say. She wiped under her lashes with the pads of her fingers. No sense standing around and letting the weeds grow under her boots. Dad would calm down, he just needed some time. Paige unloaded Annie Mae. You're special, aren't ya? Paige said as they entered the barn. She led Annie Mae into the stall and turned her around before taking off the halter. Annie Mae sniffed the manger and inspected her new surroundings. Don't get too comfortable, Paige warned. Feeling an urgency she couldn't explain, Paige hurried to her truck and dug through the receipts to find Pamela's card. She used her cell phone to call Pamela's office. Paige panicked, unsure what to say and losing all of her former gumption. What if she'd just quit only to have nowhere to go? BMB, this is Tina speaking. How may I direct your call? Hi, um, I met Pamela, Paige glanced at the card. Jones this morning, and she offered. Paige stopped. She couldn't very well say Pamela offered her a job. That sounded so presumptuous. An interview for an opening. Paige prayed Tina wouldn't ask her which opening. If this conversation got any deeper, Paige would have to bail out. Wonderful. I can get you in with Harrison Monday morning. Will that work for you? How early? The closer to 12, the better for Paige. She could get her morning work done and take a long lunch. Will 10 work? Is there something closer to noon? We can do noon. Paige nodded, then realized Tina couldn't see her. Okay. I'll be there. Do you have our address? Tina asked politely. Paige popped open the glove box and rummaged for a pen. I don't. Tina rattled it off and Paige wrote it on the back of a receipt. The company was about an hour south of Norco. Not a fantastic commute, but manageable. We'll see you Monday, Tina said, before hanging up. Paige melted into the seat. She hadn't realized how brave she was until her courage evaporated, leaving her hands to shake in its absence. Penny Page. Mom called from the back porch, her voice muffled since Page was still in the truck. Hannah needs your help in the garden. Page rolled down the window. Let me park the trailer and I'll be over. Mom lifted a hand to let Page know she'd heard. Hannah always had a hard time getting the tiller started and had probably flooded the engine with her well-meaning attempts. Paige suddenly had a whole new understanding of Hannah's failure to master the tiller. In her rush to make changes, Paige had flooded her life with questions, sorrow, and uncertainty. Knowing she had the rest of the weekend in limbo, a state that usually gave her a migraine, Paige steeled herself for a Sunday full of worry and self-retribution. She'd never looked forward to a Monday in her life, but suddenly Monday was looking just dandy. Chapter 4 Early Monday morning, Cody set his laptop bag next to the park bench and motioned for Addison to join him. He needed to tell her Ava wasn't coming back, but he wasn't sure how to do it. She'd been particularly fond of all the girly things they did together. The park was sleepy at this hour, so the place was his and Addison's, and he preferred it that way. Addison situated herself on the bench and Cody jumped right in, trying to put a positive spin on yet another loss in his daughter's life. I've decided it's time to make some new friends, so I'm going to find you a new nanny. Addison's big eyes watched him. Ava's gone. Cody nodded slowly. He knew this would be hard and he was prepared to scoop up his little girl and rock her until the tears dried up. Will you get me a mommy now? asked Addison. Her eyes were clear and she didn't seem upset, which bothered him more than if she had burst into tears. No sadness, no disappointment. What kind of a robot was he turning his daughter into? I think we'll just look for a nanny. Addison shook her head, 
her two golden brown braids swinging. No. I've had nannies. It's time for a mommy. Ah, so that's where the calm resolve came from. Cody chuckled. Mommies are much harder to come by. Hire one. Addison said it with such innocence of the ways of the world that Cody knew she believed it was entirely possible to hire a mommy. His eyebrows went up. Honey, you don't hire mommies. Addison slouched down in her seat. He wrapped his arm around her and hugged her to his side. Why do you want a mommy so much? He kissed the top of her head. Mommies love their girls. Daddies do, too. It's not the same. Addison put her elbow on his leg and rested her chin in her hand. Mommies know all about being a girl, and they teach you how. Oh. Cody was caught off guard by the longing in Addison's voice. Three successful car dealerships, one tractor dealership, one horse trailer dealership, and enough money to travel around the world multiple times, and he couldn't give his daughter the one thing she ached for. He was beginning to wonder whether it was Ava who put the idea in Addison's head, or if Addison had encouraged the nanny. No matter whose idea it was, they were better off without the abominable Ava. The icy look in her eyes was something he never wanted to see in a wife. Maybe if Addison understood more about how moms came about, she'd be less inclined to pine for one. In order for you to get a new mom, she'd have to be my wife. We'd be married. Addison brightened. That's good. You need a mommy, too. She scrunched her nose. Can you hire a bride? According to Gabe, you can. Cody didn't want to even tiptoe near that option. A professional bride seemed far-fetched for the modern age. People went online or to speed dating events, they didn't hire a bride. That was crazy. Addison, I'm happy with us. We make a good team. Two isn't a team, Daddy. A mommy would make us a team. He kissed her head once again, knowing full well she wasn't going to let this one go. Maybe he should at least inquire about BMB. Finding a nanny could take weeks, and he could already sense the work piling up as he sat here trying to talk his daughter out of wanting a mom. He wondered how long it took to hire a bride. I have to get some work done. Are you ready to go on the slide? Sure. Addison hopped off the bench and ran across the wood chips. Cody pulled his laptop out of the bag and opened it up. He sent an email to Gabe first thing, asking for the number to BMB since he'd thrown away the card Gabe left behind. Then, he went into his inbox to address the urgent needs of his managers. He made several phone calls and was in the middle of creating a spreadsheet to track demographics on those who had bought horse trailers from his dealership in the last six months when Gabe's email came through. Cody hit save on the spreadsheet and dialed the number quickly, as if it were just one more item on his to-do list for the day. BMB, this is Tina speaking. How may I direct your call? Cody froze. How did one go about asking for a wife? Hello? Tina prompted. Um. Cody cleared his throat. Hi. My name is Cody Walker and I was given this number by Gabe Russell. Um. I'd like to make an appointment? If Tina was put off by his hesitancy, she didn't show it. Of course. Harrison has an opening this afternoon at 2. Cody scrambled to find a pen. Where are you located? Tina gave him the address. The company was located closer to L.A. I'm about an hour north, he said with relief. Distance and travel were as good an excuse as any to put off meeting with a marriage broker. Maybe he should set something up for next week, give himself time to get used to the idea. A woman walked by on her way to the swings, holding her little girl's hand. She looked down at the child with love so thick Cody could have reached out and grabbed some. Addison might never experience that with her mom, but he could at least provide a shadow of it for her. I'll be there. Wonderful. We'll see you then. Cody said goodbye and hung up. He ran his hand through his hair, 
wondering if he was making the right decision or not. Finding Gabe's number in his phone, Cody hit the call button. It wasn't Gabe who answered, it was Michaela. Hi, Cody. Gabe's in a meeting with his development team. Cody scratched at his chin. He might as well talk to her. I have an appointment with BMB this afternoon, he blurted. There was a quiet gasp. I guess congratulations are in order. Not yet. I'm just gathering information. Is there anything I can help you with? Tell me I'm not crazy for considering this. He dropped his chin to his chest. Michaela laughed. Everyone has their reasons, but none of them are insanity. When Gabe signed up, he was looking for someone he could trust to oversee his charities until he could retire from his company and do it himself. Maybe it would be good to get a woman's perspective on this, see what he was getting himself into. Why did you sign up? Once the words were out, Gabe realized how personal the question was. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pry. Don't worry about it. I wanted to start my own business and needed the time and money that a BMB arrangement provided. So there was something in it for you? It's part of Pamela's strategy to match up two people who have what the other needs or wants. In our case, I had the experience and knowledge to run things for Gabe, and Gabe had the time and money to pay me to do it. I know it sounds cold, but it's really a professional endeavor. Cold and professional with him were fine as long as the woman was warm and caring with Addison. You're actually selling me on this. I do work in marketing, quipped Michaela. They shared a laugh, and the line grew quiet again. What's holding you back? asked Michaela. Cody kicked at the grass. He wouldn't admit this to just anyone, but Michaela, having been through the whole BMB thing before, would have the answers he was looking for. I'd like to say that Ava was the first nanny to think there would be more between us, but she wasn't. I still love Kylie, and I'm not ready to date, let alone have a relationship or a marriage that includes intimacy. Michaela's voice got softer. BMB marriages are platonic. Husbands and wives are not expected to share a bedroom or a bed. If you decide to sign up, they'll walk you through all that in the prenuptial agreement. Cody relaxed his shoulders. No wedding night. No expectations for love and tenderness with a woman he didn't know nor care about. It sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? Michaela giggled. I guess the catch would be if you fell in love. Cody closed his computer and stowed it in the bag, which he slung over his shoulder. Then I guess there is no catch. He pulled the phone away from his ear so he could check the time. Cody needed to stop in at the Dodge dealership and get him and Addison some lunch before leaving for BMB. I better get going. I have a meeting to get to. I'd wish you luck, but with Pamela Jones on your side, you won't need it. Cody wasn't sure what that meant, but he didn't have time to ask. Thanks. I'll see you later. They hung up and he called to Addison. We have to get going. She took the slide down and ran over. Cody wished he could muster up that much energy for anything in life. Addison was so good for him. During his darkest times, her smile could bring the sunshine into his day. He prayed that whatever happened at the BMB office, he'd be able to make the right decision for both of them. Chapter 5 Paige checked her lipstick in the elevator mirror. She rarely went so far as to apply more than mascara and a touch of eyeshadow. The horses and kids at camp didn't care if she wore blush. However, for a job interview, Paige was willing to make the extra effort. She'd also shined her best pair of boots and put on an ankle-length tiered skirt of black eyelet. She finished the look with a red shirt and a wide leather belt that accentuated her waistline. The elevator doors slid open to reveal a reception desk and the BMB logo. At least I have the right place. Stepping forward, Paige approached the rib high desk and the perky redhead on the phone. Of course. Harrison has an opening this afternoon at 2. 
Tina smiled and mouthed, I'll be right with you to Paige. Paige nodded and took a step back to give her space to finish the call. Wonderful. We'll see you then. Tina typed for just a second and then stood to greet Paige. Miss Baker? Yes. Paige smiled. Tina's professional smile widened into a full-on welcome girlfriend grin. I love your hair. Where do you get that color? Her hand went up to her own pale strawberry locks. Paige shrugged. My mom gave it to me. Lucky. Tina dropped her hand. Let's take you back to Harrison's office, and he'll get your paperwork started. Paige's feet wouldn't move. It was like Tina's words had glued her boots to the carpet. Paperwork? Tina lifted one thin shoulder. Pamela is aware of your appointment today and asked that I expedite you through the hiring process. She gave another one of her conspiratorial girlfriend grins. Come on. You've got a busy week ahead of you. Paige brushed her fingers down her skirt, thankful that she'd taken the front row at the auction and somehow made a good impression on the boss. Tina showed her into the office and then dashed off to answer the phone. You're the suit, Paige blurted as she took Harrison's outstretched hand. I'm the what? Harrison leaned forward, as if he hadn't heard her correctly. Paige realized how rude she'd sounded. At the horse auction, you were the guy. Well, one of the guys. Bidding against me for Annie Mae. Ah, that didn't turn out too well for me, now, did it? Harrison's eyes crinkled at the corners. Paige smiled to herself. While Harrison was attractive, he didn't make her insides melt like her dream guy. Sorry. I didn't mean to rub salt in the wound. Harrison motioned for her to take a seat. No wounds. Pamela has been trying to rope me into the horse market for years. I was actually relieved I didn't have to figure out where to keep her. I hope Annie May is treating you well. Paige sat down. She's flawless. I don't know how I'm ever going to let her go. Settling in across from her, Harrison asked, Why would you sell her? Paige sighed. My goal is to train her to run barrels and pulls like her mother, and then sell her as a PRCA level horse. Harrison leaned forward and placed his forearms on the desk. Can you do that? Paige nodded. I believe I can. I've been training horses my whole life. Annie May will be my first horse to go to that level of competition, but we're both dedicated, so I expect it will all work out. Sounds like she ended up in the right place. Paige thought so too, but she didn't want to seem prideful, so she merely smiled. Harrison returned her smile before opening a folder. The first step in working for BMB is the confidentiality agreement. For the next 45 minutes, Paige signed and initialed everywhere Harrison pointed. By the time they were done, she thought her signature looked more like a sixth grader's than a grown woman's. Normally I'd send you to meet with a few others, but Pamela asked to speak to you as soon as we were done here. She'd like to explain the nature of your position and get your input on a few details. He tapped the papers on the desk and slid them into the folder. Paige looked at the clock on the wall. With the hour-long drive to get here, she was already pushing a late lunch into afternoon off territory. Deciding that seeing to her future job took priority over keeping her old one, Paige rose to follow Harrison out the door and to the office at the end of the hallway, where he tapped on the frame before entering. Pamela, now in a cream-colored business suit instead of designer jeans and boots, stood to welcome Paige into her office. I'm so glad you decided to join us. She gave Paige a one-armed hug. Harrison, I've sent you information for your two o'clock, will you add it to the file? I will. Harrison nodded to Paige. It was nice to meet you, Miss Baker. You too. The more people she met at BMB, the more she felt like it was one of the few offices she could stand. On her way in, she'd noticed a plaza with several benches. If she could escape outside for lunch or a break every now and again, she might not shrivel up in the artificial lighting. 
Pamela showed Paige to one of the two chairs in front of her desk and took the other, angling her body toward Paige. I'd like to tell you a bit about what we do here, and then you're free to ask questions. All right? Paige nodded. Are you aware of how a matchmaker works? Paige lowered her eyebrows. In theory. I'm a little hazy on the details. Billionaire Marriage Brokers is a matchmaking service of sorts. We focus on connecting two people with specific needs. Let's say there was a doctor who had been so absorbed in his work that he hadn't taken time to build himself a life. He lived in a dumpy apartment when he went home at all, didn't have any friends, and had isolated himself from the world. However, because of this behavior, his work suffered. He didn't have any sort of balance. What he does have is money to pay someone to help him. Okay. Paige followed, but she wasn't sure where they were headed, and she felt a bit like a horse with blinders on. Now, suppose there was a woman who was a life coach. Her job was to teach individuals how to make healthy decisions that will affect their career and improve their life. Okay. We put those two people together for a limited time, knowing that they can improve one another's lives and careers. Paige felt a light go on in her head. Put them together as in marry them. Yes. Pamela stated. For a limited time? A year is our standard contract, replied Pamela. So they get married knowing they're getting a divorce? It sounded so strange to Paige. In her house, when you took vows, they were the forever kind of vows, in a church, before God. No one she knew. Not her old girlfriends, not her older brother, and certainly not her parents. Had ever gotten married knowing they were headed for divorce. Most married people she knew did everything they could to avoid it. Although, the concept of a contractual marriage intrigued her. There were people who actually did this, and it didn't sound too bad as long as there were clear rules up front. Paige flexed her cramped hand. After all the papers she'd just signed, she was pretty sure BMB had the rules written, signed, initialed, and fingerprinted before a marriage took place. While we call them marriages, and they are legally binding, our clients consider them a professional contract with a goal. Paige pressed her fingers to her forehead, hoping she wasn't going to offend Pamela with her next question. Is this legal? Pamela laughed. I assure you, it is legal and moral. Matchmaking goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden, my dear. Paige lifted her eyebrows. Yes, matchmaking has been around for centuries. I'm not concerned about that. Then what does concern you? Paige bit her cheek. Pamela's laugh tinkled like fine china. Be honest with me. Paige smiled, thinking of her honesty at the auction. Pamela had taken it well then, and Paige hoped she would take it well now. It's the idea of a divorce deadline. It seems so, pessimistic. Pamela smiled kindly. I can see that perspective. In fact, you're not the first bride to be concerned over the arrangement. Then why the deadline? A business marriage is quite different from a love match. Though they are similar in many ways. The marriage you aspire to, and believe me, it's one we all aspire to, has goals. Goals that stretch across a lifetime. A home, a family, grandchildren. They are accomplishments that don't have an end date. That is why those marriages are treated with care and nurtured, so they can sustain the pressures and last until death. A BMB marriage focuses on one or two specific goals that can be accomplished within a certain time period, hence the usual deadline of a year. After that, both parties are released so they may look for and hopefully find a love match. We've had several brides and grooms who, because of their BMB marriage, have become the man or woman they needed to become in order to make the commitment to a lifelong spouse. Paige could understand the logic, at least a little. So it's like training a horse. Pamela nodded thoughtfully. In a way. Take you and Annie Mae, for example. If Annie Mae had been bought by someone who didn't know how to train her, her value wouldn't increase. 
Likewise, if you'd bought a horse with unsound feet, your experience wouldn't make a difference. But by putting the right horse with the right trainer, everyone benefits. Exactly. That's what we strive for. And accomplish. At BMB. So what would I be doing? Pamela chuckled. You don't beat around the bush, do you? I thought you liked it when I was direct. Paige leaned back in her chair. Touché. Pamela set her elbow on the armrest. And I'll do the same for you. I'd like you to be a bride. Paige grabbed onto the armrests as the world tipped on its side. Honey, are you all right? Pamela's hand was on her arm. A bride? Paige gasped. Oh, dear. Do you need some water? Pamela leaned forward and pressed a button on her desk phone. Tina, can you bring Miss Baker some water, please? I'll be right in. Paige counted to five before Tina burst into the room with a cold bottle of water. Here you go. Drink this. She leaned over and patted Paige's shoulder. She turned to Pamela. She looks pale. Pamela bit her lip, considering Paige. Paige didn't like the looks flying back and forth between Pamela and Tina, like they weren't sure she was up to whatever cockamamie job they thought she'd take. I'm fine, snapped Paige. These people were crazy. She took a swig of water to moisten her dry throat. Give me one good reason not to walk out of here right now. I can give you 400,000 of them, said Pamela. Paige felt her chin drop. She practically scraped the floor with it. Are you kidding me? Tina nodded, still patting Paige's shoulder absently. It's true. Paige let out a low whistle. Four hundred thousand dollars. I do believe even I am not blind enough to miss this opportunity, but thanks for making it so obvious. I'm in. She set the bottle of water on Pamela's desk, her hands surprisingly steady. With that much money, her business could be up and running faster than you could say cha-ching. And she'd be able to afford stable fees for Annie Mae in the meantime. And she could buy her own house and barn. And her dream guy would still be there in a year. He wasn't going anywhere. And, and, and there were too many good reasons not to do it. A year was nothing compared to a lifetime of living her dream. Really? Tina looked incredulous. I thought she'd take a little more convincing, she muttered to Pamela. Paige laughed. I could have stalled or pretended to consider it a bit more. But in all honesty, I have had some interesting twists in my life in the last couple of days, and for the first time, the road has straightened out. Pamela and Tina exchanged one more surprised look. Pamela recovered first. In that case, let's get you in the computer. Paige shifted to the edge of her seat and smiled for the digital camera attached to Pamela's computer as she took the photo. Tina excused herself from the room with a shake of her head. After that, things went quickly. Paige handed over a cancelled check for a direct deposit, signed a few more papers, and was back in the elevator by 1.45. Pamela said she'd call her in the next couple of days to arrange a meeting with her future groom and a prenup. Paige drove back to camp with visions of ponies dancing through her thoughts. This whole thing might not be conventional, but it was exactly what Paige needed. It wasn't until she pulled into the barnyard that the doubts started to creep in. One major concern was her horses. She didn't want to leave them behind or be apart from them for even one night, yet she couldn't take the 12 to 1500 pound animals with her. Talk about bringing baggage into a marriage. Then there was the groom. What if he was short, bald, and had a hairy back? Or what if he laughed loud? Like, embarrass a room full of people loud? He could be anybody. He could be the guy she saw pumping gas the auctioneer with the nasal voice, or someone old enough to be her grandpa. What in the world had she gotten herself into? Her final concern. And this one was a doozy. Was her own lack of skills. 
she began to wonder what she could do that was worth $400,000, and a knot formed right under her sternum. She couldn't see herself as a surgeon's wife, and she was much too country to be a trophy bride. Unless there was a man out there who needed his stalls cleaned and his horses trained, she was going to be a sorry excuse for a partner in this marriage. Chapter 6 Come in. Come in, said the woman Cody assumed was Pamela Jones. Cody's eyes took in the plush office and the lovely woman behind the desk. A thick set of pearls hung around Pamela's neck and her blonde hair had enough volume to make her look younger than she probably was. Pamela rose from her chair behind the desk, straightened her cream-colored jacket. Who is this? she asked, turning her welcoming smile on Addison. I'm Addison Marie Walker. Pamela came around and offered her hand to Addison. It's nice to meet you, Addison Marie Walker. This must be your dad, Cody Walker. Addison shook Pamela's hand. Yep. He needs a bride. If Cody's hands weren't full of crayons and coloring books, he would have clamped his hand over Addison's mouth. Instead, he stood there, his face flaming and no words in his mortified brain. It's a good thing you brought him in. We specialize in brides. Addison's eyes grew large. Why don't we set you up on the corner of the desk to color while your dad and I have a chat? Shall we? Sure. Harrison moved a chair for Addison, and Cody set her things on the desk. I've got paperwork to file. Harrison smacked Cody on the back as he left. I'll see you at the ceremony. Yeah. Cody truly hadn't thought about what type of wedding ceremony there would be, and his stomach rolled over at the idea of a church and pastor. Cody cringed inside. The first time around, the engagement and ceremony had felt larger than the ocean. Buying the ring, writing his vows, renting a tux. Big. Big big. This time, it almost didn't feel real, and Cody was clutching to that suspension of reality like a lifeline. He would not and could not compare this marriage to his first, or else he'd run out the door with Addison over his shoulder and never look back. He looked down at Addison's chubby fingers and heart-shaped face. He was doing this for her. She wanted a mommy, and Cody needed someone to guide her through the next year. She had a hard enough time with children making fun of her attempts to read and teachers pegging her as underdeveloped. Maybe if he'd gotten married a couple of years ago, she wouldn't have these problems now. There were programs out there that could help her, but between his dealerships and investments Cody was barely keeping his head above water, and everything suffered. The business could fold and he'd be fine, but his daughter deserved the best he had to offer. Under the guidelines Harrison had shared only moments before, there was no reason not to move forward. Cody especially loved the one-year limitation. Whoever this woman was, she was only signing on for a year, not for life, and Cody was doing the same. If, at the end of 12 months, it wasn't working out, they could go their separate ways. Plus, the bride got a bonus at the end, which would be an incentive for her to stick it out. No more three-month females with romantic aspirations. Only one solid, professional woman who would hold up her end of the bargain. By the time Harrison had given him the orientation speech, Cody was hooked on the idea of a professional bride. Pamela offered her hand. It's good to meet you, Mr. Walker. I understand you are a friend of one of our clients. Gabe Russell, Cody offered. As they shook hands, Cody had the strangest sensation, like he'd been put in a copy machine and scanned. His eyes snapped to Pamela's, and her lips slowly lifted into a broad smile. I have a good feeling about you, Mr. Walker. Let's get started. She released his hand, and Cody blinked before taking his seat. Pamela handed him a folder. Inside this, you'll find rings. Please choose one. Cody looked down at the folder in his hands. Pamela typed away for several seconds. A ring? He glanced at his left hand. There was already a ring on his finger. It won't bite. Pamela watched him. Cody shook himself out of his stupor. 
He opened the folder and skipped the pages of women's rings, which were first. Landing on the men's, he glanced over them all. Most were too ostentatious for his preferences. There was one, a thinner one in platinum. He was pretty sure he could wear it with the ring he already had, then he wouldn't have to take it off. I think this one. He pointed to the page. Pamela wrote a few numbers on a sticky note. Who's that? asked Addison, pointing to the computer screen Cody couldn't see. That is Paige Baker. She works for me, answered Pamela. Can Daddy hire her? She's pretty. Addison's words sent a chill up Cody's spine. The last thing he needed in a bride was pretty. She is very beautiful, agreed Pamela. Even worse. I like her hair, added Addison. Me too. Pamela gave Addison a little shrug and a smile that only girls can give girls, a smile that implied they were in cahoots. Cody cleared his throat in an attempt to remove the discomfort he felt at the idea of marrying a beautiful woman. Someone with buck teeth would be fine. Maybe a hump on her shoulder, a goiter. I'm sure there are plenty of qualified women. Pamela turned her gaze on him. There are. However, I believe Paige is the one for you too. He coughed. Why is that? Pamela leaned back in her chair. Paige comes from a large family. She's the third child of eight. Cody let out a low whistle. Eight kids? He had a hard enough time keeping up with Addison. Although, at one point, he and Kylie had talked about having five children. Pamela continued, her family owns a summer camp, where she has done everything from lifeguarding to counseling. She has a degree in business as well as certification from several youth coaching organizations. If you want someone who has experience working with children, then this is the bride for you. Cody couldn't disagree with her on that point. Paige sounded more than qualified to handle his one little girl. He wondered why Paige had signed up for BMB, but then remembered the hefty paycheck and decided the less he knew about her personal motivations, the better. Keeping this on a strictly employer-slash-employee level would be best. If you're ready, I don't see any reason why we can't set a date for the ceremony. Cody couldn't either, and it darn near killed him. He felt like he was standing on the cliff of this decision, waiting for a reason to chicken out and step away. Any reason. Any half-baked, stupid reason would be enough to send him out the door. If only someone would hand him a reason. Realizing the panic he was sending himself into, Cody took a deep breath and plowed on. I'm free on Wednesday. Pamela jotted down the date and a couple others that would work for Cody, and promised to get back to him. It wasn't until he and Addison were in the elevator that he realized he hadn't seen the picture and had no idea what his fiancée looked like, except that she was beautiful. The thought terrified him. Chapter 7 Tuesday afternoon, Paige was in the barn with her brothers Noah and Matthew. Camp Buckeye needed a good cleaning before the first group of campers arrived. Until she was off to her new job. Paige couldn't bring herself to say married. She intended to do as much as she could to help her family. When she thought about leaving, her emotions mixed together until she wasn't sure if she was coming or going. Leaving the shelter of her family's love was scarier than mounting a greenbroke horse. At least the horse could only throw you off, maybe break a bone. Leaving her family could break Paige's heart. They had started to divvy up tasks for a deep clean in the barn when her phone rang. Paige sucked in a mountain's worth of air. She knew, she just knew it was BMB. You gonna answer that? asked Matthew, glancing at her jacket pocket, where the phone rang again. Premonition raised the hair on the back of Paige's neck. They have a match. Paige's leg bounced. Could she do this? Could she really get married? The phone rang a third time. Paige moaned, torn between her dream and what she had to do to get it and her feelings of unworthiness. Who was she to? For the love. Matthew slipped his hand inside her pocket and retrieved her phone. No. 
Paige duff at him, but Matthew, a running back on the high school team, rolled away from her grab. Paige Baker's phone, he said with a wink Paige did not find at all endearing. Okay, maybe a little, Matthew was her youngest brother, after all. Hold, please. Matthew pressed the mute button and held out the phone. Pamela Jones, he said quietly. Noah punched him in the shoulder. Why are you whispering if it's on mute? Matthew cuffed him back. Because. Noah hooked Matthew in a headlock. Paige took the phone before it ended up on the cement floor under their wrestling match. I think I'll take this outside. We are outside, called Matthew. From the way he was hunched over, Paige had the feeling Noah was about to be flipped onto his back. Hey, take it easy on the old man, will you? Paige said over her shoulder. Who are you calling old? Noah's voice followed her into the barnyard. There was a lot of grunting, and she supposed the wrestling match was well underway. Boys. Paige walked clear to the other side of the arena, taking deep, calming breaths along the way, before she pushed the talk button. Hello. Hello, Paige. How are you doing? Pamela's voice came over the line. Full of doubts and falling to pieces. Fine. And yourself? I'm well. Thank you for asking. There was a heavy pause that made Paige want to scream just tell me already. Things have progressed rather quickly here, and we'd like to sign the prenup tomorrow. To tomorrow? As in Wednesday? Yes. Mr. Walker finds himself in need of your expertise rather quickly. What expertise? Paige wanted to ask. She wasn't a life coach. Heck, she couldn't get her own life under control. Case in point, she was now engaged to a man she'd never met. How was she going to help anyone pull their life together? Paige, can you hear me? Paige realized she'd been quiet for so long Pamela thought they'd been disconnected. Sorry. Tomorrow will be fine. I'll have Tina email you the information and a list of documents you'll need to provide. Documents? Your driver's license, birth certificate, and such. It'll be in the email. Pamela paused. Are you okay, honey? You sound upset. Paige might have her doubts, but Pamela seemed sure, and Paige wanted to keep it that way. I'm great. Looking forward to tomorrow. Wonderful. I'll see you then. Paige hung up the phone and leaned her head against the coral fence. The cool metal felt good on her fevered forehead. Bad news? Noah asked from right behind her, causing Paige to jump. Don't sneak up on me like that. Noah held out his hands. What's sneaking? I just walked over here. Paige gave him the once over. His auburn hair was must and his shirt had a tear. Matthew kick your sorry butt? Nah, Noah waved her off. He arched his back. Okay, he flipped me pretty good. Paige chuckled. Next time, don't pick a fight in the barn. Come out to the sand. Your landing will be softer. I should take you down for that old man comment. You're only two years younger than me, you know. And I always will be. Paige sighed. Noah copied her posture and leaned against the fence, shoulder to shoulder with Paige. Guy troubles. What? Had Noah heard Pamela mention a prenup? She glanced down at her phone. I was kidding, but that look on your face makes me think I was onto something. There's not a look on my face. I don't look like anything. Denial. The second sign of guilt. Nathan bumped her with his hip. What's his name? Paige let out a high-pitched, crazy giggle. Mr. Walker. She'd only just heard that from Pamela. She'd just heard her fiancé's name from another woman. Paige could feel herself coming undone but was at a loss as to how to stop it. His first name. 
Paige had no idea, and the world was topsy-turvy. Cracking up and doubling over, Paige barely got out, I don't know. She laughed so hard, her eyes started to water. Noah scowled. What's so funny? Paige righted herself and swiped under her eyes. Oh, she needed that release. Looking around quickly, Paige determined they were alone. I'm gonna tell you something, and you have to swear you won't tell anyone in the family. Not mom, not dad, and especially not Nevea. Why would I tell Nevea? I don't know, I was just covering my bases. In fact, if you can't promise to not tell anyone, period, then I can't tell you. Paige held up her right hand like she was going to make him swear on a stack of Bibles. What am I, twelve? Paige dropped her hand. When you were twelve, you told the whole school I liked Peter Harris. I was twelve. Noah defended himself. Paige sized him up out of the corner of her eye. Yeah, I'm not telling. In one swift move, Noah tackled her and sat on her belly. Get off! Paige yanked her leg up, but he dodged the knee aimed at his kidney. She wasn't going to hit him hard, just hard enough to get him off. Not until you tell me. You're such a jerk, she said, but she was laughing. Where else in the world would someone love her enough to tackle her to make her talk? You're getting sand in my hair and I have to meet my fiancé tomorrow. Fiancé? What the? Paige took full advantage of his shock and rolled right out from under him and onto her knees. Breathing heavy with the effort, Paige decided she was rather proud of that move. Noah's face clouded. Paige, are you in trouble? Oh, shoot. I shouldn't have knocked you down. Did I hurt the... He looked down at her stomach. I'm not pregnant, Paige hissed. Looking over her shoulder to make sure no one had heard that, she quickly added, it's not like that. Dropping to her seat, she pulled a weed out of the sand and rolled it between her fingers. It's my new job. I'm a bride for this brokerage. Paige stopped, remembering the painful signing of the confidentiality agreement. There was a small something about telling family, but Paige had been so sure her family would never find out that she hadn't worried about it then. One look at Noah's face told her she'd have to lay it all out or be locked in her room and under brother guard for a year. Just call me Rapunzel. So she told him everything. Unloading the story took a lot less time than she thought it would, and she ended by shrugging her shoulders and saying, so I'm not sure if I'm cut out for this, but I feel like it's the right thing for me to do. Does that make sense? No, Noah leaned back on his hands. And yes. I felt the same way about the police academy, and look how that turned out. Tipping his head up, he watched the clouds roll across the sky. I always thought one day you'd meet this guy and you'd just know he was the one and we'd all be trying to catch up. I figured you had a picture of him in your head. You just had to find him. I still can. Yeah, but, never mind. Noah lay back with his hands behind his head. Remember when we used to come out here and make shapes out of the clouds? Paige copied him, positioning herself so their elbows touched. You always saw dinosaurs and dragons. And you saw horses. They're the best, said Paige. I think you have to do it. Why? Paige knew her reasons, but she could always use another one. Because if you don't, you may never buy your stables or horses. Noah's tone carried a hint of warning. Look, a dragon. He pointed to the southernmost cloud. Paige squinted and tipped her head to the side. She didn't see a dragon. But despite her doubts, she felt like that cloud. Light and willing to go where the wind sent her. She'd have to carry those with her. I'm going to sign a prenup tomorrow. I know, said Noah. I'm coming with you. Chapter 8 Everything that could go wrong on Wednesday morning did. Addison woke up in a grouchy mood and fought Cody every step of the way as they got dressed and out the door. 
His car had a flat, so Cody had to borrow Christopher's truck or risk missing his appointment at BMB altogether. And when he got there, his bride had called to say she was in traffic and would be late. If you'll have a seat in our waiting area, I'm sure she'll be here any minute and we can get started, said Tina. Would you like an apple juice? she asked Addison. Addison shook her head and clung to Cody's leg. Maybe this isn't a good idea, he told Tina. She's been upset all morning and I'm afraid she's not ready for this. Tina nodded. We can certainly reschedule, if that's what you'd like. Mr. Walker, it's good to see you again. Harrison strode into the waiting room and offered Cody his hand. Cody shook it and said, you too. Listen, I think we may need to rethink things. He pointed discreetly to Addison tucked behind him. Of course. I'll take you down to see Pamela and we'll see what we can work out. Daddy, I need to go to the bathroom. Addison barely spoke loud enough for Cody to hear her. Can I show you the ladies' room? Tina asked. Addison nodded and allowed Tina to take her hand. I'll bring her back when she's done. Thanks. Cody breathed a sigh of relief. He loved his daughter with everything he had in him, but this morning she had tried every last nerve. A few minutes to collect himself was appreciated. He and Harrison made their way to Pamela's office, where Cody expressed his concerns about his daughter acting out. Pamela listened with patience. Paige recovered from her almost collision with the lobby security guard and pressed the elevator button several times. If you didn't drive like a grandpa, we'd have been on time. If you didn't have to load up on makeup, we could have left on time. Noah scowled. The elevator doors opened, and Paige all but jumped inside. Do you think it's too much? She rummaged in her purse for a tissue and came up with a napkin from Dairy King. Leaning into the mirror, she went to blot off her pale pink lipstick. Noah reached out and stopped her. You look beautiful, and if this jerk can't see that, I'm going to have to pound some sense into him. Paige rolled her eyes. If you pound him, he'll sue. Joke's on him, I'm broke. Play nice, Paige commanded as the doors slid open. Tina wasn't at her desk, so Paige motioned for Noah to sit in the waiting area. She chose to pace and work off some of her energy. Within seconds, Tina was back with a little girl in tow. I saved your book from the other day. Do you want to color while you wait? Sure. The little girl looked anything but sure. She shuffled along and kept her chin down as she took the book. When she turned, her eyes landed on Paige's boots and traveled up until she stopped at Paige's hair. There was a small gasp before the box of crayons dropped to the floor, the crayons scattering across the tile. Here, let me help you with that. Paige bent down and scooped up the box. The girl continued to stare at her, open-mouthed and wide-eyed. Maybe Paige did have too much makeup on if it caused children to stare. She gathered the rest of the crayons and returned them to the box. There's a table over here, do you want to color there? Yes. The girl broke into an apple pie smile. Will you color with me? Paige looked at Tina. Do I have time to color? Spending a few minutes with this sweetie would take her mind off her future husband and hopefully help her relax. Tina nodded. I think we can squeeze that in. Noah scooted over on the couch, and Paige and her new friend sat down. What's your name? Paige asked as she dumped the crayons on the table. Addison. She looked up. What should I call you? Noah leaned over. We call her Penny Page. Penny Page? That's a silly name. Paige pouted out her lip. I can't change it now. It's been there my whole life. I've been Addison my whole life. Really? You mean you weren't a Roberta or a Trudy before? Paige asked seriously, although she was just having some fun. She knew from experience that kids love to be experts at things. No. Never. 
well, then we're just the same. They colored a picture of a horse for a moment. Paige's thoughts went to her own little herd. She hadn't found a place to stable them yet, and her concern was growing. What's your favorite color? asked Addison. Pink. What's yours? Pink or purple, and sometimes it's red. She reached up and touched Paige's hair. Paige exchanged a smile with Noah. What a darling! I once had a cupcake with pink and purple frosting, said Paige. I like cupcakes. What's your favorite kind? asked Noah. Addison considered him for a moment. Your hair isn't red, she said, not answering his question. Noah tucked his chin down and tugged on a section of his auburn hair. It's kind of red. I think it's brown. Noah chuckled and rubbed the top of Addison's head, messing up the girl's ponytail. Paige scowled. You never mess up a lady's hair. She leaned down to look at Addison. Do you mind if I fix it? You want to do my hair? Addison asked with bright eyes. Sure. Paige giggled at how serious Addison looked. Here. She turned Addison's head around and gently removed the loose elastic. Fingering out the bumps and smoothing things down, she arranged the dark brown hair into a high ponytail and secured it once again. This time tight enough that it would stay. There you go. Addison's hands went to her head and she felt all around. Thank you. She threw her arms around Paige's neck. Paige laughed and hugged her back. You are welcome. Well, perhaps we were a little too quick to change things, said Pamela, who stood behind Paige. Addison bounced out of Paige's arms and over to the handsome stranger standing next to Pamela. Paige stood to greet her new employer and nearly fell back into her seat. If Paige had thought Harrison would look good in a black cowboy hat, this man would be a dream. He was clean-shaven, with a dimple that appeared when he smiled down at Addison. It was a good thing he only had one dimple, because two would have done Paige in. And any woman in a ten-mile radius. Paige took in two short breaths. It was all she could manage with her stomach flipping and flopping around at the very sight of her dream guy. He lived. He breathed. He had that perfect chin she'd always wanted to brush her fingertips over. And those lips? Scrumptious. She could well imagine his gray eyes brooding under the brim and that brown, almost black hair curling around her fingers. Whoa there, girl. Paige focused on the silver tips of her favorite boots. Life was so unfair. Here she was, about to get married, and all she wanted to do was throw herself into this guy's arms and see where the world would take them. Cursing her overactive imagination, Paige wished she could hide behind Noah or disappear behind Tina's desk. However, hiding was out of the question with everyone staring at her and Mr. Perfect. Was her attraction to him so obvious that they could feel it too? Why didn't someone say something? Addison finally saved her. Daddy, this is Penny Page, and she did my hair just like a real mommy. See? She bent at the waist to show off her ponytail. Paige clasped her hands behind her back. She didn't dare touch him. Her dream guy needed to stay in her dreams, and if they placed palm against palm, she'd never get the memory out of her head. I hope you don't mind. It got a little ruffled. Their eyes met, and Mr. Handsome stuttered. I. 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 Addison grabbed Paige's hand between both of hers and pulled her towards the elevator. Come on, it's time to go. Go where? Paige asked. Home. Wouldn't that be lovely? Paige wished it was true. She wished she was marrying this hunk of deliciousness for real. Unfortunately, Paige was due to meet some high-powered executive, real estate mogul, doctor, lawyer, or trust fund baby and begin the year-long process of making over his life. Surrendering to her fate, Paige bent so she could look Addison in the eye. I'm sorry, Han, I can't go home with you. But mommies have to live with their family. Yes they do, you are 100% right. 
Paige looked around for some help, but Tina had her hand over her heart and looked like she was melting at Addison's adorableness. Pamela beamed. And Addison's dad was opening and closing his mouth like a giant bass. Noah was texting and absolutely no help at all. Brothers. Addison's lower lip stuck out. But, you're my new mommy. I saw your picture on her computer. Addison pointed at Pamela. Paige absentmindedly pushed Addison's hand down so she wasn't pointing at Pamela. Her mind raced. New mommy. New mommy. New mommy. No one said anything about being a mommy. I'm not ready to be a mommy. Paige looked once again at the handsome stranger who created visions of riding double and passion fruit colored sunsets, hoping he'd jump in and tell Addison that she was wrong and there was another bride waiting to be her mommy. When he didn't move, Paige's questioning gaze shifted to Pamela, who gave her a slight nod as if nudging her forward. Holy cow! Mr. Handsome was her fiancé? Mr. Walker? Paige asked nervously. After a moment's hesitation, Addison's dad stepped forward. By mustering every ounce of self-control in his body, Cody propelled himself toward the absurdly beautiful woman before him. Any movement was something of a miracle, because he couldn't feel his body. When he'd come down the hallway and found Addison hugging the lady with copper-colored hair, this pixie with eyes bigger than a half dollar, a petite nose, and lips that were full and tempting. It was as if someone had grabbed both sides of his face and said, pay attention. Not that he'd needed that much encouragement, he couldn't seem to look anywhere but right at her. Cody had experienced moments that were like standing in the middle of a deserted freeway and knowing exactly which direction to go. Everything inside of him knew he was supposed to be with Penny Page but that shorty was frightening enough to make him want to turn around and run. However, Cody was no coward. Stopping a good three feet away, Cody was relieved that Addison slid her arm around his knee. She grounded him and kept his thoughts from running away with Penny Page, allowing him to handle the situation with a little dignity. Well, as much dignity as one could muster when meeting their fiancé for the first time in an office full of strangers who continued to stare at them as if they were on the inside of a fishbowl. Cody knocked his head from side to side like a fighter warming up for the next round before saying, I'm Cody Walker, and I see you've met Addison. Before the woman could respond, a beefy hand was on Cody's shoulder. Cody followed the hand up the arm and across the shoulder to a stern face. Mr. Walker. Noah Baker, Paige's big brother. Cody took a step back, thankful beyond measure that Noah had stepped between him and Paige. He offered his hand. Nice to meet you. Noah took it. You too, he said without a smile. Cody looked from Noah to Paige. Paige. Not Penny Page. Just Paige. It was a pretty name with a little spunk just like the woman herself. In fact, the spunk came through loud and clear as she positioned herself between Noah and Cody, offering Cody her hand and a subtle elbow to Noah's gut. No one else noticed, but Cody saw the way Noah's jaw went slack and heard his soft grunt. Behave, she said under her breath to Noah. Turning on a thousand-watt smile, she told Cody, it's nice to meet you. Cody grasped her hand and was stunned by the feeling running up his arm. It was warm and comforting, and at the same time it did funny things to his insides. Like his heart. His heart was beating too fast. He'd expected a delicate little shake and instead received a welcoming grasp, Paige holding onto him as if he were the only thing holding her up. He felt he could trust her. That he knew her. The honesty in her countenance was as unmistakable as the color of her hair although her gray-green eyes held a hint of indecision. She might not be sure about him, but she was sure as heck not going to let him know she wasn't confident in the situation. Aware that he'd never read anyone so clearly, Cody muttered, You too. Pamela stepped forward. Cody, if you don't have any objections, I'd like to move this into Kimberly's office. She has all the paperwork for the prenup, and I believe everyone would be more comfortable. Objections? Cody had hundreds. 
Not five minutes ago, he laid them out for Pamela, the biggest one being Addison's change in behavior this morning and his worry over her ability to handle the situation. He looked down at her now and found her staring at Paige with nothing short of childlike adoration. There went my delay tactic. No objections. Wonderful. This way. Pamela went first. Noah cleared his throat, and Paige pulled her hand away slowly, her fingertips leaving behind trails of fire on his skin. Cody motioned for her to go first, hoping she didn't see the way she affected him. Noah fell and stepped beside her, and Cody followed with Addison. This is bad. Paige was much more than Cody had signed up for, and he was very much afraid that if they made the whole thing official, he might just enjoy being paired with this captivating sprite. Paige ran her hand up and down the arm of the chair to keep from bursting out of her seat. Kimberly was calm, but since Pamela had left the room, she was the only adult that wasn't freaking out on one level or another. Noah was wound tighter than a steer in the chutes waiting for the doors to fly open. At any moment, he'd spring forth and tear across the room, running over everyone and everything in his path. Paige's thoughts scattered like dandelion fluff with every look, glance, or peek at Mr. Walker. When she tried to gather them in, he'd shift in his chair, drawing her attention, and her heart would pound with the sound of a thousand stampeding horses. And Mr. Walker, her fiancé, didn't look as if he fared much better. He crossed one ankle over the other knee and then switched them twenty seconds later. His hand constantly reached down to touch Addison's head, as she was sprawled between their chairs, coloring. It appeared to be a nervous habit he used to calm himself down. Wait, Noah held up his palm. It sounds like this is all about him. He jerked his chin toward Mr. Walker. Paige about died at the confrontational tone he used in front of her future husband. She didn't mind Noah tagging along or asking questions, however, she would mind if he ruined her opportunity at BMB. The more Kimberly talked about money and income, the more Paige wanted this position. And it helped that her fiancé was good-looking enough to model for a romance novel cover. Trying to be subtle, Paige glared, hoping Noah would get the hint and back off. As Noah was rarely subtle, she wasn't surprised when he pressed on. I know he's the one with the big bank account and all, but my sister shouldn't get the short end of the stick in this. Paige fought against the desire to slouch down in her seat. Of course the prenup had mentioned that Paige wasn't entitled to any of Mr. Walker's money other than the salary she was paid each month and the bonus at the end of the marriage. She wasn't expecting more, and he would be an idiot to marry without a prenup. However, she did have one big, brown, beautiful asset back in the barn that she wanted to make sure Mr. Walker couldn't take away. The prenup is in place to ensure that what is yours now will be yours after the divorce. Kimberly turned to address Paige. Paige, any assets you bring into the marriage, you will have when it's over. If you'd like to seek legal counsel, we can reschedule the signing. Paige couldn't imagine putting off the signing. It had been hard enough to get out the door this morning and face all this, having to do it twice would be worse. Besides, Mr. Walker had nothing to gain by marrying her. He didn't even know about Annie Mae, Kitty, or Buttons, so he couldn't be marrying her for her small but valuable herd. No. The reason the young, wealthy, attractive Mr. Walker was looking for a bride lay on her tummy between their chairs, humming a nonsensical tune. I'd like to continue, said Paige. Noah grumbled but remained silent. A small miracle if there ever was one. Mr. Walker gently touched her arm and Paige's heart thundered. Are you sure? he asked. There were dozens of questions loaded in that simple phrase. Paige lifted her eyes to meet Mr. Walker's. She couldn't bring herself to think of him as Cody. Using his first name was cozy and affectionate. Two lines she couldn't cross with this man if she wanted to maintain any sort of professionalism. Mr. Walker he was, and Mr. Walker he would stay. Mr. Walker was waiting for an answer, his gray eyes revealing a level of vulnerability that touched her core. He was asking if she was sure she wanted to care for Addison, to be her new mommy and take all the responsibility that came with it. 
With all of that there was the question, are you sure about me? Though that inquiry came from someplace deep inside, and Paige wasn't convinced Mr. Walker knew he'd asked it. How confident could she expect to be about marrying a man she'd known for less than an hour? She was positive that she was interested and attracted enough to Mr. Walker to find out more about him, about his life, about his hobbies, his passions. With the amount of chemistry pulsing through her veins, why wouldn't she want to get to know him on a more intimate level? Working with him on a professional level and keeping her absurdly romantic daydreams to herself would be harder than driving a fence post into a cement slab. Paige glanced at Addison, an almost carbon copy of her father. If she could focus on the daughter and not the dad, she would indeed make it through the year without embarrassing herself. Drawing in a breath, Paige pressed on. I'm sure. Mr. Walker searched her gaze before blinking heavily with relief and removing his hand. The current that had pulsed through Paige during their contact stopped, and she felt an odd buzzing sensation before returning to normal. Noah settled back in his seat with a sigh. Obviously he had his doubts. Paige just hoped he'd keep them to himself until they were in the truck on the way home. Cody pulled against his shirt collar. They'd set the wedding for Friday morning, making this whole thing seem all too real, too fast, and too uncomfortable. Paige had an energy about her, something that drew him in, and he was powerless against it. He'd tried not to touch her. Tried, and failed miserably. The contact was enthralling, and he had to force himself not to touch her arm again for the duration of the meeting. He couldn't go there. Not with Paige. Not with anyone. He glanced at the band Kylie had placed on his finger. A physical relationship with another woman was beyond his comprehension, the guilt would crush him. Addison gave his hand a squeeze. Cody didn't miss the way Paige had considered Addison on the floor before she made up her mind about marrying him. Thankfully, her eyes hadn't traveled up and down his body, or to his lips, or even to her brother for confirmation. She'd looked at the one person in the room who should be her focus every day for the next year, and she'd softened. Right there before his eyes, a part of Paige had fallen in love with his daughter, and it gave Cody all the answers he needed to place his signature next to Paige's. Now, their soon-to-be related group waited at the elevator, making small talk. Paige spent most of the time listening to Addison plan a tea party, so Cody turned to Noah. Are you Paige's only brother? He recalled Pamela saying something about Paige coming from a large family. Noah lifted one eyebrow. We've got one older and two younger. Are they all coming to the ceremony? Noah glanced at Paige. We'll see. A thin stick of a woman with pink hair burst into the lobby, cutting off all communications. She strolled directly to Paige, lifted a strand of Paige's hair, and said, This is a gift. Paige laughed. Thanks. Cody had to agree with her assessment of Paige's locks. They were downright stunning. Several times during their meeting, he'd had to school himself against brushing his hand down Paige's curls. The desire was so strong, it was almost as if they'd cast a spell over him. Maybe Paige had cast a spell over him, because he had a hard time keeping his eyes off her. I'm Trish. I'm over brides. She linked her elbow through Paige's and glanced around the group, her eyes dashed over Cody and lingered on Noah before she turned back to Paige. Clear your schedule, we're going shopping tomorrow. Shopping? You need a wedding dress, Trish said. Um. Paige looked helpless for a moment. Her gray-green eyes paled right, along with her cheeks. Cody had never seen anything like it before and caught himself leaning closer for a better look. Like a princess. Addison grinned. Paige looked down and stared at Addison as if she were the answer to all her worries. Cody had used that same look many times, but he was taken off guard by the easy way in which Paige affectionately cupped Addison's head with her hand. He had hoped Addison would bond with the woman he married, but he hadn't planned on it happening so soon. Something low in his gut warmed, and he averted his eyes for fear of someone seeing the admiration coursing through him. Would you like to come? Paige asked Addison. 
Addison's eyes widened. Yes, she whispered, as if she didn't dare put all the hopes in her heart into that one word. Addison's usual shyness was easily overcome by Paige's open-hearted invitation. How many women would take a six-year-old who was not there shopping for a wedding dress? Or for anything, for that matter? Did Paige have any idea what she was in for? Addison could be a handful. The last time they'd gone to a department store, she'd hidden inside the racks, giving Cody a heart attack as he ran through the aisles, calling her name, believing she'd been kidnapped. Stepping forward, Cody held up a hand. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Why? Paige asked. Her voice held no frustration or challenge, only an honest desire to understand. You two will be busy, and Addison might slip away. Paige swallowed and exchanged a look with her brother, who, despite his bursting to introduce himself and interrupting during the prenup signing, had been quiet. Noah rolled his eyes as if Cody's concerns were completely illogical. Paige's eyes, having returned to their normal color, were laced with patience. Mr. Walker, I assure you, Addison will be my top priority throughout the day. Cody scanned his memory for things he knew about Paige. Hadn't she been a camp counselor or something? Pamela said she was chosen specifically for her experience with children. Fine. Trish clapped her hands, giddy at the idea. Cody pressed the elevator button, ready to get them out of here and back home, where things would seem normal. At least for a day or two. Do you like princesses? asked Trish. Yes. Addison hopped from one polka dotted shoe to the other. I know the cutest little boutique that specializes in girls' gowns. We simply have to go, and you must come along. Addison beamed at Trish, and Trish winked at her. The elevator doors slid open, and Cody motioned for Paige to go first. Noah went in after her giving Cody a warning look as if Cody were about to devour his sister. Though Cody had noticed Paige's winsome attitude and engaging personality, and okay, he'd noticed her breathtaking beauty as well. He had his reasons for keeping his distance. If only he could explain them to Noah. Then he'd surely relax about leaving Paige in Cody's care. Addison followed, now talking about the type of dress she wanted to wear, and Cody finally got in, with Noah and Addison standing between him and Paige. Trish gave them a wave as the door shut, sending a whisper of anticipation skimming the back of Cody's neck. They were going to take this elevator ride again in just a few days. Only next time, Cody and Paige would be married. When he'd started this, he'd planned on taking whatever Pamela threw at him. Paige was more than he'd bargained for when he called BMB. The idea of being married to a woman like her sent jolts of electricity firing in his fingertips. He needed to get his mind off of Paige and back to being a dad. Are you coming to the wedding? Cody asked Noah. Noah folded his arms across his broad chest. You bet your boots I am. Great. Cody forced a smile. I can pick Addison up tomorrow. What time do you leave for work? asked Paige. She pulled her newly issued BMB phone out of her purse. Cody ran his hand across his jaw. They'd all been surprised to find out they lived in the same town. Cody wondered if they would have met eventually. Things had been different if they'd bumped into each other at the grocery store or the gas station. Cody probably would have checked her out. He was male but he wouldn't have asked her out, and he definitely wouldn't be marrying her in two days. They could have been next-door neighbors and Cody wouldn't know it. He'd been holed up at work or at home for so long, he wasn't even sure if he had neighbors. Taking his mind off the depressing state of his social life and putting it back on the issue at hand, Cody said, I'm so far behind, how early did he dare ask her to get up? I'd like to leave at seven. Paige's phone dinged, and she squinted at the screen. Apparently, Miss Addison and I are meeting Trish at 10.30 at a salon not far from here. I can be there at 7, let her sleep in a little, get her ready, and then we'll head about 9. She scrolled down the calendar on her phone. We'll be gone most of the day. Cody was relieved to have time to focus on his business. 
he desperately needed to go over some marketing with Brad at the trailer dealership. They were considering sponsoring someone who competed in the national finals rodeo circuit to increase exposure of their product. With several ropers and bulldoggers to consider, it was a big decision. The guy needed to have the right kind of reputation as well as the ability to sell their product. Cody had hours of video to review and BIOS to read. All of this would be much easier without Addison, and he appreciated Paige's consideration of his schedule when she hadn't officially started and tomorrow was supposed to be all about her. Do you have my address? Paige wiggled her phone. It's all in here. She chuckled. Noah jerked his chin. BMB is thorough, I'll give them that. Cody ducked his head to hide his smile. It was the nicest thing Noah had said all day. The elevator doors slid open. I guess we'll see you tomorrow morning. Cody paused. Should he shake her hand? Give her a hug? A hug would be too much, and a handshake seemed out of place between two people who were about to get married. However, Paige looked soft and feminine in her long dress and flowing top. It had been too long since he'd held a woman in his arms. A woman who held him back and took just as much comfort and love from the embrace as she gave through her touch. His thoughts must have run across his face, because Noah put his arm protectively around Paige's shoulders. See you at the wedding, he growled. And I'll see you tomorrow. Paige opened her arms for Addison, and the girl stepped right into them. We are going to have a great day. Okay. Addison squeezed Paige's neck with her skinny arms before letting go and taking Cody's hand. Together, they stood in the middle of the lobby and watched Paige walk away. I miss her, said Addison. Cody laughed. She just left. And she'll be back tomorrow. I know, but I still miss her. Addison's chin tucked under, and she swung Cody's hand back and forth. Cody nodded, because somehow, someway, their twosome didn't feel whole. The way it had just hours ago. As they turned and headed toward the parking lot, Addison began to chatter about owning a gown, and Cody worried about feeling lost without a woman he'd known for less than a day. Chapter 9 Paige yanked hard on Noah's passenger door. The 57 Ford was built like a tank, and opening the door was just as tough as pulling up the hatch on an armored personnel carrier. The truck had been their grandpa's, and Noah spent every spare minute in high school restoring the one-time clunker to its former glory, including new, shiny black leather on the seats and a turn-dial radio in the dash. Paige used her chore muscles to pull the door shut behind her, buckled her seatbelt, and wilted into the corner. The morning had been a whirlwind of information and new developments that had Paige wound tight. She'd had no idea Mr. Walker would affect her the way he had, and she hadn't recovered. Getting out of the office without drooling over him was a Herculean effort. She rested her elbow on the door and her forehead in her hand. Noah slid behind the steering wheel and glared through the windshield. What a load of... Noah! Paige dropped her hand and her head snapped up. I can't believe you're going through with this. Noah slammed his door. Paige fiddled with her purse. You didn't like him? she asked quietly. Her gut instinct was that Mr. Walker was a good guy who cared deeply about his daughter. He'd had a ring of sadness about him that tugged at her heartstrings. She wondered if all his days were colored by his melancholy. She hoped not. With his short cropped hair and clean-shaven good looks, he could light up a room or an office or a stadium. Noah started the car, his jaw grinding. I don't like this situation. I mean, in two days you're going to be married with a kid. That's insane. Resentment mixed with stubborn pride filled Paige's chest. Becoming a BMB bride is a low-risk opportunity. Did you hear how much money I'll make in a year? One year and I'll be able to buy a house with my own barn. I could almost understand the marriage thing. Almost, but becoming a mom? You're not ready to be a mom. Paige felt a lot more prepared to be a mom than she did to be Mr. Walker's bride. It's one kid. 
I take 10 kids that age for 7 days at a time at camp. Yeah, but you get weekends off. A mom is full-time, all the time, round the clock, never-ending work. I'm doing this, Noah. Noah narrowed his eyes. Paige could see him running through his options. He could continue to harass her about it, tell their parents, lock her away in the hayloft, or raise his hand when the honorable judge asked if anyone objected. Not that Paige didn't have her doubts. They were there, all big and scary looking, but with Noah pushing against the idea, Paige felt a need to dig in her heels. Noah knew that, too. She could see him come to an amiable conclusion as he scrutinized her. His grip on the steering wheel loosened. His jaw muscles relaxed. Paige folded her arms, determined not to let her own fears show through. I liked him well enough, said Noah as he pulled away from the curb. Paige let her hands fall into her lap, and she gave Noah a small thank you smile. She would liked Mr. Walker too. At 10 to 7 the next morning, Paige rolled slowly down Longhorn Lane, looking for house number 1459. The sun had been up for 45 minutes and Paige had been up for three hours. She did her morning chores, ate a yogurt and banana, and hurried out before anyone asked questions. Noah included. After his fit in the truck the day before, Paige was sure he'd insist on riding along for the day, and the last person Paige wanted around as she tried on wedding dresses was her ornery brother. The funny thing was, Noah wasn't usually one to hover over her shoulder. He'd rarely weighed in on her dates in high school and barely managed to S up for anyone she'd brought home since. Of course, she'd never been serious about someone before. Not marriage serious. Spying a black mailbox with gold letters on the right side of the road, Paige swerved closer. This was the place. She let out a huff of air as she turned down the tree-lined driveway, which went on for a good half mile. When she reached the end, she gasped. To her right was the house, which she barely glanced at, because directly in front of her was a competition-sized arena. It was beautiful, with chutes, iron rails painted white, and weed-free sand. Squealing, she shoved her truck into park and scrambled out for a better look. Next to the arena was a two-story metal barn that made her insides quiver, it was so beautiful. The whole place was meticulously landscaped with local plants, some of them sharp and pointy and others broad-leafed and deep green. She recognized a line of rose bushes along the far side of the parking area and wondered what color they'd bloom. There wasn't any grass in sight, but the desert, xeriscaping look was popular and would maintain its beauty even in the drought that was sure to hit this California summer. She took a moment to breathe in the scent of dirt, dust, and trees. It was glorious. She couldn't wait to introduce Annie May to the arena. Life could be heaven on earth with a setup like this. With the barn on sight, there would be no need to leave her horses in some faraway stable at the mercy of strangers. They could move in on the same day she did. It was perfect. You made it, called Mr. Walker from the other side of an iron gate. Paige's heart, already lightened by the solution to her stabling problems, trilled a happy little beat at Mr. Walker's voice. Fifteen minutes of professional. I can do this. She approached the house, an adobe fence blocking any view of the yard from the parking area. Leaving the barn for another day of exploration, Paige moved around her car and toward the house. Mr. Walker swung open the iron and held it as she stepped through. Thanks. She brushed past, catching the spicy scent of his shaving cream. Mr. Walker was dressed in a blue-collared shirt that made his skin bright and a dark gray pair of slacks. His loose tie hung around his neck and his hair was damp and unruly, as if she'd interrupted his morning routine. Paige caught herself admiring him and abruptly turned to take in the yard. She wasn't disappointed with the change in scenery, and the pool was much safer to take in than the drop of water on the tip of dark hair. Wow. This is amazing. The backyard included a pool shaped like an infinity sign, a granite bar with a sun umbrella, several lounge chairs with puffy cushions, and a waterfall that emptied into a hot tub. I'm glad you like it, Mr. Walker spoke quietly. Paige lowered her voice. Why are you whispering? 
Mr. Walker stepped close and pointed to the upstairs window. Paige held her breath in an effort to keep his scent from buckling her knees. Heaven help me, he smells so good. Addison's room is right there, and everything echoes off the stucco. Paige nodded. Of course sound echoed, there wasn't anything out here to absorb it. The space was all stamped concrete, water, and marble. Got it. Mr. Walker checked his watch. Let me show you around, and then I have to get going. Stepping back to take a breath, Paige said, if you're in a hurry, just show me where to find Addison and I'll be fine. That would be great. I'd like to get in before the manager and have a chance to review some information. He held open one side of glass French doors that opened into a family room. Paige glanced around as she entered the immaculate home. The walls were a light tan and the furniture was dark. Cream-colored curtains hung over the windows, and there were a few black and white photos on the wall. Mr. Walker motioned toward the kitchen. Help yourself to anything. Addison knows where the cereal and bowls are. Her favorite changes from week to week. Paige smiled. It's a phase. I have a niece Addison's age, and I babysit now and again. She's always picking one food over another. Oh. Mr. Walker's dimple appeared. Paige wanted to know exactly how to make that happen so she could repeat the process. Dang, the man is a fine-looking stallion. Would you babysit her while you live here? Paige tipped her head. I hadn't thought about it. If you didn't have any objections, I wouldn't mind. She and Addison could play together. It would be fun. Mr. Walker's dark eyes cut to Paige's and held her gaze. Addison had a tough year in school, and I'd like her to find a new social group. Social group? What are you, a parenting magazine? Paige joked. At camp, we just call them friends. Mr. Walker's gaze dropped, and Paige sensed there was more concern behind his request than he wanted to let on. She immediately felt bad for teasing him. Um, I can work on that. She wanted to ask about school, but decided to hold her questions until a time when Mr. Walker wasn't in a hurry. If you have other goals or concerns for Addison, maybe we could discuss them at our weekly date night. Mr. Walker took a step back, his hands coming up to ward her off. Date and night? Paige could see the uncertainty in the furrows of his brow and realized she'd made him nervous. The meeting's BMB insisted we have once a week. They called them date night, but we can just call them meetings if dates make you uncomfortable. I'm not uncomfortable, Mr. Walker insisted as he buttoned his top button and pulled up his collar. His words said one thing, but his shaking fingers said another. Paige backpedaled. I didn't mean to imply that you were nervous about dating or marriage or anything. He ferociously whipped his tie into a knot. I don't get nervous. Paige felt like she was fumbling with a football pass, the ball bouncing off her fingertips when she tried to get a good hold. Good, then. Me neither. Great. I've got to go. Mr. Walker turned and all but ran off. Paige followed, a little slower in order to put some space between the two of them. Mr. Walker crossed the living area, the stunning kitchen, and the dining area before disappearing into a room on the opposite side of the house from where Paige stood shaking her head with her hand on her hip. I don't think a boy's run away from me that fast since I played kissing tag. Paige's face burned. She might have considered kissing a guy like Mr. Walker, but not Mr. Walker himself. That would be ill-advised, given the situation. Noticing a rapping staircase for the first time, Paige decided to explore the house a bit while her mind ran over what she'd done to send Mr. Walker into a fit. Sheesh. If a little teasing got his goat, her family would tear him apart. It was a good thing she had no intention of introducing him to the Baker family anytime soon. Cody shut the door to his room and leaned heavily against it. His conscious mind knew Paige wasn't on the other side waiting to seduce him, but the irrational part of his brain had panicked when she mentioned date night. 
He banged his head against the door, disgusted with himself for running off like a coward. He did remember Pamela talking about a weekly appointment without Addison, where they could review their goals and plans for the week and connect with some open communication about their situation. Er, marriage. He hadn't thought anything of it at the time. Pamela was throwing out all sorts of words like bride, prenuptial agreement, officiant, and witnesses, which were all very weddingish and not at all threatening in the atmosphere they were presented. However, as he stood in his home without Pamela and Paige's glaring brother, discussing date night with a delightfully exquisite woman took on a completely different meaning. Instead of charts and graphs, he pictured soft candlelight on Paige's creamy skin. The image had come on so suddenly that it frightened rational thought to the deepest corners of his mind. He was still struggling to coax it out. Pushing away from the door, he crossed to the master bath, where he splashed cold water on his face. The shock to his system helped clear his head. After hastily combing some gel into his hair and making sure the cowlick in the back was wrangled, he grabbed his suit coat off the hanger and braced himself before opening the door. Paige wasn't on the main floor, so he quietly climbed the stairs. He couldn't just leave his daughter with someone without saying goodbye. Strangely, even though he felt jumpy around Paige, he had no worries about leaving Addison in her care. He chalked it up to Paige and Addison's instant connection yesterday, and to Pamela's recommendation. Pamela had a way about her that instilled confidence in her decisions. Life-altering decisions. Cody wished he could bottle that talent and distribute it to his salespeople. When he reached the top of the stairs, Paige was just coming out of Addison's room. She pressed a finger to her lips, indicating Addison was still asleep. She moved carefully, as if she was worried she'd set him off again. Cody could have kicked himself for making a scene. He wouldn't blame Paige if she walked out and didn't look back. Instead, she raised her eyebrows, silently asking what he needed. Cody vowed to keep himself together. At least until he made it to the privacy of his car. Even if it cost him an artery. He pointed to the door on the other side of the sitting room, and Paige moved that direction. This will be your room, he said in low tones as he swung the door wide and stepped inside. Paige wrinkled her nose. Is there something wrong? Cody scanned the bed, nightstand, dresser, bookshelves, and open closet. It felt empty, but that should have been a good thing. It's very, creamy. Paige took a few steps to the bed and pulled back the white blanket to reveal white sheets. You don't like cream? he asked, confused. The walls were the same color as when they'd moved in. He'd ordered the furniture online several years ago, simply buying what matched the room. I like colors. Paige giggled. It was a throaty sound that reminded him of bubbles in homemade root beer. I come by it naturally. She flipped her copper hair over her shoulder, and Cody was snared by the way it changed color in the light. I can see that. He licked his suddenly dry lips. Would it be a problem if I changed the blanket or added some drapes? Cody swore Paige's eyes brightened two shades of blue. Uh. Cody hesitated. None of the nannies had wanted to alter the space. He wasn't sure how he felt about Paige stamping the room her own. The space would be hers for the next year, he wouldn't go in there. However, there was a lot of change going on and he didn't think he could handle one more thing. Blaming his stubbornness on his late father, he said, I'd rather you didn't. Paige pressed her lips together as if holding back an argument. Okay. Cody heard the words and caught the undertone. It was a problem, at least for her. I'll leave you to your shopping trip. He backed out of the room. You have my number if anything happens. Yep. Paige tucked her fingers in her back pockets and rocked back on her heels. Okay. Bye. It came out as a question, surprising Cody. Leaving Paige felt like tearing himself away. That crazy feeling of completeness had snuck through the door when she walked in. Shaking his head at his foolishness, Cody decided to skedaddle before he said anything that might upset her more than he already had. 
They weren't married yet and they hadn't yelled, but this was their first disagreement. He wondered how many more they would have before the year was out. Once on the stairs, he pulled his phone out and scrolled through until he found Gabe's number. It was early, but Gabe would be up. Hi, Cody. What's up? asked Gabe. Cody gave a dry laugh as he pressed the button on the wall to open the garage door. That's a loaded question. How much time have you got? Not much, answered Gabe. Cody appreciated his blunt answer and cut to the chase as he pulled into traffic. I signed with BMB. I'm getting married tomorrow and Paige wants to redecorate her room. I don't want it redecorated. Why not? Because. I've got enough going on right now. I mean, marriage? This is huge, and I don't think I can handle even one more adjustment. You know? I do know. Gabe's voice was full of hard-learned knowledge in the area of loss. Cody knew Gabe had lost a sibling when he was younger, and that experience had driven most, if not all, of his decisions in life. It had also made him one of Cody's greatest confidants after Kylie died. Gabe continued, Trust me, this discomfort you're feeling, it's a good thing. You're pushing your limits, expanding your mind. You'll be a better person on the other side of this. Cody shrank under the weight of Gabe's words. How much had he grown since Kylie died? If anything, he'd shriveled up to the basics of who he was, which weren't bad, just rudimentary. He'd dropped his hobbies and interests and focused on running his dealerships and taking care of Addison. Maybe, he allowed. What's she like? asked Gabe. She's, Cody searched for a word that would describe all of Paige, including her amazing hair and her eyes that changed color like the sea. Vibrant, he blurted. Shaking his head at himself for sounding sappy, Cody tried to correct himself. I mean, she's wonderful with Addison, and she was on time this morning, so I guess you could say she's punctual. Punctual is a great quality, Gabe said, his tone laced with humor. Cody rolled his eyes. I thought you were in a hurry. I am. The sound of a car door slamming came through the line. I'd like to meet this punctual bride. Yeah, we'll see about that. Good luck. I'll need it. Cody hung up the phone and steered his Durango onto I-15. Gabe had a point. A good point. Cody was never the type to balk at a challenge. At least, he hadn't been when he was younger. His headstrong ways were one of the reasons he had offered the opportunity to buy a dealership. Not that he'd pressed himself to acquire a new dealership lately, even though he could afford it. His need to rise up and meet the problem head-on was still there, it worked around the edges of his mind, turning over the situation even as he flipped through radio stations and tried to ignore it. Frustrated with himself for finding a need to change, Cody swerved off the freeway and around a corner to his trailer dealership. He had things to accomplish today, he couldn't spend another minute stressing over Paige and her stupid room. Work. Work was the perfect solution. Work would see him through this, just as it had seen him through heartache and loss. Work didn't expect him to grow, to develop, to self-evaluate or evolve. Work was safe. And he had no desire to go to work today. For the first time in four years, his house felt like a home, and he'd missed that feeling. His soul had yearned for a sense of family, and this morning, with Paige, he'd felt a whisper of belonging. Like a hot drink on a cold afternoon, the feeling scalded at first, but then, once he'd acclimated, it brought comfort. Cody wasn't used to comfort. Not the kind that came from a woman with wild hair who wanted to color his house. How messed up am I, that the idea of comfort makes me anxious? Unwilling and unable to face his demons, Cody climbed out of his car and strode through the glass doors. Work. Time to go to work. Chapter 10 Paige could hear Addison giggling with the nail technician as they discussed polish colors. As promised, Paige had kept a close eye on Addison, which wasn't at all difficult, because the girl was practically glued to her side. 
Addison had said, more than once, that this was the best day ever. Of course, she also said her gown was the best dress ever, and her new shoes with the quarter-inch heel were the best ever. Somehow, each time she used the phrase, it sounded completely genuine and looped Paige's heart one more time. Paige's stylist, Evelyn, gasped when she unwrapped the towel around Paige's hair. Picking up a wet and somewhat stringy strand, she said, to color this would be sacrilege. I refuse to add even one highlight. Paige shrugged. She liked her color and didn't see a need to adjust it. Evelyn began finger-combing Paige's locks. Addison climbed into the swivel seat next to Paige. Her hair was up in a towel, and she had to move gingerly to keep it from toppling over. I want my hair like Penny Paige's. Can you make it curly? Evelyn shook her head. I can't duplicate that natural curl, and I don't think Paige wants me to dye you hair. Addison turned pleading eyes on Paige. Paige smiled. You have beautiful hair, Addison. It's the same color as your dad's. Paige paused. She was getting too close to a sensitive topic. Mr. Walker's damp hair had filled her thoughts all morning, and she was constantly hearing herself blurt her thoughts. Thankfully, she hadn't said anything too embarrassing, but when mixed with the flutters in her stomach, her comments were alarming. Addison resembled her father, in all the right ways. She had the same dark hair, deep, soulful gray eyes, and even a dimple on complimentary cheeks. Just one, because one was endearing and two would have been over the top. But it's not like yours. Addison's eyes grew dewy with disappointment. Paige had an idea. Why don't I have mine straightened like yours? Evelyn's hand came to her hip. I am not putting a chemical straightener on that curl. Paige rushed on. I meant for a day. If you flat iron it, I can wear it straight for the wedding tomorrow and Addison and I will look alike. Evelyn was nodding before Paige finished and Addison brightened. She looked so cute with the huge towel wrapped turban style and her round cheeks. Paige pulled out her phone. Let me get a picture of you before we start. She clicked the picture and took a moment to enjoy the happy cherub. On a whim, she sent the image to Mr. Walker's cell. She'd avoided talking or thinking about him by throwing herself into Addison and listening to Trisha's endless fashion tips. They'd managed to find a gown for Addison fairly quickly. The girl had a picture in her head of a hot pink dress with a satin bodice and full tulle skirt. Once she'd explained her vision to Trish, the dress was in Addison's hands in mere seconds. As they were leaving the boutique, Addison spotted a green dress on the wall and paused. Paige leaned down and whispered into her ear, that would make the perfect dress for Christmas dinner. We'll have to come back. With the promise of another visit, Addison was happy to press on. They'd shopped for everyday clothes, a couple business suits, just in case, and several skirt combos. Trish explained that all couples were encouraged to adopt regular exercise routines, and that a trainer would be coming by to run Paige through the paces. Since Paige never minded gym class and she'd always played football and basketball with her brothers, she was fine with jumping back into working out. Paige's phone beeped, and she clicked on the messages icon. Mr. Walker wrote, Looks like she's having fun. Thanks. Paige leaned forward to tuck the phone in her purse sitting on the counter in front of her. She bit her bottom lip. There was nothing wrong with the text, she just didn't want to start up a dialogue. The last one she'd tried hadn't gone over all that well. Closing her eyes as Evelyn worked salve and goop and who knew what else into her hair, Paige ran through their conversation this morning. It wasn't like she'd asked to wallpaper the room or add a jacuzzi. All she'd wanted to do was put a colorful blanket on the bed, maybe add a few throw pillows and some art on the wall. Nothing permanent, and nothing that couldn't be undone when she left. Yet Mr. Walker refused, and that grated. Okay, Addison, I think we have the perfect match. Chloe held up a bright pink bottle of nail polish. She pulled a rolling chair next to Addison's and fished her hand out from under the drape. When she swiped the brush across Addison's pinky nail, Addison let out a squeal. 
Hang on, Paige told Chloe. She dug her phone out and videoed Addison's joy as her fingernails became hot pink jewels. When Chloe moved to the other side, Paige stopped the recording and sent the video to Addison's dad with a note that asked, Is she always this excited? She's so cute. Paige held the phone in her hand so she'd feel it buzz as Evelyn began the long process of blowing out her hair. After several minutes, she checked, but there was no reply. Bouncing her leg, she checked again a few seconds later. No answer came back, and Paige wondered if she was bugging her fiancé. He had said he was behind at work. She tucked the phone away and sat back to let Evelyn finish with her hair. The last thing she wanted to do was beg for his attention. Though it would have been nice if he could have at least responded. Paige sucked her stomach in and stepped out of the dressing room in a pale blue wrap dress. What do you think, she asked Trish and Addison, who sat on a chevron couch outside the dressing rooms. Addison scrunched up her face. Don't brides wear white dresses? All the ones here are white. Addison held up the bride magazine she'd picked up from the coffee table when they'd first come in. Paige didn't see any harm in letting her look at the dresses, floral arrangements, and jewelry in the pictures, and it had kept Addison busy while she and Trish looked for a dress that was dressy but not too dressy and pretty but laid back, and, if the stars would align, would not clash with her hair. Brides can wear whatever color they want, said Trish as she hopped off the couch. Since Trish had been the expert on all things clothing related today, Addison took her word for it and went back to staring at flowers. Trish made a circle around Paige. Her lips pulled down in an uncharacteristic frown. I like the cut and the color. I'm just not sure it's what you want. You don't look happy in this dress. You look. She leaned in. Uncertain. Paige glanced at Addison and then motioned Trish over to one of the full-length mirrors a few feet away. Cold feet, she said. Trish folded her arms. I thought things were going well. She jerked her head toward Addison. Paige nodded quickly. She's a dream. Mr. Walker is. I don't know, aloof isn't quite the right word. More standoffish. This morning, he got weird when I asked him if I could change my room around, and then he ignored my video message. Trish tapped her fingernail against the wall. I know Mr. Walker came to BMB looking for a mom for Addison. Not a bride, like the majority of our clients. I think he's marrying for Addison's sake, not for his. Maybe you should focus on her and your long-term plan and not worry about him so much. Paige squeezed her eyes shut. Trish made sense. Addison was the focus of this union, not her and Mr. Walker. It was just so hard to get the idea of her and Mr. Walker out of her head. Perhaps if he wasn't the spitting image of her dream guy, she wouldn't be having this dilemma. Frustrated with herself for letting her hormones do the thinking, Paige tugged at her hair. She wasn't in this to win a man's affection, she was doing this to jumpstart her life. A life she should have been working toward for years. Okay. I can do that. Trish put her hands on Paige's forearms. And you might want to start calling him Cody. Paige shook her head so fast her newly straightened hair bounced against her cheeks. I don't think I can do that, it's too. Personal. Calling her fiancé Mr. Walker was just enough of a reminder to Paige to keep her thoughts on the job and not on the man. Once those thoughts rode off, focusing on the man. And what a specimen of a man he was. She had a hard time bringing them back into the corral. Trish laughed. You're marrying him. It's bound to get a little personal. I'm marrying him as a professional bride. Not a doe-eyed Bambi. Not without a dress, you're not, Trish said gravely. Paige had to smile at her seriousness. She'd never met someone who considered shopping a full-time job. This one. Addison announced as she held a hanger above her head. The dress dragged behind her on the shiny wood flooring, and Paige heard Trish gasp in horror. Hurrying to meet Addison, Paige lifted the hanger from her hand and pressed a finger to her lips. 
Pink, she said to Trish with a sigh. Redheads don't wear pink. Normally, I would agree with you. Trish picked up the edge of the skirt and watched the fabric move. But this shade is, well, it's unique. Try it on. She practically shoved Paige into the dressing room with the dress. Paige heard Trish say something to Addison, and then they high-fived. Shaking her head, she slid out of the blue dress and into the pink one without much hope. Whipping the door open, she held her hands out and said, See? Addison's chubby hands went to her mouth. A slow smile filled Trisha's face. Come here, she demanded, and she placed Paige in front of the mirror. Paige's jaw dropped. The dress had a vertically gathered bodice that gave her just the right amount on top without making her look top-heavy. The soft, sheer over layer brushed her knee. The lining, made of the same dusty rose color, was an inch shorter. The hem had been finished so that it waved, creating volume. There was a touch of lace around the circular neckline, giving a nod to elegance. But it was the color that took Paige's breath away. Had the material been shiny, it would have been too much. With the matte finish, it graced her completion with a rosy glow. She turned to see her hair brush the back of the bodice and noted that even though it was red on pink, it worked. She stopped holding in her stomach, finally relaxing into a dress. Trish stepped forward. This is the one. Paige turned to Addison. This is the best dress ever. Bubbling over, Addison ran right into Paige and wrapped her in a hug. Paige held the little girl close. Maybe it was the fact that Paige was wearing a pink dress for the first time in her life, but Paige decided anything was possible. Even if she spent the whole year in a white room. She mentally gagged. Being ignored by her husband, she could spend that year happily caring for Addison. Then, she would buy her little ranch and get on with her life. This job, this marriage, was the first step toward her dream and no one, not even a standoffish Mr. Walker, was going to deter her or distract her. Chapter 11 Cody hurried out of the house at the sound of tires on the driveway. Ever since Paige's video message, he couldn't wait for his girls to get home. The first time he thought of them as his girls, a grin spread his cheeks so wide they ached. From that moment on the reference stuck, and try as he might, he couldn't dislodge it. He had no claim on Paige and needed to remember that. He hadn't shared the video with anyone at work. But that had more to do with the feelings it stirred inside of him than it did with the content. If he hadn't seen Addison happy and free like that, he wouldn't have believed it. She was surrounded by strangers, and yet there wasn't an ounce of the shyness she usually exhibited. Her laughter and giggles were bold, her face open, and her eyes filled with light. Her happiness stung, because it reinforced his thoughts from earlier that his grief cast a shadow over the two of them. He thought he'd kept Addison from the deeper areas of his sorrow, that he'd allowed her the freedom to be happy even if he didn't allow himself. With one 30-second video, he learned how delusional he'd been. He wanted to hold Addison, to apologize to her, tell her he loved her, and share in her joy. He threw open the iron gate and rushed to the passenger side of Paige's beat-up Ford, where he found Addison asleep amongst piles of shopping bags and tissue paper. There would be no heart-to-heart -heart discussion tonight. Paige smiled across the cab, and Cody's heart warmed despite his initial disappointment. Paige hopped out and came around, her hair swinging long and loose. She'd straightened it, and without the curl it almost touched her belt. In the light of the setting sun, it looked like liquid gold. Hot and untouchable. Cody was at a loss for words. Hey. Paige ducked her head and tucked her hair behind her ear. Hey. Hi. For a moment, Cody wondered if she was some kind of siren, able to draw in men with a flick of her hair. His blood burned and his stomach tightened at the sight of this delightful woman. Reminding himself that he was a father first and foremost, he scrambled for the door handle. Addison was his charm to ward off enchantments, and he needed her right now. How do I get her out? He pointed through the window. Paige came alongside him and looked through the glass. 
She smelled of honeysuckle, and Cody was reminded of long afternoon horseback rides he'd taken on his grandpa's ranch. Paige smiled ruefully, completely unaware of the tranquility she brought with her and the enthralling chaos she invoked. I'll go through the other side and see if I can unearth her. While Paige carefully removed bags, placing some on the driveway and others on the hood, Cody extracted Addison from her seat. Settling her on his hip, her head tucked under his chin, he made for the house. Paige was right behind him, her arms full of shopping bags. I'm going to leave these here so I don't have to haul them back and forth. Good idea, Cody whispered over his shoulder. That family feeling, the completeness that followed Paige around like a puppy, filled the house the moment she entered. Cody cringed, realizing how empty it had been only moments before. They climbed the stairs, and Cody ducked into Addison's room to tuck her in bed. He brushed her hair away from her face, noting that she too smelled like honeysuckle, though the scent was more subtle with Addison. He kissed her temple before tucking the blankets around her shoulders. Her cherubic face was so peaceful. Cody wondered if he'd ever be contented like that again in his life. When he came out, Paige was walking past with another armload of bags. She disappeared into her room and returned a moment later, carrying a black garment bag and a small gift sack. This is Addison's gown. She handed it to Cody. And this is her hairbrush. Don't wash her hair in the morning. Just brush it out with this and she'll be good to go. Okay. Cody stared at the items. The brush looked like a porcupine on a stick. Paige considered him. Her shoes are with the dress. She paused before asking, Are you okay with doing her up in the morning? I could come over and help. Cody shrugged. I think we can handle it. He was looking forward to their last morning with just the two of them, though it now seemed quite empty. And he had planned a special breakfast of Abelskyvers. Addison's current favorite. Besides, how hard could a dress be? Paige dug her fingers into her hair and slowly ran a hand down its length, causing Cody's breath to catch. He desperately wanted to try the same move and therefore gripped the bag tight. Listen, I'm sorry about the texts today. I didn't mean to pester you. I won't do that in the future. You have to, blurted Cody. Paige's hand paused at the end of her locks, where she twisted it around her fingers, making Cody groan internally. When you didn't respond. I thought, she flipped her hair over her shoulder. I'm confused. Cody looked behind him to Addison's open door. She'd snuggled deeper under the covers and her breathing was even, but he didn't want to wake her up. Let's take this downstairs. Paige nodded and moved to go first. Out of instinct, Cody reached out to touch the small of her back. His fingers grazed her hair, and he yanked back, shocked at the heat that shot up his arm. Paige didn't turn or respond, and he hoped she hadn't felt his touch. He'd only brushed her hair, after all. Staring at his hand as if it had betrayed him as he plodded down the staircase, Cody couldn't remember the last time he'd wanted to guide a woman with his touch, wanted that connection. He hadn't even thought about it. His hand instinctively moved, like it wanted to be a bridge between them. He was still staring at his hand when his feet touched the living room floor. Paige cleared her throat. You were saying? Oh. Cody made a fist and shoved it behind his back. I was in meetings, but your texts. About Addison, he added hastily. Were the bright spot in my day. Please feel free to send them whenever you like and as often as you like. I may not respond, but that doesn't mean I'm not happy to have them. Oh. Paige's head bobbed. I'll keep that in mind. It was her turn to glance behind her. I'd better get going. I still have to pack and there's so much to do before tomorrow. Big day, Cody agreed. He was equal parts thankful to have her go and remove temptation from his living room and saddened by her departure and the inevitable loneliness it would bring. Yeah. Paige turned to go. Paige? Cody called to stop her. 
he just needed one more minute of her before he could break away for the night. Yeah. Paige paused with her hand on the door. Thanks for taking Addison today. You gave her something I can't, Anne. Thanks. Cody didn't mean the shopping trip or the nail polish or the nice-smelling hair. Paige had given Addison the ability to let her soul shine through. A smile bloomed on Paige's face. It was a wonderful day. She slipped out the door and into the twilight. He blinked as his eyes stung. Pamela was 100% correct in her assessment, Paige was the woman intended to be Addison's mom. Even if it was only for a year. He stared down at his hand. A year. He'd need to be hyper-aware when he was around Paige so he didn't muddle things by overstepping the boundaries of a professional relationship, like he'd almost done tonight. There could be camaraderie and even friendship between them as long as the physical boundaries stayed clear. Cody fell into the sofa and pressed his fist to his mouth. He shouldn't have thoughts like that about another woman. Living with Paige should have been easy because his heart was still committed to Kylie. He wouldn't betray his late wife by thinking about touching, holding, or even kissing another woman. He would have to be vigilant, but he could do that. Chapter 12 Paige stopped to get gas and a candy bar on her way home, and then she watched the stars come out. Searching her feelings, Paige couldn't sense dread, worry, or even a misgiving about going through with the wedding. There were feelings of excitement, nervousness, and an overall sense of wonder. Watching Mr. Walker carry Addison up to bed had been one of the most adorable things she'd ever seen. The tenderness in which he handled his daughter hinted at some major potential for deep and abiding love in his heart. He appeared to be the kind of man who fell and fell hard for a woman. Oh, how Paige wished she could be that woman. Instead, she was the hired help. Paige loved a good Cinderella story as much as the next girl, but she was no damsel in distress, nor was she a pauper waiting for a prince. She had a goal, the drive to work toward it, and now the funds to get it off the ground. The headlights swept the barnyard and landed square on her dad as he leaned against the faded red barn, his arms crossed. Dad had avoided her since she'd quit, and she hadn't sought him out, either. Paige turned off the truck and grabbed her wedding dress off the seat. So far, all she'd told her family was that she had a new job. They'd flip if they knew she was getting married in the morning. Flip wasn't a strong enough word. They would have an all-out come undone. Having Noah trail her around was bad enough, she couldn't imagine the havoc the baker brood would inflict on BMB if they all decided to show up for her wedding. And they would all insist on coming. Shuddering at the thought, she used her hip to shut the truck door. You're out late, said Dad. Paige held back the eye roll. It was barely 9.30. I had things to do. Tomorrow we'll be busy. To say the least. What's the dress for? First day of work. I wanted to look nice. Dad pushed off the barn. What kind of job requires a dress like that? Paige blinked. A nanny. A nanny? Dad's heavy brows came down so low she couldn't see his eyeballs. Do they know which side of the freeway you come from? Paige lifted her chest and squared her shoulders. Yep, and they hired me anyway. She spun on the heel of her boot and stalked toward the house. Dad followed. We work hard for what we have, Paige. There's no shame in that. Don't let people look down their noses at you. Paige stopped so fast, gravel skittered in all directions. The only person who has ever looked down their nose at us is you. I've never felt inferior because of my truck, my clothes, or my family. Dad's eyebrows exploded upward. You don't understand the way the world works. No, Dad, you need to stop thinking the world's out to get you. It's not. And it's not out to get me, either. Dad held his palm out. If you want something in life, you have to take it. He snatched his hand into a fist. I agree. But you don't have to take it from someone else. 
there's plenty of success and happiness to go around. You're living in a dream world. Dad shook his head. You got this job because someone else didn't. You've taken someone's place. Paige turned to go. You have no idea what you're talking about. He didn't. He didn't know about Mr. Walker's first wife dying. He didn't know Addison needed a mom. And neither of those things was Paige's fault. The Lord hadn't called Mrs. Walker home because Paige needed a job. It didn't work like that. Everyone had a path to tread, and this was hers. The fact that her road merged with the Walkers was just the way life worked out. Blay. Dad threw up his hands. It's useless to reason with you. He grabbed her and crushed her against his chest, wrinkling her new dress between them. You've got a rough road ahead of you, Penny Page, he said into her hair. Don't be a stranger. He kissed her head and then headed back out to the barn, his shoulders dusted with moonlight and his head bowed. There wasn't anything to left to say, and Paige made her way across the lawn to the back door. The overhead light cast everything in a yellow glow. She turned the knob and stepped inside the dark kitchen, only to have it flood with light. She held her hands up to block the glare as her eyes adjusted. Around the table sat her whole family. Even Jacob, Taylor, and their two kids were there, grinning like fools. What's all this? asked Paige. We wanted to wish you luck, said Matthew. I made a cake. Nevea chimed in. Sure enough, a 9 by 13 pan sat in the middle of the table. It's dark chocolate with lemon frosting. Your favorite. Paige leaned over Nevea's shoulder and swiped her finger through the yellow icing for a taste. It's perfect, she said. Nevea beamed under the praise. You guys didn't have to do all this. Paige ran her hand along the back of Nevea's chair, feeling like a complete loser. Her family, though crazy, was supportive, and she paid them back with half truths. Mom put her arm around Paige's shoulders. We couldn't let you run off to a new job without knowing your family is behind you. Paige's omissions made her ears burn. Maybe they would have understood her desire to become a bride. Maybe they would have allowed her to drive off tomorrow morning without them. Yeah, and maybe her horse kitty would sprout wings. No matter where you go, you will always be our penny page. Mom kissed her cheek. Now, who wants cake? Paige was served the first piece and given the chair at the head of the table, near her oldest brother and his family. She carefully hung her dress on the hook on the back door. David and Matthew leaned against the kitchen counter, smack talking about their next game of basketball. Hannah and Nevea sat together at the counter, whispering behind their hands. Noah took the seat to Paige's left, and Mom took the one next to him. Taylor had Maria situated between her and Jacob. Jacob had his hands full making sure John didn't get his hands full of cake. At two years old, John was all about sensory play, and he grunted when Jacob moved the plate out of his reach. So what is your new job? Taylor glanced at the dress and then back to Paige. I'm a nanny of sorts. Paige rolled a piece of cake around her in her mouth, trying to swallow around her guilt. It was darn near impossible with her tongue as dry as a summer's day. Noah harumphed. Paige ignored him. How many kids? asked Taylor. Just one. Addison. She's six. Like me, chimed Maria. Yep. Just like you. Remembering what Mr. Walker said about Addison making friends, Paige decided to lay some groundwork. Would you like to come over and play one day? Maria nodded, her mouth brimming with cake. Are you sure your employer won't mind? asked Mom. I'm sure. We've already talked about it. Paige swooped a spoonful of frosting off the cake and ate it quickly, hoping to ward off any more questions. The tart lemon flavor bit her taste buds. Can I come over tomorrow? Paige choked on her frosting. Tomorrow was not a good day. 
Thinking of Addison's constant chatter, Paige decided putting some time between the wedding and Maria's visit might be a good idea. Let's let Aunt Paige get settled in first. Taylor wiped Maria's cheeks with a napkin. Jacob was having much less luck with John, who had managed to poke himself in the eye with a spoon. A yellow glob dangled a moment before landing on Jacob's black pants. Ugh. He managed to smear it from his thigh to his knee. Help? Taylor went to the sink for a wet cloth. But mom. Faith moved, and now I don't have anyone to play with. Taylor handed the cloth to Jacob. You two will have the whole summer to become friends. Yeah. Best friends, added Noah. Paige caught something in his tone and narrowed her eyes in warning. Close as cousins, I'll bet, added Noah. Paige kicked at him under the table. Ow! Jacob leaned down to rub his leg. Noah snickered at Paige's poor aim. Sorry, said Paige. I guess I'm just nervous about tomorrow. What's to be nervous about? It's not like you're marrying this guy or anything. Noah licked the frosting off his fork and winked. Since being discreet wasn't working, Paige punched him in the shoulder. Shut. Up, she said through gritted teeth. He's right, Penny Page. Mom leaned forward to see around Noah, who was rubbing his shoulder. You can quit at any time. Sure. Sure. It's not like you signed a contract or anything. Noah scooted away as Paige swung again. Her fist caught air, and Noah smirked. You signed a contract? Jacob asked in disbelief. Paige pasted on a smile. She was so going to get Noah for this. An employment contract is all. With a confidentiality clause. She hoped Noah would take the hint. Taylor whistled. These people must be rich to go to all that trouble to protect their privacy. Noah grinned like a cat with a mouse under its paw. Rich enough to pay for anything. A nanny, a cook, a gardener, a lawyer, a wife. Paige rocketed to her feet so fast her chair made a screeching noise against the linoleum. Thank you so much for the cake and everything. You guys are wonderful. Where are you going? asked mom, her palms in front of her. I still have to pack a lot of stuff and I need to leave early. Noah got to his feet. You mean we have to leave early? Paige pretended innocence. I couldn't take you away from here another day. You've already helped so much. It's no trouble. Besides, it's not every day that my sister gets hitched to a new job. Paige gritted her teeth. If she didn't get out of here soon, Noah was going to spill the beans. Fine. I'm leaving at 7.30. Chapter 13 The day of his wedding, Cody woke up to a bang that echoed off the adobe walls around his house. It only took him a moment to recognize the sound of a shotgun. Throwing on a pair of jeans and stuffing his feet into his boots without socks, he ran outside, where he found Christopher scooping up a thick rattlesnake with a square mouth shovel. Badger, his black and white border collie, was going nuts barking at the corpse. You okay? Cody asked. Yep. I got him before he got me. Cody lifted the lid to the garbage can, and Christopher deposited the carcass. Actually, Badger found him first and had a conniption. He was lucky he didn't get bit. Christopher shook his head. Cody reached down to scratch Badger behind his ears. The dog scooted closer and closer until he was sitting on Cody's boot, his head pressed up against Cody's leg. You're so needy, Cody accused. Ever since he was a pup, Badger had begged for recognition. Not that Cody had given him much lately. He passed off care for the animal to Christopher. Great. Now he felt guilty for ignoring his dog. He'd spent the night disparaging over his physical response to Paige, his apparent lack of self-control, and his inability to keep his hands from acting on their own. 
With all of that, and now the dog, there was a lot of guilt floating around for such an early hour. Christopher leaned against the shovel. Haven't seen you for a few days. How are you doing? Cody scratched the back of his neck. He'd been so preoccupied with wedding plans and trying to keep up with work that he hadn't filled Christopher in on things. With Paige living at the house and Christopher living in the apartment above the barn, she and Christopher were likely to run into one another now and again. And if Addison was anywhere nearby, she'd introduce Paige as her new mom. Better Christopher hear it from Cody first. I'm doing well. In fact, I'm getting married today. The shovel clattered to the ground, and Badger yipped in surprise. What in the? Christopher blurted. Cody held up both his hands. It's not what you think. This is an arrangement for Addison's sake. Christopher continued to stare. There's been a new nanny every other month for a while now, and Addison needs some stability. So I'm getting married. To Ava? Heck no. Her name is Paige Baker. Christopher rubbed his whiskery chin and stared over Cody's shoulder. Paige Baker, something sparked in his eyes, and then a slow grin spread across his face. Well, good luck. He slapped Cody on the back before scooping to pick up his shovel. Cody hurried after him into the cool air of the barn. No trying to talk me out of it or telling me I'm a fool. He desperately needed someone to tell him this was crazy, because so far everyone, from Addison to Pamela to Gabe, was supportive. Didn't anyone have a solid head on their shoulders? Christopher stowed the shovel in the tack room. Nope. Thanks. No advice on my wedding day, then? Like back out now while you still have a chance. Nope. Christopher shoved his worn cowboy hat onto his mop of black hair. But Cody didn't miss the knowing gleam in his eye, and it made him angry. That's just great. Thanks for your help. He turned and stomped back into the house, slamming the door behind him. Addison was at the kitchen table with a bowl of cereal. She jerked her head around at the noise. Daddy. Cody's angst vanished at Addison's bright-eyed happiness. Good morning, sunshine. Addison giggled. Morning. Cody took a bowl from the cupboard and joined Addison at the table, where he poured himself a bowl of fruity OS and milk. There was no time for the special breakfast he'd planned. Did you see Paige? She did her hair like mine so we'd match today. Cody's mouth was full, so he nodded. He'd wondered about Paige's straight hair. It was kind of her to do that for Addison, but a small part of him hoped it wasn't permanent. Her wild curls were something to behold, and it would be a shame to have tamed them. Do you think Penny Page is pretty, Daddy? Cody's jaw slowed down, and he chewed thoughtfully. If he said no, then Addison would think she wasn't pretty either, since they matched. But if he said yes, Addison might get the wrong idea. Page was naturally beautiful, and he got the impression that she wasn't aware of just how stunning she truly was. She didn't wear a lot of makeup. Just enough to enhance what was already there. She had a fit figure, not slim and stickish, but shapely and fit. Cody bet she turned more heads than she knew, because she didn't come into a room and demand people notice her. But notice her they did. At least, Cody had. Opting to protect his daughter's self-image, Cody swallowed and said, yes. Me too, Addison chirped. Trying to steer the conversation to safer topics, Cody said, Paige left a hairbrush and a dress for you. Are you done eating? Yes. Addison jumped from her seat and ran toward the stairs. Wait, you forgot your dishes. Cody called after her. Ah. Addison changed directions and hurried back to the table. You used the milk last, so you have to put it away. She dropped her plastic bowl into the sink, and milk splashed, but didn't land on her or the counter. Cody held back his sigh. He'd rinse it out in a minute. While they had a maid do the heavy work, he insisted Addison cleaned up after herself. 
However, this morning, he didn't have the energy to make it a thing. I'll clear the table. Let me know if you need help. I will. Addison was already up the stairs. Cody glanced at the clock on the microwave, and his stomach dropped out. They'd have to leave in 20 minutes if they were going to be on time for the ceremony. After cleaning the kitchen, he sprinted through a shower and shave and had his dress slacks and a blue button-up shirt on. The shirt not yet done up. When his cell phone rang. He answered, somehow knowing it would be Gabe. Please tell me you were petrified on your wedding day. A decidedly female chuckle came through the line. It's Michaela. Sorry. Gabe picked up a bottle of cologne and stared at it. Too much? Gabe's on a flight to Arizona. He wanted me to call and make sure you didn't. These are his words, not mine. Run away screaming. He set the cologne back on his nightstand and sat on the edge of his unmade bed. He's too kind. Michaela laughed again. At least one of us is enjoying this, snarked Cody. You remind me of me. I was nervous, but I just kept repeating the reasons I wanted to get married over and over again until I could see past a year married to Gabe and visualize the finish line. Uh-huh. Cody got up to find his socks. Your finish line is a lot closer, because the moment you bring Paige home, you've accomplished your goal. Focus on that moment. Cody pictured Addison and Paige playing board games, going to the park, inviting friends over, painting their nails together, and doing who knows what else girls do. This was for Addison. She needed a steady female influence in her life. I can do that. I'm ready, announced Addison from his doorway. Cody's jaw dropped at the sight of his little girl in a hot pink gown, her hair brushed and pulled back by a matching headband, and her silver shoes sparkling. She had a little silver purse slung over one shoulder and smelled like strawberry lip gloss. Was this the same girl who couldn't match her socks to save her life? Cody? Michaela tried to get his attention. Sorry. I've just seen an angel. Cody grinned at Addison. Addison looks like a ten-year-old. Addison grinned, and Cody's heart sank. Where had the time gone? One minute she was playing on the swings, and the next minute she was carrying a purse. Be sure and take pictures, said Michaela. I will. Cody turned his back to Addison, hunched his shoulders, and spoke low. Tell Gabe I'm not running away. You got it. They said goodbye, and Cody tucked his phone into his jacket pocket and put the jacket over his arm. I guess it's time to go. He offered his arm to Addison, and she slipped her little hand into the crook of his elbow. Cody felt a catch in his throat and swallowed it back. You look beautiful, Addison. Thank you, Addison replied. Once Cody got Addison and her dress situated in the car, he settled behind the wheel. Kylie, I hope you can see our little girl today. He started the car and paused. Please know that I'm doing the best I can. As he pulled out of the garage and angled the car down his narrow lane, he glanced in the rearview mirror and saw Kylie smiling at him. He slammed on the brakes and whipped his head around, only to find an empty seat next to Addison. A sense of deep approval filled the car, starting down by his feet and rising like floodwaters. As it reached his heart, he understood, in the recesses of his soul, that Kylie wasn't only approving of the marriage, but that she approved of Paige as Addison's new mom. The lump was back in his throat, too heavy to be ignored or swallowed, it caused his eyes to sting and water. When he was at his most vulnerable, another intuition came, telling him Kylie approved of Paige for him. Despite the awesome feeling in the car, Cody's fear spiked, and he was forced to take several fortifying breaths. His fear caused the peace to recede quickly, as if he'd pulled a plug, leaving behind just enough to firm his resolve in his decision to marry Paige today, for Addison. Addison was the reason he looked for a wife. Addison was the one who needed Paige. Addison was Cody's purpose. Paige was not, nor could she be, for him. Chapter 14 
Paige and Noah waited in Pamela's office for Cody and Addison. They were ten minutes late, and Paige wondered if she was about to be stood up at the, not the altar, because they weren't in a church, so, at the desk? She considered Pamela's desk and shook her head to clear her scrambled thoughts. Noah sat in the chair next to her, his heel tapping out a trotting rhythm. He shifted, sighed, and fidgeted as much as all her other siblings put together. Not that anyone else was here. Paige had made sure of that. The only reason Noah made the guest list was because she needed his help to transport the horses. She'd hooked up the trailer and filled the first bay with a week's worth of hay. Noah's fee for driving the second vehicle was to be able to stand as a witness. Pamela stood near the door with Harrison and the officiator. They discussed inane topics like the weather and road construction. Paige appreciated their efforts at normalcy, but this day was completely out of the ordinary for her. Sorry we're late. Cody had a hold of Addison's hand as they hurried into the room. His other hand was full of flowers. Paige held her breath. Cody squatted down by Addison and whispered in her ear as he handed her the bouquet. Paige's breath whooshed out. Of course they were for Addison. She was the flower girl, after all. Addison glanced around the room. When her eyes landed on Paige, they stayed there, and she walked purposefully forward, her dad right behind her. These are for you. She handed Paige the bouquet. Look, I have a matching one. Addison beamed, holding out a smaller version of Paige's spray, which had been hidden in the bunch. That's why we're late. Apparently, Addison spent a lot of time in bridal magazines yesterday and she decided you needed flowers. Paige met his apologetic gaze, and once again she held her breath. Clean-shaven, hair recently cut, and dressed in a suit that exuded masculinity, Mr. Walker was every bit the man fantasies were made from. Not that Paige would fantasize about him. She couldn't. Not if she was going to stay professional while living in his house. It simply wouldn't do to drool each time she saw him. If she did, she'd become dehydrated. A frantic giggle escaped her lips, and her face burned. She was sure it was a darker red than her hair. Focusing on Addison, because it was much safer than focusing on her father, Paige said, thank you. I love daisies. They look happy. Like you, replied Addison. Noah took that moment to stand and square off with her betrothed. If having Mr. Walker stand close enough she could smell his aftershave made her face flush, then Noah's big brother routine turned her crimson. I know this isn't a traditional marriage. Noah glanced at Paige. And my sister can handle herself just fine. I want you to know that if anything happens to her, I'm holding you accountable. Paige's stomach now twisted with discomfort. Would he tell Noah to leave him alone? Would he laugh at Noah and the marriage and make a joke out of their vows? Either one would tell Paige all she needed to know about how Mr. Walker truly felt about this wedding and about her. Mr. Walker turned toward Paige, and she lifted her eyes to his. There, she found a sense of pride and honor she hadn't expected. Offering his hand to Noah, he said, I don't enter into this lightly, and I take Paige's well-being and safety very seriously. Noah nodded and shook the outstretched hand. Paige grabbed the back of her chair for support. It wasn't a declaration of love, but the reverence in his voice had said much more than his words and turned Paige's normally sturdy knees weak. Shall we get started? asked Pamela. Chapter 15 Cody glanced in his rearview mirror to see Paige's truck a half mile behind him. Addison had insisted on riding with Paige, and Cody was happy to let them begin bonding. Without Addison's chatter, Cody had time to process the morning's events. The ceremony took no more than five minutes. They'd had a few pictures taken in front of the receptionist's desk. Most of them of Addison and Paige together. And then they were off. The whole experience was anticlimactic after his stress level had been so high. He couldn't believe he'd gotten himself so worked up over such a small moment. 
Loosening his tie, he admitted that for a small moment it had big consequences, one of which now resided on his left hand. The thin band fit snugly against his ring from his first marriage. Paige hadn't even lifted an eyebrow at the ring already there when she put her ring on his finger. He looked at the silver band again. Her ring glinted in the sunlight, winking at him as if they shared a secret. The secret in Cody's heart was that he enjoyed the idea of belonging to a woman again. It was old-fashioned and syrupy, and he would never confess his thoughts on the matter to Gabe or anyone else who could take away his man card. There was just something about being connected to someone and wearing a symbol of that connection that spoke to him. When Noah had challenged him before the ceremony, it took less than a breath for Cody to step up and be the type of man who would defend his wife and his family. He'd done everything in his power to not think about him and Paige being married and to focus on Paige for Addison's sake. But in that moment, a noble fiber that had been woven into his being burned with an intensity unlike anything he'd ever felt before. The strength of it fortified him, and as he slipped a ring on Paige's finger, she had become his, and he had become hers, and he couldn't deny it. He turned into his drive and opened the garage door. There was plenty of room for both his car and Paige's truck. However, Paige didn't pull into the garage, she drove out to the barn. Cody got out of his car and headed over to tell her she was welcome to park in the garage. While he was still a ways away, Paige and Addison hopped out. Addison was talking away, her hands clutching both bouquets of daisies. Paige put the tailgate of her truck down. She grabbed a pair of boots and slipped off her silver dress shoes. Then, despite her pink dress, she hefted a saddle out of the back of the truck, slung it behind her back so she could carry it with one hand, and headed toward the barn. Cody's steps increased right along with his heart rate at seeing the western tack. You can't put that in there, he called just as she opened the barn door. Paige paused, using her free hand to brush her hair off her face. Where do you want it, then? Cody stared at the saddle. A feeling much like the one he'd had this morning, when looking at the dead rattlesnake, chilled up his spine. Back where it came from. Paige stared at him for a moment. That's not possible. Besides, I have more than one. She glanced toward her truck. Who knew what other gear she'd brought? Halters? Lead ropes? Brushes? Blankets? It was all too much to contemplate. Then we'll get a storage unit for them. Paige glanced at Addison, who shrugged her shoulders. All Addison knew was that they had this big building where Christopher and Badger lived. He wondered if she even knew it was a barn. If she did, it wasn't because he had told her. Cody tried to reason with Paige. You won't need it while you live here. I don't have horses on the premises. A horn honked. Well, it was more of an ahuga. And Cody turned to see a pristinely restored 57 Chevy coming down his lane with a horse trailer in tow. He turned back to see a wicked grin split Paige's face. Don't worry. I brought some of those, too. Panic and rage filled Cody. No. No. You can't possibly have horses here. Paige pushed the barn door open the rest of the way. She walked a few steps before taking the place in. Cody, barely a breath behind her, could see it so clearly through her eyes. Fifteen wood and iron stalls lined the walls, one of them a birthing stall at the end, each one with a feeder and automatic watering trough. Hay storage was on the far end, and the tack room door was open, revealing several empty saddle stands. Badger's house was next to the stairs that went to the second level. The place smelled of dust and earth, but there were no horses to inquisitively poke their heads over the doors and there wasn't a speck of horse droppings. In Paige's eyes, it must have been perfect. In Cody's eyes, it was the way his heart felt after Kylie died, empty and without purpose. You can't store your animals here, he said again. Paige lowered the saddle to the ground. She might have been the picture of womanly grace with her pale pink wedding dress, ivory skin, and petite nose, but the fire in her was another thing altogether. Cody got the feeling that he'd wakened a sleeping bear. 
When she spoke, her calm voice contrasted with the storm in her eyes. I invested everything I own into these animals, and I am not letting them out of my sight. Cody made sure Addison wasn't within hearing distance. He didn't see her, so she must have stayed outside to wait for Noah. Stepping closer to Paige, he growled, I said no. Paige threw her arms out to the side. You have an amazing facility here. I plan to ride every day. Early mornings, if I have to. And the less time it takes for me to travel from the horses to your home, the more time I get to spend with Addison. I'll save money having them here instead of paying boarding fees. My horses are my future, and if they are close and I can monitor their eating habits, behavior, and overall health, then my mind will be much more at ease. Besides, it will be good for Addison. Horses. Cody jerked his palm up. My daughter is not allowed in this barn. Paige blinked once and then put on a brave smile. Her eyes swirled with color and causing Cody's body to tingle. Fine, she said. But I have to be. And so do my horses. Cody wiped his hand over his mouth. Not another horse-loving wife, he muttered. He should have paid more attention to Paige's boots, her truck, her flowing skirts. Okay, so he paid plenty of attention to those. Attention he should have put into making sure she wasn't going to commandeer his barn. What have we here? Christopher tromped down the steps, a huge grin on his face. Badger trotted along right behind him. Cody put some physical distance between himself and Paige. Christopher Ramirez, this is Paige Baker. Christopher wrapped Paige in a one-armed hug. I think it's Paige Walker now, isn't it? Paige tucked her hair behind her ear, a light blush dusting her cheeks. I guess it is. It's nice to see you again, Christopher. Her pretty brow wrinkled. What are you doing here? I live here, Christopher replied. Cody looked back and forth between the two. You know each other? Christopher dropped his arm, tucking his fingers in his pocket. We met a while ago. Badger nosed his way between Christopher and Paige, nudging Paige for attention. Paige scratched behind his ears without looking like she had to think about it. Her mind was somewhere else, as if she was reconciling Christopher's appearance in Cody's barn with their last encounter. Cody waited, but neither of them elaborated on the event of their first meeting. In the silence, his and Paige's heated words melted away, and Cody was struck with the feeling of domestic bliss in this moment, his right-hand man and trusted friend, his wife, and his dog standing companionably together. It was as if Paige completed the picture with her presence. The clip-clop of horse hooves on the barn floor brought everyone's attention to Noah as he led an athletic-looking horse into the barn. Addison clung to Noah's free hand, her dress and shoes looking all the more adorable next to Noah's faded jeans and dusty boots. Her eyes never left the horse, wonder clearly written across her features. Cody groaned. Noah let out a low whistle as his head twisted to take in his surroundings. Where do you want Kitty? he asked Paige. Back in the trailer, said Cody, his voice unnecessarily loud in the enclosed building. Paige hooked her thumb over her shoulder. Put her in the third stall. We'll put buttons between the two horses. Cody blocked Noah's path. They aren't staying, so you might as well put her back. Noah's look to Paige for confirmation irked Cody. She's not in charge here. And where exactly am I supposed to take them once I load them up, spat Noah. I don't care. Noah's eyes hardened. Only a fool would try to separate Paige and Kitty. Call me a fool, then, countered Cody. Noah's shoulders and chest enlarged right before Cody's eyes. Cody got the feeling the only reason he hadn't been punched in the face was because Addison still held Noah's hand. A fact he was grateful for. He and Noah were a good match physically, but Cody had no desire to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his new brother-in-law. Instead of a punch, Noah threw the lead rope. It hit Cody in the chest, and he automatically held it tight as Kitty skittered. Ugh. This is ridiculous. 
Paige snatched the rope from his hands and stopped to the third stall on the right. She thrust open the door and walked Kitty in, turning her before removing her bridle. She closed the latch behind her and hung the bridle on the hook just outside the stall. They're staying. Cody clamped his mouth shut against a torrent of curse words. At least for the night. Paige flipped her hair behind her back as she came to stand so close that Cody could feel the warmth of her body, something he hadn't felt from a woman in four years. It was like a campfire on a chilly night. Those were four very long and lonely years. Her eyes changed from steely gray to vulnerable green. They don't have anywhere else to go. Paige's silent imploring unwound Cody's fearful anger. One night, he croaked. Paige nodded, seemingly unable to break the connection. I'll get the others. Noah disappeared from Cody's peripheral vision. I'll help. Christopher passed by. Still, neither Cody nor Paige moved. I don't have hay. Cody was surprised at the apology in his voice. I do. Paige smiled. Somehow, I knew you were going to say that. Cody chuckled. Kind of fitting that she'd be in the first stall, don't you think? Christopher asked as he brought in another horse. Cody's hand flew to his stomach, and he doubled over as if he'd been physically hit. Daddy. Addison was at his side. He'd been so wrapped up in Paige and the horses, he'd forgotten Addison was in the barn. How could he do that? How could he forget his own daughter? Cody straightened and rounded on Paige. You bought Annie Mae. The words were an accusation. Heck yeah, I did. Paige's grin faded. Her gaze went from the horse to Christopher to Cody. Your serenity stables? Cody shook his head. My wife was. Your wife? Paige asked, her eyes darting to where his left hand rested on his right bicep, both rings on display. A look of confusion and sympathy on her face. How much did she know? What had happened to Kylie wasn't a secret. Addison knew the basics of how she'd passed away. There were articles in the local papers. Kylie Carter was your wife? Paige asked. Her gaze turned to Addison, scouring her face for what Cody already knew was there. The high cheekbones, the straight nose, the full lips were exact copies of Kylie's, only Addison's coloring had come from him. Paige paled. I, I didn't know. And now you know why those horses, especially that horse, can't stay. Cody reached for Addison's hand. Come on, pumpkin, it's time for lunch. Addison's feet didn't move. Are you leaving? She asked Paige. Paige fell to her knees, her beautiful wedding dress grinding into the barn floor. Every bit of Cody softened as Paige crushed Addison to her chest. He'd do almost anything for a woman who put his daughter first. Almost anything. Having horses on the property again was too much to ask. Paige was dragging him through the emotional mire, and they'd been married for less than two hours. No, sweetheart, I'm staying. Addison threw her arms around Paige and held on tight. Paige looked up at Cody, pleading with him to say something to reassure Addison. Amazed at his ability to read Paige. After only two hours of marriage. Cody shook his head. He touched Addison's shoulder. We'll make sandwiches for everyone and then you can help Paige unpack, okay? Addison loosened her hold. Paige brushed a stray hair off Addison's cheek. I can't wait to move into my new room. Will you help me decide where to put stuff? Sure. Addison took Cody's hand, but she didn't brighten. Cody could have kicked himself for arguing with Paige in front of the little girl. Of course she worried Paige would leave. She probably had abandonment issues after the year she'd been through. He needed to get a handle on his emotions. He'd corked them for years, and in one morning with Paige they had exploded. It felt good. Kylie's death had numbed his heart much like a dentist numbs the gums before he goes to work. 
Between the wedding and the horses, Cody's sensitivities had spiked and plummeted. He'd finally emerged from his anesthetized state, and it felt surprisingly favorable to experience anger, fear, and even. Dare he admit it? Attraction. Though he didn't want to dwell on that one for long. Chapter 16. Paige watched as the pair slowly made their way to the house. She wrapped her arms around her stomach, feeling the loss of having them near, hoping she hadn't driven her husband away for good. Paige ached for the two of them and what they must have been through. She couldn't imagine what would happen to her family if her mom died. Mom was the heart and soul of their home. She was bossy, intuitive, and didn't take a lick of backtalk, but she was the anchor. Noah placed his hands on Paige's shoulders and turned her to face him. Don't even think about walking away from that little girl. Shocked, Paige sputtered, W what? It would break Addison, and I won't let you do that to her. Paige shook off Noah's hands. Didn't you hear me? I'm not going to leave her. Oh. Well, that's good. Noah scuffed his boot. After the way you were shooting daggers at your husband, I thought you might be thinking about it. Paige poked him in the chest. She still had a hefty dose of frustration over the horse situation, and Noah had just thrown himself in front of the bus. Do you really think I would do that? No, protested Noah. But I wanted to make sure. Paige huffed. You're the one who freaked out about this marriage. Not me. The marriage, yes. Addison, no. Paige scowled. I couldn't get one without the other, now, could I? Noah's shoulders slumped. I guess not. Paige softened a bit. Noah might be rough around the edges, but his heart was in the right place. I should get going. Thanks to you, I have a new camp counselor to train this afternoon. Is she pretty? Paige nudged him with her shoulder. I'll let you know. Noah sauntered to his truck. Paige went to check on Annie Mae. She poked her head over the stall and found Christopher checking the horse's shoes. She felt her neck grow warm. I take it you heard that? Christopher let the foot drop. He put his hand on Annie Mae's back and passed behind her before lifting her other leg. I did. Paige lifted the latch and let herself into the stall. Annie Mae puffed air through her lips, and Paige placed her hand on the horse's velvet nose. Wanting to change the subject, she asked, how does she look? Christopher stood and leaned against the horse. She in turn leaned toward him, and Paige got the feeling they'd passed time together like this before. She looks great. I never did tell you how glad I was you outbid Diego. Oh. Paige had only a vague memory of the man she'd outbid at the auction. He gets results, but I'm not a fan of his methods. Oh. Paige rubbed between Annie May's ears. I can't imagine anyone needing to raise a hand to this horse. She obeys on a kiss. Christopher's eyes gleamed. Just like her mama. Has she had any more foals? Paige hoped so. With a connection to Serenity Stables, she could buy all May June's foals and her place in the training field would be secure. Christopher pushed his hat up with one finger. May June died in the wreck with Kylie. This was her only foal. Christopher's palm went to Annie May's back, as if he were drawing from her strength. I'm sorry. For Paige, Kitty and Buttons were extensions of her family. They didn't belong in the house or sit at the kitchen table, but they were as much a part of her life as any of her siblings. Buttons nursed her though elementary school, junior high, and her run-ins with the mean girls. Kitty soaked up her tears after her disastrous prom and laid everything she had on the line when Paige competed. Paige was sure that many had mourned Kylie. Christopher included, but he'd probably been alone in his sorrow for May June. She was something, wasn't she? Paige could still see May June's powerful muscles as she ran into the arena at full speed and practically spun around the barrels. Christopher's eyes drew in from his daze and focused on Paige. 
That she was. Paige smiled. I'm glad Annie May is in her stall. It's fitting she should be here. Even if it is only for the night. More than the horse is fitting for this place. What do you mean? Christopher opened the stall door and motioned for Paige to exit first. She stepped through and peeked over the next door at Buttons, who had already found a spot to lie down. Paige smiled. Travel always wore the pony out. The latch to Annie May's stall clicked, and Christopher cleared his throat. You may have come for Addison, but I hope you'll stay for Cody. Paige tipped her head, considering his words. That wasn't the agreement we made. Christopher just smiled. He needs you just as much as Addison does. He just doesn't realize it yet. Badger barked, as if he understood their conversation and wanted to add his agreement to Christopher's assessment of the situation. Paige smiled at the collie and patted her thigh, he scrambled over and sat on her boot. I get the feeling Mr. Walker tolerates me, but just barely. Christopher shoved his hat back down. Stick to your guns, and you'll do just fine. Cody needs a challenge. Paige's hand stilled on Badger's head. I hardly think I'm much of a challenge for Mr. Walker. Christopher threw back his head and laughed deeply. You're exactly the challenge he needs. He stepped to the meager pile of hay Noah had stacked by Paige's truck. I'll get this moved inside. Why don't you head on in? Are you joining us for lunch? Paige yanked her foot out from under Badger. He scooted close again and nudged Paige's hand with his cold nose. Paige rolled her eyes, but gave in for one more good scratch. I think I'll stay out here and make sure these beauties settle in. Paige bit her lip. I could use a buffer between me and Mr. Walker. Any chance you'd like to join us? She asked the dog. Badger panted in reply. Didn't think so. Paige went to her truck and retrieved her purse and her huge duffel bag. There were several boxes and a couple saddles in the back, but they could wait until after lunch. The sum of her worldly possessions was kind of pitiful. She'd invested more money in tack than in clothes. Since she lived at home, she didn't own any furniture. In fact, Hannah had probably commandeered Paige's room and covered the walls with her Captain America and Iron Man posters. Paige stood by her truck, unable to move towards her temporary home. Every journey begins with a single step. Once begun is half done. Even if you fall on your face, you're still moving forward. Paige couldn't bring herself to move. Addison stepped through the iron gate. Lunch is ready, she called. Even from where she stood, Paige could hear the uncertainty in Addison's voice. It raised Paige's protective instincts. I'll be right there. Paige called back, her feet tripping to get to the girl. Addison needed her, of that Paige was certain. All the stuff Christopher said about Mr. Walker needing her too, that was unsettling, to say the least. Mr. Walker was handsome, strong, and tender with Addison, but he had a way of getting Paige's hackles up. It was like he knew exactly how to nettle her. She should have put up more of a fight over the horses, but when she'd seen the emotionally scraped and bruised look in his eye, she couldn't bring herself to force him. She didn't want to ever be the reason someone looked so lost, and she found herself wondering what she could do to ease his pain. Chapter 17 Cody had decided to lay out a spread instead of make sandwiches, because he had no idea what Paige liked. He dug through the pantry and found a bag of potato chips and a box of the crackers Addison had chosen at the store. They were pink and he was pretty sure no crackers could be made pink with natural ingredients, but a few of them with a healthy lunch couldn't hurt. He backed out of the pantry and bumped into Paige, who was carrying two bags. One of them quite heavy. She leaned precariously to the heavy side before riding herself. Sorry, Cody blurted. I didn't see you coming. Or were destined to collide in every way. The flicker of attraction he'd felt when Paige was close spurted like a lighter low on fuel. Cody couldn't believe how sensitive he was to everything all of a sudden. 
His eyes drifted from her boots up her shapely legs, admiring the way the fabric of her dress brushed against her ivory skin. Clearing his throat, he looked quickly away. Sakai. Paige set her bags down by the counter and went to wash her hands. She didn't appear to have noticed his appraisal, and Cody admonished himself to keep his eyes and thoughts in line for the rest of the meal. The rest of the year. Looks good. Did you help? Paige asked Addison. Yep. I got the pickles and the cheese and the mustard. Addison had been eager to please as they set out the meal. She'd sprung to the fridge when he asked her to find the pickles. In her haste to get them on the table, she'd tripped over her own feet. Thankfully, the bottle didn't break when it hit the wood floor, but Addison looked like she might. Her face crimped as she'd tried to hold back her tears. I just wanted everything to be perfect, she confessed as Cody wiped her cheeks, his guilt growing in size to rival the Hidden Valley wildlife area. His argument with Paige over the stupid horses had done more damage to his daughter than he could have foreseen. From now on, he would be amiable. Well, as soon as the horses were off his property. He'd even provide a trailer to haul them away. It would be his wedding gift to Paige. Three of my favorite parts to a sandwich. Paige flicked her wet hands at Addison, making her squeal. They took seats at the table, Cody at the head, Addison next to him, and Paige on the other side of her. Cody glanced at the empty seats. Is Noah coming? Paige shook her head. He had to get back home. Christopher? Cody had hoped they'd have more people around to help break the ice. Paige shrugged. He said he had things to do. Cody reached for Addison's hand for the prayer. She took his and offered hers to Paige, who smiled as they linked together. With the physical distance between them, Cody couldn't take Paige's other hand in his. For this, he was grateful. He wasn't sure what would happen if he touched her in his heightened emotional state. After a short prayer, they worked in silence to fill their plates. Are you still mad at my dad? Addison asked out of the blue. Paige briefly met Cody's panicked look. He had no idea how to explain the way their marriage was different from a normal marriage. Truth be told, when he and Kylie disagreed, he often gave in to keep the peace. There were so many petty things in life that weren't worth creating discord over. Paige set her chip down and turned her body to fully face Addison. Sweetheart, married people fight. It happens. Do your mom and dad fight? Paige's laugh was full of light, and Cody felt his nerves unwinding. At least once a week. And they are still married? Addison took a huge bite of her sandwich, smearing mustard across her cheeks in the process. Paige used her napkin to clean Addison's face. They love each other dearly. Paige's cheeks flamed, causing Cody to wonder if she wished she hadn't brought love into the conversation. Thankfully, Addison didn't pick up on that, she was still worried about the argument. But why do they fight, she asked. There's a hundred different reasons. Sometimes it's something little. Like my dad spending too much money on supplies. Sometimes it's bigger. Like when Noah wanted a motorcycle and my mom said it wasn't safe. Did he get one? Paige picked up her chip again. Well, he was five and only had twenty dollars. So they made him a deal that if he saved the money, he could get the motorcycle. By the time he had enough money, he wanted to buy a truck instead. The white one? That's the one. Oh. So who won the fight? Paige put her arm around Addison. Here's the secret. My mom and dad don't fight to win or lose. They fight to work things out. Cody found himself leaning forward, his elbows on the table. What do you mean? Paige cleared her throat. They stuck to the issue. I don't remember them ever calling each other names or bringing up past disagreements. Most times, they'd end up in each other's arms after quarreling, and I knew they weren't holding grudges. She lifted a shoulder. Fighting can be productive. 
If it's done right, muttered Cody. So was this a good fight? Addison asked them. Paige raised her eyebrows and waited for Cody to answer. He'd never thought about an argument being a good thing. The image Paige painted was a much rosier one than what Cody remembered from his childhood. In those memories, name-calling was prevalent and grudges were common. His parents could reopen an argument they'd started 15 years before. But Cody could see the logic in Paige's words. What she described sounded more like a business dispute. There were times in Cody's profession when he disagreed with a supplier or manufacturer and they'd had words. Hadn't he forgiven Charles from Chrysler the moment they hung up the phone? In the months since their disagreement over delivery dates, Cody hadn't felt any animosity from Charles either. Should a marriage be any different? Besides, it was because of their fight that Cody could really taste his food. As if he were tasting it for the first time. In only twenty minutes, life felt richer, colors seemed brighter, fabrics felt softer. Over time, it might fade, nothing could stay new forever. I'd say it was a good fight. Cody offered an apologetic smile to Paige. We came to an agreement, and I hope Paige isn't holding a grudge, because I know I'm not. Paige's eyes warmed to a luminous green. I'm not holding a grudge. Apparently Addison's fears had calmed, because she crunched down on a chip. Cody tore himself away from Paige and her kaleidoscopic eyes to focus on his lunch. A part of Cody wished they'd been able to finish the fight like Paige's parents, because he wondered what it would feel like to hold Paige in his arms. Attacking his sandwich with vigor, Cody focused on the slow burn from the spicy mustard to keep his mind from wandering to thoughts best left alone. Chapter 18 Paige spent the afternoon getting settled. Addison was always close by, ready to help. After lining Paige's shoes up in pairs at the bottom of the closet, she climbed onto Paige's bed amidst the shopping bags Paige had yet to unload. Paige planned to hang most of the clothes, so she was saving that chore for last. Paige's family picture, the one they'd had taken last Christmas in front of the barn, rested in Addison's lap. No one has hair like you, Addison commented. Paige tapped her fingernail on the glass. Nevaeh's is the same color. Jacob's and David's hair is curly, but they keep it too short to be able to tell, and it is brown. My mom's used to be like mine before it went gray. See, you can see how curly it is. Yeah. Addison continued to stare at the picture as Paige puttered around the room. There was a soft knock on the open door. Does Chinese food sound okay for dinner? Paige felt a thrill at having Mr. Walker in the room. She'd tracked his movements all day using some new sonar she had that was tuned directly to him. Any time he'd come near, she'd smoothed her hair and moistened her lips. It was ridiculous of her to behave in such a manner, but she couldn't stop herself. She checked her alarm clock. Oh my gosh! I can't believe it's so late. I'm sorry. I would have fixed something, but I got caught up in all this. She waved her hands around to indicate her attempts at organization. No big deal. Cody. Mr. Walker. Stuffed his hands in his pockets. He wore a pair of jeans, softened by a hundred trips through the washer and dryer, and a long-sleeved plaid shirt over a white t-shirt. He didn't look like a billionaire. He looked like a guy Paige would have flirted with at the rodeo. Paige continued to paint the image of Mr. Walker leaning against a horse trailer wearing a straw hat, his gray eyes brooding in the shadow under the brim. So. Chinese? Paige jolted out of her head and back to her room where Mr. Walker and Addison stared at her. Yes, she blurted. Chinese is great. Orange chicken. I mean, I like orange chicken. She looked back and forth between Addison and her dad, her pulse dancing erratically. Do you guys like orange chicken? Uh-huh. Mr. Walker nodded as if he were talking to a crazy person. Perhaps he was. Paige pressed her cold and clammy palm to her burning forehead. Good, she squeaked. Do you want to ride along? He asked Addison. No. 
Thank you. K, I'll be back in a bit. Paige stared at Cody's. Mr. Walker's back as he crossed the sitting room and barely turned before she was caught ogling. Feeling as though she could use a calming influence, she dropped the socks she held into the top dresser drawer and shoved it closed. Let's go check on the horses, she said to Addison. Okay. Addison slid off the bed. Paige considered Addison's dress. You should probably change into jeans and boots if you're going to help with the horses. You wore a dress to the barn today. Paige smiled. Yes, but that was before the horses had a chance to poop in the barn. Addison's nose wrinkled. They do that. Paige laughed. Every day. It's our job to clean it up. Addison's eyes grew wide. Come on. Let's find you some pooper scooper clothes. Though she looked a little green, Addison didn't argue anymore about changing her attire, and they were soon on their way to the barn. Paige had seen that look on dozens of kids at camp. In a couple days, they were completely over their aversion to cleaning stalls and could shovel along with the best of them. Her steps slowed. Addison wouldn't have days with the horses, Paige had to find a place to board them tomorrow. The idea of leaving Kitty, Annie Mae, and even Buttons with strangers weighed heavily on her mind. Addison walked gingerly into the shaded interior of the barn. Her big brown eyes swept the floor, looking for any sign of animal mess. Paige held back a laugh. Introducing Addison to the crew was going to be fun. Paige walked to Kitty's stall first. She was getting on in years, and instead of being full of spirit, she'd mellowed. The spirit still ran free in the arena, but Paige had noticed her spurts weren't as quick as they used to be and her breathing labored more than before. At 17, the horse couldn't keep up with the youngsters anymore, but Paige couldn't bring herself to sell her trusted friend. Opening the stall door, Paige motioned for Addison to join her. Squatting so she was on Addison's level, Paige looked up at Kitty. From down there, the horse looked huge. Addison, this is Kitty. Kitty, this is Addison. Kitty didn't disappoint. She stuck her nose into Paige's hair and blew out. Addison laughed as Paige scowled. Was that necessary? Standing, Paige rubbed Kitty's neck. Here, if you pet her right here, she'll fall in love with you. Paige brushed her hand over Kitty's nose. She really needed to stop thinking about love and kissing and broad backs, covered in flannel. Clearing her throat, Paige was grateful her thoughts were her own. Slowly, Addison extended her arm, her palm coming to rest on Kitty's face. She rubbed side to side. Kitty blew out again and Addison didn't flinch. Paige grinned. Well-trained horses, like these three, are used to having people around, but you still have to be safe. Don't startle them with loud noises. They don't like to be scared, and because they're big, they can knock you down. Addison nodded, her hand still moving against Kitty's nose. Also, don't walk behind them unless they know you are there. Some horses kick first and ask questions later. Addison giggled. They don't talk. Oh, but they do. Paige winked. They went to Annie Mae's stall next, and then they went to see the pony. This is Buttons. Addison giggled again, her eyes alight. Where Kitty and Annie Mae were bigger than life in a child's eyes, Buttons was just the right size. He was barely an inch taller than Addison, which instantly put the girl at ease. She walked right up to him, brushed aside his bushy forelock, and rubbed his forehead. Buttons pressed his head against Addison's chest and rubbed up and down for a deeper scratch. Addison laughed. What is he doing? Paige grabbed the brush off the hook by the door. Using you as a scratching post. She smiled and handed the brush to Addison. Looks like he needs a little attention. Do you want to brush him? Addison snatched the brush and began a thorough grooming. After a moment of silent work, she began speaking in low tones, saying things like you're a pretty pony or I'll brush you until you shine. 
Badger came barreling into the stall, his tongue hanging out to the side. He stood up on his back legs and stuck his muzzle onto the trough, slurping loudly. Addison watched the whole thing with wonder, her hands never stopping. For his part, Buttons ignored the dog and held still, enjoying every brush stroke. One quick whistle, and Badger ran right back out the door. Paige stuck her head out of the stall and waved to Christopher. He moseyed over. Glad to see you're still here. Ha. Huh. I've handled rougher crowds. Paige didn't want to say anything in front of Addison that might make it back to Mr. Walker. She turned and nodded toward the girl. She's comfortable around them, natural-like. She want a ride? asked Christopher. With one question, the years seemed to fall from Christopher's face. Fine lines disappeared and his eyes brightened. Paige hated to disappoint him. I don't have a saddle her size. I left mine at the camp. Wait here. Christopher hurried up the stairs. Paige exchanged a questioning look with Addison. She was as curious as Paige. Less than a minute later, Christopher clomped down the stairs, carrying a child's saddle in his arms. Paige admired the stitching, the dark brown leather, and the overall craftsmanship. The tooling on the leather was obviously done by a master saddler. The SS of Serenity Stables was stamped on the skirt. It's a showpiece. She ran her hand over the soft seat. Thank you. Christopher's chest swelled. You made this? Paige asked. Ducking his head, Christopher nodded. It's a miniature of the one I made Kylie. This was supposed to be for Addison's third birthday, but with the accident, I couldn't bring myself to give it to her. It would have been a reminder to Cody, and he trailed off and looked away. Paige rested her hand on his shoulder. It's the perfect size for her now. Christopher nodded once, and Paige got the impression he was having a hard time talking around his emotions. I've got a blanket in my truck. I'll be right back. Paige hurried away to give Christopher time to recover without her hanging around and watching. By the time she got back, he was back to his normal self. Within minutes, she and Christopher had a saddle and a lead rope on buttons, who took it all in stride. He's a calm one, noted Christopher. I've never decided if he's calm or just plain lazy. Paige motioned for Addison to come over. Put your foot in here and swing your leg over the top. Wonderful. Addison beamed from on top of buttons. Paige handed the lead rope to Christopher. Would you do the honors? For the second time that night, Christopher de-aged right before Paige's eyes. He blinked several times. This is her first ride. He cleared his throat, squared his shoulders, and winked at Addison. Paige pulled out her phone and captured as many of Addison and Christopher's smiles as she could as Christopher walked twice around the barnyard. Once, when Button stopped to do his business, Addison plugged her nose, and Paige laughed. Badger trotted right alongside the pony, his heavy coat bouncing with each step. All right. I think Buttons is ready for bed, said Christopher. Addison moaned. Just one more time? Paige considered her request. The pony's nose was nearly dragging as he plodded along. Sorry, Han, Buttons is tuckered out. The pony didn't travel well, and he was probably still adjusting to his new home. They needed to get him inside, fed, and settled for the night. The group made their way to Button Stall. Can I ride Kitty next time? asked Addison. Paige was surprised by the request. Addison hadn't had any exposure to horses, and yet she didn't exhibit the hesitancy children normally experienced when facing down a 1,300-pound animal. You sure? Addison's head bounced up and down. I think we can arrange that. Right now, Buttons needs to be brushed again and then we should feed them all. Paige undid the cinch and slid the saddle off the pony. She turned to hand it to Christopher. I should work with Annie Mae, but I'd love to watch you with her instead, since this may be my only chance to observe your techniques. What with her leaving tomorrow? 
I'd like to pattern after what she's used to, you know? Christopher took the saddle. We'll see about that. Paige didn't understand what he meant. About the training or her leaving tomorrow? Both. Christopher made his way to the tack room with the saddle. I think I'll leave this in here from now on. It'll be easier to get to. Paige followed on his heels, knowing Addison and Buttons would be fine together for a few minutes. Christopher, I appreciate the thought, but I made a deal with Mr. Walker and I don't want to cause problems. Christopher tossed the saddle over a saddle stand keeping both hands on the leather, he leaned into it. I could call the stables we use and see if they have room. Annie May would feel right at home. They have an excellent arena and I'm there every day. Paige ran through her options. She knew of two stables in the area, but neither one was ideal. If Christopher approved, and Annie May was used to the place, it could be the best option. She just hated the idea of not having them close. How many times a day did she pass through the barn at home and check in? Four? Eight? And every time she went through, Kitty was there to greet her. She sighed, heavily. I don't have much of a choice. She scrubbed her hands up and down her arms. Thank you. I would appreciate it if you'd see if they have space. Badger barked, and Paige stepped out to see Mr. Walker's car coming up the drive. Addison. Paige called. Time to wash up for dinner. The words echoed in Paige's ears. How many times had her mom yelled the phrase time to wash up for dinner in Paige's lifetime? She shook her head at how easily she had slipped into her mom's boots. Addison came out of the stall just as Mr. Walker's car pulled into the garage. Addison darted across the packed dirt, and Paige reached for a pitchfork leaning against the wall. I'll feed tonight. Christopher took the tool. I don't mind. Christopher pushed his hat down firmly on his head. Seeing that little girl on that saddle did a lot of good for this old heart. Feed in is the least I can do. Paige impulsively hugged Christopher, not knowing whether he needed it or she did. From the moment she'd seen him at the horse auction, Paige knew he was a good man. His support and willingness to help with Annie May was huge. Some horse trainers didn't like sharing their techniques. More than once, Paige had been politely told to buzz off when she asked questions. What skills she'd gained had been from books, online videos, and trial and error. Thank you. Christopher patted her back with one plate-sized hand. Get on with ya before your dinner gets cold. Paige jogged to the garage, where she sat on the bench by the door to shed her boots. Christopher was a dear man. While Paige had been discouraged over having to send her stock away, she'd gained an ally and a friend and had seen an old wound stitched up as Christopher led Addison and Buttons around the yard. She wished Mr. Walker had been there to see the light in Addison's eyes. Paige would have loved to share that moment with him. She reached for her phone, intending to send him a picture or two. As she scrolled through, she thought better of it. Mr. Walker didn't like the horses and he didn't seem to want Addison near them. The last thing she needed to do was throw Addison's joy in his face. Any peace she'd acquired in the barn had ridden away on the evening breeze. Addison needed horses, Paige could see it in her eyes. Yet Mr. Walker was set on keeping them apart. Paige paused. He was set on keeping the horses off the property. That didn't mean Paige couldn't take Addison to the horses. Yet if she did that, Addison was sure to tell her dad. There was just no good way to make it all work out. Paige clenched and unclenched her hands, frustrated that she was stuck between following her instincts and keeping the peace with her new husband. A husband who had provided dinner and waited on the other side of the door for her to share a meal. For tonight, she wouldn't make waves. Paige grinned. Tomorrow was another story. Chapter 19 Later that night, after Cody, Paige, and Addison had consumed an insane amount of orange chicken and fried rice, Cody took advantage of the opportunity to tuck a worn-out and somewhat grouchy Addison in bed. 
He leaned over to kiss her head and noted that she smelled of horses and fresh air. She'd talked nonstop about buttons and brushing him. She even said he'd nodded when she asked if he liked being brushed. Cody listened with patience. He could handle one day of horse excitement from his daughter. One day only. Addison's future did not include rodeos or even recreational riding. He made sure to remind her that the horses would be leaving tomorrow. Paige had been quiet during the meal. She stared at her plate, her eyes unfocused. Cody wasn't sure how to approach her somber mood, so he didn't work to draw her out. Though she was obviously upset about the horses leaving, she wasn't giving him the silent treatment. When their hands touched as they reached for the steamed broccoli at the same time, Paige gasped, unmoving. For Cody, the whole world moved at her touch. He spent the rest of the meal stealing glances at Paige and ducking when she caught him looking. His awkwardness must have frightened her away, because when he mentioned his desire to tuck Addison in, Paige hightailed it out to the barn and didn't look back. Cody kissed Addison's hair. She'd already turned to her side and fallen asleep before he left the room. He realized he'd left his phone in the car and headed out to the garage. The steady thump-thump of a horse's canter and Paige's laughter tugged his feet to the edge of the driveway. Cody was just in time to see Paige and Annie may fly across the arena. Christopher threw his arms in the air and yelled, yeah. Paige laughed again and patted Annie May. Good girl. Her voice easily carried over the dirt and concrete between them. Thrown back a step by Paige's breathtaking horsemanship and the delightful way her tight jeans tucked into her boots, accentuating her long and lean legs, Cody had to pound his chest to jumpstart his breathing. She hesitated around the second barrel. Christopher leaned against the fence. I could feel it, Paige agreed. She wore a leather hat that looked like it had seen better days, and her hair bounced against her back, changing colors in the fading light. Try giving her a little nudge on the inside when she starts to turn. You got it. Paige's smile could be seen for miles. Timer ready? The old man was as content as Cody had ever seen him out here working with a horse and rider. Set, confirmed Christopher. Paige nodded, loped Annie Mae in a circle to get her on the right lead, and then kicked the horse into a run. Cody's feet moved forward, drawing him closer to Paige and her thundering horse, his heart racing as fast as Annie Mae's. Come on, he whispered, encouraging the animal to respond as Paige neared the second barrel. Hup! Paige kicked her inside foot just as they started the turn, and Annie Mae's backside swung around like it was on a hinge. Cody's hand flew out to grab the gate, and he was soon on the inside of the arena. Paige's hair, still straight and loose, whipped behind her like molten caramel. Her body moved with the horse, anticipating the next turn. They were around the barrel and speeding home before Cody released his breath. With Cody's new awareness of life, Paige's athleticism and grace slammed into his consciousness with the force of a semi-truck. Annie Mae blurred past the timer and Paige pulled back on the reins. The horse danced sideways, still excited by the run. This the first time you've put her round the barrels? asked Christopher. I walked her through the pattern a couple days ago. She needs to be more familiar with it. I can tell she's not committed, answered Paige. Christopher slapped his hand on his thigh. For not being committed, she's quick. How quick? Paige stood up in the stirrups, leaning forward. 16.67. Paige hooped and sent her hat flying through the air. Christopher, that old grizzly bear, laughed with a joy Cody hadn't heard in years. Cody clapped his hands in excitement and hurried over to Paige. That was amazing. Grabbing the side of Annie Mae's bridle, he rested his other hand on her leg. It felt right to be here with her. Paige's joy overflowed, rushing over his skin and drowning him in a bizarre mixture of colors and light. He couldn't say he'd felt anything quite like it before. Paige smiled down at him. She's amazing. She leaned down to pat Annie Mae, her hair brushing Cody's arm. Cody lifted his hand from her leg and gently combed his fingers through her locks. 
Pausing about halfway though, he closed his eyes, relishing the silky texture against his skin. Mr. Walker, breathed Paige. Cody's eyes flew open, and he found Paige ever so close. Close enough to see the silver flecks in her eyes, feel the warmth of her breath on his lips, and smell the sweet scent of lingering honeysuckle. He tugged gently on her hair, bringing her closer still. Cody, he told her, his eyes dropping to her mouth. Why don't you call me Cody? Paige moistened her lips. It's not professional. No, but it is matrimonial. He slipped his fingers the rest of the way through her hair, letting it fan out toward the end. And we are married. Paige closed her eyes and sighed. Cody. Cody leaned in, intent on tasting Paige's kiss. Annie Mae snorted, impatient to run. The sound brought Cody out of the imaginary world where kissing Paige was as natural as breathing. He stepped back, away from Paige and her joy and away from the horse, reminding himself that Paige wasn't Kylie. While Paige wore his ring and would mother his child, she could never take Kylie's place in Cody's heart. Hot anger at his lack of self-control surged through his veins. Feeling things was quickly becoming an addiction for Cody, and he needed to rein himself in before he could lose sight of the reason he'd married Paige and claim her attentions for himself. Without another word, Cody hustled back to the house, where he shut the door on Paige's contagious happiness, her darn fast horse, her honeysuckle scent, her satin hair, and any thoughts of a romantic relationship. Chapter 20 Sunday morning, Paige got up early and snuck outside to feed the horses. She hadn't slept well, thanks to Mr. Walker's. Cody's hands in her hair. Her head still tingled from the experience. As if that wasn't enough to keep her tossing under the bleached sheets, he'd leaned in for a kiss and she'd met him halfway. Willingly. Wantonly. She'd practically thrown herself off Annie Mae and into Cody's arms for one little nip of his lips. Her brilliant imagination had turned the chaste moment into a fantasy of amazingly long kisses full of passion and adoration, which only added to her embarrassment in the golden light of dawn. Paige put off going inside as long as she could. If she didn't see Cody, she wouldn't have to face her embarrassing behavior. Finally, she forced herself to head in. Sunday breakfast wouldn't make itself, and she was the mom now, it was her job to get everyone going. After shedding her boots, she slipped into the kitchen to prepare pancakes. She worked quickly, and soon had a mound of wheat pancakes, a bowl of strawberry slices and blueberries, walnuts, whipped cream, butter, and homemade syrup on the table. She wasn't sure what the walkers liked on their pancakes, so she put out everything she could think of. As she flipped the flapjacks, she began to feel more comfortable in the kitchen and even in the house. Her confidence grew right along with the pile of pancakes at her elbow. Addison wandered downstairs around 7.30, and Cody was out of his room, though not out of his pajamas, moments later. Paige steeled herself against the smoldering in her stomach at the sight of him all rumpled and handsome. She tried to pretend like their interlude in the arena hadn't affected her and offered Cody an open smile. Fake it till you make it. Cody smiled in return, but his eyes were guarded. Paige couldn't blame him. If they had to walk on eggshells for a few days, then that was fine with her. She needed to be more cautious where she stepped. Especially with witnesses. Thankfully, Christopher hadn't said a word as they unsaddled last night, and for that she owed him one. That's a lot of pancakes, said Addison as she eyed the stack. Paige laughed at herself. It's my mom's recipe. I should have cut it in half. Paige looked at the batter still in the bowl. Maybe a fourth would have been better. We have a lot of men to feed on Sundays. You must have a whole platoon. Cody snagged the orange juice from the fridge and took his regular seat at the table. Thankful to be on a safe topic, Paige said, Matthew can eat eight to ten pancakes alone. Whoa. Paige ran her hand over Addison's must hair. Jacob holds the record. 21. Addison's mouth formed a small O. We could use some of that talent this morning, said Cody. Maybe Christopher is hungry. 
Paige quickly sent a text before taking her seat next to Addison. She placed her napkin on her lap and looked up to find Cody considering her. What? She brushed at her face to make sure she didn't have flour on her cheeks. You have Christopher's number programmed in your phone? Paige shrugged. We swapped last night after Paige's neck grew warm. She hadn't wanted to bring up last night at all, and yet here she was, stumbling over her words. When Cody had left, he seemed angry, though Paige didn't know if he was angry at her or at himself. Um, after working with the horses. There was a light tap on the door and then Christopher came through, saving her from blurting out her desires right there at the kitchen table. Smells good. He wiggled his heavy eyebrows. Addison giggled. Badger wants pancakes too. She pointed to Badger sitting on the other side of the glass patio doors, his nose leaving little squiggles and his breath fogging up the glass. Can he come in? No, answered Cody and Paige at the same time. Cody lifted his eyebrows. Paige cringed. Sorry. It's your call. She had taken to the role of mom all too quickly and needed to watch herself. This was Cody's home and she was a guest. A long-term guest, but a guest nonetheless. Christopher sat across from Paige, who forked two pancakes onto her plate and reached for the fruit. He cleared his throat. I called the stables. With the Ingalls horse show starting up, they're booked for the week. Paige tucked her elbows close to her body. I'll start calling around after breakfast and see if I can find another stable. Thanks for checking. Christopher pointed a fork loaded with pancake in her direction. I took the liberty, and I'm afraid everyone's booked up. Cody's fork clattered to his plate. You're telling me, there's not one empty stall in the whole city? Addison swung her head around, taking in all the grown-up talk like a sponge. Chewing thoughtfully, Christopher took a sip of orange juice before responding. Well, there was one here and one there, but no one had three together. Paige closed her eyes. I guess we could spread them out over the valley. It's only for a week, right? It's doable. Christopher speared another bite. You'll spend the week driving to three different stables, twice a day, to feed. These places don't provide daily care. Cody shook his head. Paige is supposed to be here, with Addison. His voice wasn't demanding or condescending. He was simply stating a fact. The reason Paige was hired. She couldn't very well leave Addison with a sitter when Cody was paying her an awful lot of money to take care of the girl. Maybe if she'd had more time before the ceremony, she could have had a plan in place, but with the abbreviated engagement, she'd done the best she could, and they'd all have to make some concessions. I could take her with me, Paige offered. That won't work, she starts summer dance classes this week. This was the first Paige had heard of a dance class. She and Cody needed to have a conversation about her responsibilities and their goals for the marriage, but now wasn't the time. Maybe I could drop her off at dance and then go feed. Addison tugged Paige's sleeve. Her solemn face was enough to take Paige's mind off her horse and pay attention. Can you stay and watch? Paige pressed her forehead to Addison's. I'd love to. Addison smiled and nuzzled Paige's nose with her own. Paige laughed and kissed the girl's forehead before they both pulled back. Addison went on to eating the whipped cream off her pancakes, and Paige went back to worrying about where to put her horses. She let out a heavy sigh and looked up to find Cody and Christopher staring at her. Christopher had a kindly smile and his eyes were soft. Cody's mouth hung open and his eyebrows almost touched his hairline. I I V E never, he looked from Paige to Addison. Paige smiled. Her exchange with Addison had been natural to her. Her family was probably lax compared to others when it came to personal space. The boys were constantly wrestling each other or throwing an arm around one of their sisters. As for the girls, they would braid hair, link arms, or tickle relentlessly. Looking back, 
Paige decided that having 10 people in a four-bedroom house had created a situation where you learn to tolerate, if not enjoy, having someone close. Cody's big house felt empty in comparison, and Paige had a surge of homesickness. Cody snapped his mouth shut. Unsure if she'd done something wrong or really right, Paige ate in silence. Christopher wiped his mouth and then set his napkin on his plate. The way I see it, our only option is to leave the horses where they are for another week. Paige sucked in air through her teeth. I can't do that. She turned to Cody. I promised it would only be one night, and I'll keep that promise. Even if I have to take them into the next county. Cody glanced at Addison, who had moved through the whipped cream and was chasing a blueberry around her plate with her fork. Her tongue poked out the side of her mouth as she concentrated. I need your focus here. He used his eyes to indicate his daughter. If that means the horse stay another few days, so be it. Cody sank back into his chair as if he'd deflated. Paige jerked her shoulders back and sat up straight. A whole week with her horses on the property. A week of working evenings with Christopher. Annie May had run an excellent pattern last night. There was no telling how much she could improve in a week. Having them here would cut down her training time, because Paige could work her nightly instead of every third, as she would have had to divide her nights between the three horses if they were at different facilities. Cody ran a hand down his face. But after that, they're gone. His words rang through Paige as strong as the farrier's hammer hitting an anvil. Still, it was more than Paige had prayed for and even better than she'd hoped. Yeah. A week should be good. She pressed her arms to her sides to keep from throwing them in the air. Cody turned to Christopher. Call the stables back today and reserve three stalls starting next week. Will do, said Christopher. When Cody looked away, he winked at Paige. Paige had the feeling Christopher hadn't made as many calls as he'd let on, but that was his fib, not hers, and she was willing to let it slide. After a moment of silence, Cody said, the pancakes are delicious. Thanks, Cody. Paige smiled and slid down in her chair. Saying his name brought up all sorts of memories from last night and made her want to giggle. She watched him out of the corner of her eye as his cheeks reddened and his dimple appeared and then disappeared just as quickly. Christopher cleared his throat. What's on the schedule today? She asked Cody. We've got church at 10. Paige checked the clock on the microwave, they had plenty of time to get dressed. I'll be ready. Then what? Cody crumpled his napkin. You want to come with us? Paige silently cringed. There she went again, believing that she was truly a wife and a mother who had every right. Was expected, even. To attend church with her family. I assumed, she felt so stupid. Despite the intimate moment they'd shared, Cody didn't see her as an equal in this marriage. She was an employee. While she didn't feel as if he thought her below him, she also didn't feel included in the family circle. Now where Cody was concerned, Addison and Christopher were open and welcoming. She would do well to remember Cody had a different idea of how this was supposed to go. It was difficult for Paige to remember this wasn't all real. Especially when they shared a table in their sleepwear. If you'd like to attend, you can ride with us, said Cody. It wasn't an invitation. It was more of an admission that she wouldn't inconvenience them by tagging along. Paige thought about driving across town to worship with her family in the building she grew up attending, but decided against it. The Walkers might not be a traditional family, but part of the reason Paige was there was to be an example to Addison. Paige's mom was a woman of faith, and if Paige was going to do this job right, then she would need to be a model for Addison as well. I'll be ready. Paige smiled. What else do you have planned? Cody shifted. We usually stick close to home on Sundays. We have grilled cheese sandwiches for lunch, added Addison. Cody grinned. Every Sunday. Paige wondered if there was meaning behind their little ritual. Not knowing made her once again feel like an outsider. 
No one asked what Paige wanted to do, and she felt the lack of interest as a stab. Pushing it aside, she offered her plans anyway. I still have some organizing to do in my room, and you, and I should probably go over our schedule for the week. Yep. Cody stood and took his dishes to the sink. I'm going to jump in the shower. He put away the flour and baking soda Paige had left on the counter before disappearing into his room. Christopher stood as well. Are you coming to church? Paige asked. No, ma'am. He scraped his plate. I'm not much of a churchgoer. Okay. Paige turned to Addison. Do you want to wear your fancy dress today? Sure. Addison jumped to her feet. She too scraped her plate, and Paige was impressed with her manners. Christopher headed toward the door. Thanks for breakfast. You're welcome, called Paige as he stepped out the door. Badger wagged his tail. Paige and Addison quickly cleaned up the remaining dishes. I'll race you to see who can shower faster, said Paige. Addison squealed and ran to the stairs. Mark. Set. Go, she called as she climbed. Hey. Paige took off after her. They thundered up the stairs and disappeared into their bathrooms, Addison giggling the whole time. Paige shed her clothes and turned on the shower. As she stepped into the warm water, she realized she was still smiling. Addison was a joy. The girl had some emotional needs that gaped like fissures in the earth, and Paige prayed she'd be able to meet them. She couldn't deny that there was a connection between the two of them. Sure, there would be rough days ahead, and at some point Addison would ask Paige to prove her love by loving her through less than her best behavior. Paige could do that. She already felt as though Addison was family, and family stood together. Cody was another matter. He might never see her as more than an employee, and that stung worse than tripping into nettle. Why should she be hurt by Cody's unacceptance? He'd obviously thought her a good candidate for Addison's caregiver. That should have been enough to satisfy Paige. But it wasn't. Instead, it made her feel off-center and a bit unsure of her place as his wife. Shaken by the admission that she wanted to be Cody's wife, Paige scrubbed her scalp. Maybe if I scrub hard enough, I can scrub those thoughts away. She had a full year in this house, and she needed to focus on Addison, training horses, and, and, and not the man who rolled out of bed looking like Paige's dream come true. Because Cody wasn't her dream. Annie May was her dream. Paige stuck out her tongue. As beautiful as Annie May was, no horse could compare to the delectable Cody Walker. Paige dunked her face into the water. I'm hopeless. Chapter 21 they were barely on time for services. Cody would have liked to blame it on Paige's need to primp, but she and Addison had been standing by the door when he finally came out of his room. Addison was dressed in the same pink creation she'd worn to the wedding. Paige had braided Addison's hair from one side of her head to the other, where she'd secured it with an elastic and created a messy bun. Paige's hair was left free, the curls cascading across her shoulders and down her back. She wore a simple navy wrap dress and a pair of grey boots with a high shine and silver tip toes. Her jewelry was made of leather and silver, which gave a casual look to what would otherwise have been an evening party dress. Cody found the effect appropriate for church, though the way his skin tingled was not at all church-related. The insane desire to kiss the soft, creamy skin of Paige's neck and have her hair brush his cheek was almost more than he could handle. Clenching his jaw had been his only recourse, and it made for a tense ride to church. To take his mind off areas he'd rather it not stray to, Cody thought about breakfast. The way Paige and Addison had connected in such a short time was beyond him. How was it possible for two people to fall in love so quickly? Neither had said the words, and still there was no doubt in Cody's mind that they'd bonded. One comment from Addison about wanting Paige to stay for class, and Paige instantly read the girl's insecurities and responded appropriately. The look of love in Paige's eyes when she kissed Addison's hair was too plain to miss. Even for Cody. 
Christopher had caught it, too, but Cody wasn't sure Addison or Paige was completely aware of what they shared. A new worry formed in Cody's mind. What would happen to Addison when Paige left? It seemed so far away that he easily brushed that worry aside. He had enough to concern himself with at the moment. Cody shepherded Paige and Addison into a pew. Addison had gone first, so he ended up next to Paige. They stood for the opening hymn. Cody mumbled along with the organ, Addison followed along, nowhere near the right key, and Paige harmonized. Cody glanced at the hymnal. Only the soprano line was written, and yet Paige sang a beautiful alto accompaniment. He shook his head. She could cook. She could ride. She could train horses. She braided hair. She'd managed to capture Addison's heart. And now she could sing. Something wrong? Paige asked as they took their seats. Is there anything you don't do? He asked, hoping his admiration came through and he didn't sound snarky, because he felt snarky. It wasn't right for one woman to have all that talent. Paige bit her bottom lip and looked up as if she were thinking really hard about the answer, but Cody could tell she was giving him a hard time. And he liked it. I can't think of anything. Cody laughed out loud and quickly covered it with a cough. The silver-haired woman in front of them threw disapproving looks over her shoulder. Paige nudged him with her elbow, her shoulders shaking with laughter. Cody was never irreverent in church. He and Addison came every week, and they sat quietly during the sermon, shook hands with the preacher, and never made waves. So why, on his first week as a married man, did Cody find that he couldn't help himself from talking through the sermon? Can you dance? he asked. Two-step, waltz, and I can line dance like a champ, she whispered back. The woman glanced over her shoulder again. Pastor Levi had already made announcements and was pointing to a verse as he read a scripture, Cody had no idea what he was talking about. He leaned closer to Paige, the scent of honeysuckle filling his senses. Play the piano? Paige put her hand on his shoulder and turned, her breath brushing the sensitive skin under his ear. The fiddle. Really? We have a family band of sorts. For the camp. Oh. Cody was overwhelmed with what he didn't know about his wife. Did she say she had three brothers? A sister? Pamela had mentioned a camp, but he had no idea what that had to do with a family band. Paige's arm slipped back to her lap, and Cody searched his mind for a way to get it back. Sitting quietly for a moment, he pondered his next question. He wanted something out of the ordinary. Something not as personal as a list of his in-laws. That was too much. Can you make jewelry? He whispered. Paige held up her wrist and nodded toward her leather cuff. Cody was impressed. It didn't look like a preteen's craft project. It looked like the expensive ones he'd seen at the mall. Did you make your dress too? Paige shook her head. But I could have. She wiggled her eyebrows. Pickles? Sweet and dill. Salsa? Mild and spicy. Paint? Walls, but not art. Tile? And frame and sheet rock, and repair a toilet. No way. The last time their toilet broke, it took three days to get a plumber in to fix it. I helped my dad add a room to our house when I was in high school, and with four brothers, something always needed to be fixed. I used to wear my dad's tool belt and follow him around. Paige was wrong. She did paint pictures, and Cody clearly saw one of her wearing tight-fitting jeans and a tool belt that had his blood pumping. What impressed him the most was that for all Paige's talents, she didn't carry herself above others. Like right now, her legs were crossed and her shoulders hunched. She nodded her bottom lip, making Cody wonder if he'd asked one too many questions. Paige bowed her head, and Cody realized Pastor Levi was leading them in prayer. Cody pondered his interest in Paige this morning and decided it was only natural to want to understand the person living upstairs in his home. 
although he'd never had that desire with the nannies that had occupied the same space. His thumb found his wedding rings as he waited for the guilt to stab his heart. He shouldn't be interested in Paige. Not for a second. Any interest beyond her ability to care for Addison was a betrayal to Kylie. Bracing for the pain, Cody was shocked when it didn't come. The congregation echoed the preacher's amen, and congregates got to their feet. Cody stayed in place, frozen by the realization that he'd let down his guard and the expected reminder of Kylie hadn't come. Glancing up, he watched as the older woman in front of them reached over the back of the pew to tap Paige's hand as it rested on her knee. They began talking, but their words were like bubbles, floating in the air and not making an impact on Cody. Horrified by his lack of response to what he considered unfaithfulness, he looked for a cause. His eyes traveled from Paige's hands up her arms and to her laughing eyes. This was her fault. Paige and her contagious smile, bright outlook, and captivating appearance had numbed Cody to the memory of Kylie. Outraged at his behavior and Paige's flirting, he tuned into the conversation happening around him. Something about an activity with the ladies' auxiliary. He shot to his feet. She'd love to come. Paige blinked several times, as though his outburst was out of place. Yes, I'll see you then. Wonderful. The woman wandered off, no doubt to recruit more helpers for their latest service project. Paige took Addison by the hand and looked expectantly at Cody. Cody glared down at her, anger filling his mind and his face, making it burn. Paige squared her shoulders and stared back. Cody didn't say a word. He just sprinted for the car, needing a moment to get himself under control, certain they would follow. Paige gave him more than a moment. She gave him a full half hour. When she and Addison finally got in the car, he snapped, what took so long? Paige clicked her seatbelt in place. We waited to thank the pastor for the sermon, and Vicky introduced me and Addison to several women in the parish who meet to sew blankets for refugees. That's the invitation you so graciously accepted for Thursday. Who's Vicky? Cody asked. Paige lifted her nose. She's the woman who sat in front of us. She overheard me say I can sew and thought I'd be an asset to the group. Cody couldn't seem to get a handle on his anger and continued to throw questions at Paige like darts. When is this? Thursday afternoon. Twisting his hands around the steering wheel, Cody spoke slowly. What about Addison? Paige twisted in her seat to smile at Addison. She's invited. Good. You're supposed to be making friends for Addison, not yourself. Even as the words left his lips, Cody couldn't understand where they were coming from. It was like another person had taken over his body and commandeered his mouth. Perhaps his emotional numbness had weakened his ability to control the level of passion Paige stirred up. Paige adjusted so she was facing Cody. You're the one that accepted without asking me. Pausing, Paige closed her eyes, and Cody could swear he heard her counting in an effort to remain calm. Her struggle only fueled his anger. Lunch can wait. Let's go over your responsibilities right when we get home. Paige narrowed her eyes. We can meet in your office. Good idea. Cody kept his eyes on the road and his mouth shut for the rest of the ride. He clung to his antagonism like a child with his favorite stuffed bear. This new perception and awareness in life was nothing if it didn't help him feel more for Kylie. He didn't want to see the colors in the world, not if it meant forgetting her. Paige's stomach twirled the whole ride home. Once they parked in the garage, Cody turned around, and in a pleasant but strained voice he asked Addison if she would like to pick out a movie to watch. Can I watch the princess one? Sure. Cody smiled, but Paige noted he pushed too hard to bring it forward. He looked like a photographer trying to get a kid to smile for school pictures. She huffed and got out of the car. Will you watch it with me? Addison asked Paige. Paige immediately softened. 
Me and your dad need to go over some things and get organized so I can take care of you this week. Maybe we can plan a movie night and have popcorn and snacks. Okay. Addison bounced into the house. Paige sighed. The peaceful afternoon she'd been looking forward to was not going to happen with Cody barking like a rabid dog. And after he'd instigated their conversation in church. If he didn't want to know what she could do, then why did he bother asking? Her head spun trying to figure out him and his mood swings. What? snapped Cody. Paige decided not to share her thoughts. Nothing. She went straight to the office and took a seat. As Cody took off his light gray suit coat and slung it over the back of a chair, Paige examined the office she had yet to see. The walls were the same cream color as the rest of the house. The big surprise was the artwork on the walls. Rocky Mountain wilderness scenes with elk, dense tree lines, and silvery blue lakes created a distinctly masculine feel in the room. Cody's desk was stained black walnut. A matching wainscot lined the room and a ceiling fan circled lazily above them. Several pictures of Addison smiled back from the bookshelves. Two fly-fishing rods crossed on the far wall. Paige instantly liked the space. It was the first room in the house that said anything about the people who lived here, and about Cody in particular. His touch was everywhere, and Paige had a hard time getting settled with so much of him in the air. Cody pulled out his phone, and Paige followed his lead. Addison has a dance class for the next two weeks. Every day for an hour and a half. If she likes it, sign her up for the next session. And if she doesn't? Then she can try gymnastics. Paige raised her eyebrows as she typed the information into her calendar. When she was done, Cody's phone beeped, letting her know his calendar had automatically updated. Trish, from BMB, had mentioned their apps were linked. Cody loosened his tie. I'm not so archaic that I believe a wife should cook and clean for her husband. Paige snorted. I am. Excuse me? She hurried to speak before he could wind up. My mom cooks most nights. I'd planned on it when I signed on with Pamela. It was Cody's turn to raise his eyebrows. We had assigned nights to help with dinner growing up. Boys included. I enjoy cooking. Cody drummed his fingers on the desk. I'm not sure where to go with that. If I tell you to cook, then I'm a Neanderthal, if I tell you not to cook, then I've taken something away that you enjoy. Paige pursed her lips. Nothing was easy with this man. It seems we've reached an impasse. If I don't cook, I'll resent you. If I do cook, I'll be stepping on your toes. She leaned back in her chair. We could flip a coin. A hint of a smile played on Cody's lips, and his dimple appeared. Paige licked her suddenly dry lips. Glancing down at a small picture frame on his desk, Cody immediately sobered. Paige followed his gaze and saw Kylie's beautiful face staring back. His reaction had been so quick and complete, it left no doubt in Paige's mind that Cody's late wife still had a major hold on his heart. She had no desire to compete with Kylie. No woman could compare to a ghost, especially not one like Kylie. She had been a few years older than Paige, and someone to look up to. Paige decided to withdraw from the race. From here on out, she was in complete control of her feelings, her hormones, and her lips. I have a cook that comes on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You're welcome to fill in on the other nights, and if you don't feel like cooking, we can order out. Fair enough. Cody tapped his phone. The maid comes on Monday mornings to deep clean. We pick up after ourselves the rest of the week. Paige stifled her argument. By Addison's age, Paige could clean a bathroom fairly well and knew how to dust. Even though she was hired to be Addison's mother, she wasn't in a position to challenge Cody's philosophy on childhood responsibilities. She'd find other ways to teach the girl to work. Although, Addison had eagerly jumped in to help with dishes this morning, so there might be something in the works there already. Cody rolled a pen between his palms. 
he opened his mouth and closed it again. Finally, he nodded and said, Addison has struggled with learning to read. I consulted a specialist, and she said Addison's mind would benefit from motor movement. There are programs available, but she said a dance class would be a good first step. Paige gripped the chair. No one had said a word about this to her before, and she had a hard time believing it. Nothing in Addison's behavior or ability to communicate would have tipped Paige off to a learning disability. I pulled her out of the school she attended last year and sort of, Cody scratched his chin. Burned a few bridges. We'll need to enroll her somewhere else before fall. Paige pressed her lips together, knowing there was no way Cody would expound on Addison's difficulties. Not in the mood he was in. And was he ever in a mood? A mood that made it more and more difficult for her to keep a level head. Your top priority this year will be Addison's well-being. You're here at her request and for her benefit. Though he sat behind a desk, Cody sounded like a drill sergeant before new recruits. That did it. Paige bristled. She hadn't taken well to her dad's controlling nature, and she sure as shootin' wasn't going to spend a year with Cody talking to her like she didn't have the brains to string two thoughts together. And what's your role in this? She demanded in the same tone of voice he'd just used. My role? I'm her dad. Right. But what does that mean to you? Are you here for dinner every night? Do you coach her soccer team in the fall? Or are you kissing her goodbye and leaving her to me for the next year? Cody leaned forward in his seat. His face darkened. She's my world. He glanced at the picture again, and his shoulders fell. She's all I have left. What about your family, or, Paige swallowed. Kylie's parents? I'm not close with my parents. Never was. Kylie's mom comes around once a month or so to visit. Her dad doesn't like me much. Paige's hand flew to her chest. That's no excuse not to visit Addison. Cody straightened his spine. If you're done prying, there are other dates to go over. Paige stood. Just put them in the calendar and I'll look at them later. Are you leaving? Cody asked angrily. I'd better, or I'm going to say something I'll regret. Cody shot to his feet and circled the desk, blocking Paige from leaving. Say it. Whatever it is. He stuck his jaw out like he was waiting for a hit. Paige folded her arms and clamped her lips shut. We're going to have to work together for Addison's sake. It's best we clear the air. Paige took a deep breath in through her petite nose. The tilt of her head seemed to say you asked for it, and Cody braced himself. Since the moment we said I do, Addison has been my first concern. She's wonderful, and I'm enjoying getting to know her. Cody pulled his chin back. But you are a completely different story. She poked him in the chest, and Cody was suddenly aware of how close they were standing. Close enough to smell honeysuckle and touch her cheek and run his hair through her curls. He wondered if curly hair was as soft as straight hair. One minute you're bathing me with a rakish smile. And the next minute you're picking fights and spouting orders. Cody's mind scrambled to keep up with Paige's painful honesty. Those muscles which had finally relaxed as he explained his concerns about Addison were in knots once again. She was just warming up. And that's just today. You've got me so turned around I don't know if I should ignore you or go out of my way to be kind. I think you're lonely and could use a friend, but the thought of getting closer to you scares the dickens out of me, because then I'd be within biting distance again. What did I do to make you so mad? Cody was still caught on the rakish smile comment. That was a good thing, right? Women liked rakes. Some women liked rakes. Did Paige like rakes? Was that the type of guy she normally dated? Cody wasn't a rake by nature. He was more of a good OL boy. Did girls date guys like him? Well. Paige put her hands on her hips. I guess. I mean. I don't know. 
Cody ran his hands through his hair. You get me so distracted I can't think. All I want to do is act. Act like your husband. And I can't. Paige went to the door. We need a break. If you come up with an answer, let me know. She left, and the oxygen went with her. Cody collapsed into the chair Paige had vacated, her sweet scent lingering. She was the most frustrating woman on the planet and he'd been dumb enough to marry her. Grabbing his phone off the desk, he punched in Gabe's number. She's impossible, Cody said. Hello to you too, joked Gabe. Hi. A movie soundtrack came through Gabe's line, and Cody got up and made sure the door was shut. The last thing he needed was Paige overhearing his conversation as he vented about his marriage. It was petty and small, but if he didn't get things out in the open, he might just implode. She's killing me, Gabe. How so? Cody searched for the right words. She showed up with horses. Three. And just expected to put them in my barn. Isn't that the purpose of a barn? Not mine. Not since Kylie died. It's an honest assumption. She probably didn't know. Cody scrubbed his free hand through his hair. He hated to admit it, but Gabe was right. Who had a barn and didn't allow horses in it? He blew out a breath. It's not just that. You should have seen her with Addison today. Was it bad? No. It was perfect. Everything I could have ever hoped Addison would have with a mother. You make it sound like that's a bad thing. It is. How? Because Paige isn't Kylie. It should be Kylie giggling with Addison and kissing her head and getting her ready for church. Not Paige. So she's good with Addison. Perfect, Cody reiterated and not just with Addison. She can do anything. She rides like a queen. She sings like an angel. She even plays the blasted fiddle. Cody dropped his head into his free hand. And she has this hair that just knocks you to your knees. Ooh hoo I see. What do you see? Because I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around what's going on here. I feel like a stranger has taken over my body, and I keep saying and doing stupid things. Hang on. Gabe must have pulled the phone away from his ear, because Cody heard his and Michaela's voices, but couldn't understand their words. After just a few seconds, Gabe was back and the movie noises were gone. First off, this isn't about Paige. This is all about you. Cody scrubbed at his head. You've been alone with your memories of Kylie for four years. I'm guessing a part of you wants to keep things the way they are. Cody grunted, not committing either way. You're a guy, Cody, flesh and blood. And you can't ignore having a flesh and blood bride. Take it from someone who's been there, it can be a very good thing. Cody wanted to argue with Gabe. Tell him he was a moron. Yet he couldn't deny the way he felt when Paige was in the room. Maybe it was his biological self waking up after a long slumber. Why Paige? asked Cody. Why not one of the nannies or women at the office who flirt with me? Why did it have to be her? The one woman he couldn't ignore or brush off. I don't know. I can't wait to meet her, though. I'd love to see hair that would knock me to my knees. Man, shut up. Cody took Gabe's teasing. I can't think about Paige like that. It's traitorous. So be a robot. But you've got to take it all the way. Stop saying stupid stuff. She doesn't need your drama. You're right. She's not here to fix my issues. The sound of the movie grew loud again. You good now? Gabe asked. Cody didn't want to keep him from Michaela any longer. As good as I'm going to get. Hang on. There was a pause, and Cody caught snippets of a conversation. Michaela wants to go to dinner on Friday. Will that work for you too? Pause. 
Michaela says to bring Addison. Paige had told him to put their schedule on the calendar without discussing it with her, so he said, yeah. That'll work. Bye, then. Bye. Cody hung up and hung his head. He owed Paige a huge apology. Gabe was right, none of this was really her fault. He was the one with the baggage. Standing, with the weight of his past hanging on him like saddlebags, he made his way up the stairs. Addison had fallen asleep on the couch, and he paused to take off her sparkly shoes and slide her feet up onto the couch. Paige's door was slightly ajar, and Cody could see her move back and forth as she organized her things. With her bright hair, she was a spot of color in the otherwise white space. Tapping lightly on the door, Cody pushed it open. Hey, he said. Paige paused in her efforts to hang up a blouse. Hey. She turned away and hooked the hanger on the closet rod. Keeping her back to him, she refolded a sweater. I wanted to say I'm sorry for getting after you. I didn't realize this would be such a big adjustment for all of us. Paige sniffed. It is. Please don't cry. If there was one thing that pierced Cody to his soul, it was a woman's tears. His eyes traveled everywhere around the room. Paige had set up a few pictures of her family. He recognized Noah. Every image was chock full of people, and Paige stood alone in the middle of a room she didn't even like. Maybe she was homesick, and on top of that he'd yelled at her for trying to make a friend. Of course, he could only guess at the reason for her tears. Desperate for a way to stem the flood, he blurted, you can do whatever you want with the room. What? she asked as she turned to face him. Cody stared at the white wall to his left. You can decorate or whatever in here. He finally lifted his gaze to meet hers and found himself trapped in the swirling grays and greens. Her eyes said she wasn't sure what to make of his offer. I want you to feel comfortable, make it your home. So if you need or want to decorate, I think that would be okay. Thanks. Paige offered him a small smile. Cody grinned, hoping to encourage the truce between them. I'm going to make some sandwiches. Do you want one? That would be nice. He took the opportunity to tear himself away. Once in the kitchen, he chuckled at himself for being stilted and awkward in his apology. Still, Paige had accepted it and moved on. Though it had been a tense afternoon, he nursed a sense of purpose and accomplishment for having pressed through and come out feeling better about himself and the situation. Paige was right, arguments could be productive. He glanced at the ceiling, wondering what she was doing right now. Dad? I'm hungry. Addison stood in the doorway, rubbing her eyes. Grilled cheese coming up. Cody yanked open the fridge. Food. Food was good. Food would get Paige down here with him. And Addison. Him and Addison. Chapter 22 Monday morning, Paige fed the horses before Addison was awake. Cody had already left for work by the time she came back in. She was disappointed that he hadn't waited to tell her goodbye. They'd ended on a pleasant note the night before, and she'd hoped they'd crossed a bridge. Smiling, she remembered the way Cody had run his fingers through her hair that first night, the life in his eyes. He'd been irresistible. Boss, husband, or stranger, she could have. Would have. Kissed him in that moment. His leaving early was probably for the best. The sooner they fell into a pattern, the better. The weekend had been long and taxing on her emotions. Yes, Cody was alluring but he carried enough guilt to weigh down an ox. Every time they got close and things evened out or heated up between them, he would box himself up again. Balancing her roles as mom and wife was made all the more complicated because on one side, Addison was accepting and effortless, and on the other side, Cody skittered like a frightened steed. They seemed to do well as long as Addison was with them. When it was just Paige and Cody, they swung between the extremes like an emotional pendulum. Well, Cody swung, Paige just tried to keep up. 
Paige didn't have much time to ponder the state of her marriage before Addison woke up. She asked for a braid for dance class, and Paige took time to do a princess-worthy do, which pleased the girl to no end. Paige followed the directions in her phone and made it to the dance studio early enough to claim a seat in the hallway. Addison waved at her through the open door a couple times. Paige snapped a picture and sent it to Cody. She held onto her phone, not expecting a reply but kind of hoping for one. As much as she enjoyed her time with Addison, she missed Cody. He brought manliness to their little group. The studio had light bamboo floors, a mirrored wall, and a sound system that could cause deafness in a matter of minutes. Thankfully, the music only played in spurts as the girls learned parts of the dance. Most moms dropped their daughters off at the door and drove away. Paige smiled as they made their way to class. One girl sniffed loudly and made a face as she passed, looking pointedly at Paige's boots. Paige gasped in shock. She looked down at her boots. These weren't her barn boots, they were clean, and Paige especially liked the shiny silver toes. I guess there's one in every group. She took a moment to check the calendar app. Cody had filled in the dance class, dance recital, and dinner with someone she didn't know. She sent him a quick text. Who's Gabe? Old friend, came the reply. So it wasn't a business dinner. Paige rubbed her temples. She hadn't thought about double dating or spending time alone with Cody beyond their weekly scheduling meetings. She chuckled. Not that their first one had gone all that well. Flirting with him during church had been fun. Touching his shoulder and being close enough to smell his aftershave was intoxicating. Could she use that word to describe sitting in church? Intoxicating? There had to be some commandment against the way Cody's whispers made her feel. When the class was over, girls flooded the hallway. Many had dance bags, where they stowed their shoes. Paige wondered if she should find one for Addison. I hate this skirt. It makes my butt look big, said one girl. Paige did a double take. Did that just come out of an eight-year-old? Paige chuckled to herself. Wait till those hips grow in, girl. Your belly is so big, said a girl with tight braids. At first, Paige thought the girl was talking to her, and she looked down to make sure her peasant blouse covered her skin. It wasn't until she looked around that she realized the girl was talking to her friend. The friend had her arms crossed over her stomach, and her face was bright pink. Paige couldn't see anything wrong with the girl. She had the normal round stomach of a healthy child and the full cheeks of youth. Mom, screeched the girl who had sniffed at Paige. You forgot my lip gloss. I'm so embarrassed. The hallway stilled as every eye turned to watch the mom's reply. Her right hand barely paused over her phone as she handed the girl a tube. Use my lipstick. You look pale. Paige nearly dropped Addison's jacket. If I'd spoken to my mom that way. The space came alive again as women and girls cleared out for the next class. Did you have fun? Paige asked. Addison lifted one shoulder. I guess. Paige didn't press. The first couple days of camp were always an adjustment and a dance class wouldn't be any different. She hoped the class worked for Addison. Cody had sent her several links and Paige read up on Addison's learning disorder. The therapy was much like what a stroke victim would undergo to connect synapses in the brain through body movement. Once the synapses connected, they stayed connected, and therapy sessions would taper off until they were no longer needed. At this point, Addison needed support and encouragement, and Paige would be happy to provide both. However, something in the slope of Addison's shoulders made her wonder if dance was the right choice. Cody had been adamant. To the point Paige's blood boiled. And so she would see it through, no matter how uncomfortable she felt in the lobby. She held out her hand and Addison grabbed on. I need to stop at Ace Hardware for some paint. Do you want to help me pick out a color for my room? Addison's face lit up. Sure. Can I paint too? I don't see why not. 
Paige grinned as they got into the car. Cody had said she could do whatever, and Paige fully intended to take him up on that offer. No more white walls and sheets and pillows and blankets. It was time to bring some color into the Walker household. Even if it was one room at a time. Because of the time he'd spent with Addison and the subsequent wedding, Cody had to work late Monday night to catch up. He'd texted ahead to let Paige know he would miss dinner. She texted back that she'd save him a plate of the lasagna she'd made. Cody's stomach growled just thinking about it. Hello, he called as he went through the door. The house was quiet. Cody had seen Paige's truck by the barn and decided to see if they were out there. A glance at the clock told him it was feeding time. The closer he got to the open door, the harder it was for Cody to move his feet. Images of Paige flooded his mind. The way she streaked across the arena. Her happy glow. The feel of her hair sliding through his fingers like strands of silk. The soft look in her eyes. The desire that burned in his gut. He wasn't strong enough to stand against a force so strong. He hesitated at the threshold and caught the sound of Addison's laughter coming from the middle stall. Cody's dress shoes were quiet on the freshly swept floor, and neither Paige nor Addison heard him approach. He glanced in and saw Addison brushing the pony while Paige braided her tail. He's a good horse, but I think Annie May is prettier, said Addison. Why do you say that? She flies when she runs. Ah. Paige secured the end of the braid and moved on to the mane, her face thoughtful. Annie May takes after her mom. She sighed. I used to love to watch your mom ride May June. Addison's hand stopped brushing, and Cody's heart pounded so loud it sounded like a donkey kicking a metal bucket over and over again. His mind screamed at him to bang on the stall door and stop Paige, but his hands were glued to his side with fear, fear of having his wounds reopened. You knew my mom? Addison barely got the words out, they were so quiet. Paige glanced at Addison and then back to her work. Cody could tell she sensed the importance of the question by the way her fingers slowed as she smoothed Button's hair. I rodeoed in the same circuit as your mom, sweetie. She was four years older than me, so I never competed with her. Thank goodness. Kitty was fast, but she couldn't beat May June. Paige leaned closer to Addison. Don't tell her I said that. Addison pressed her finger to her lips. A sense of quiet anticipation filled the stall. Cody's hands went slack. He leaned closer, not wanting to miss a word. Kylie was like a warrior princess on her horse. At least, that was how I saw her. When she entered the arena, you couldn't help but watch. And man, could she fly around those barrels. It was like being able to see the wind. Cody nodded. He couldn't think of a better description for Kylie. Addison's eyes were huge. What else? Paige smiled. She was kind. I remember one time when this girl's horse threw a shoe just minutes before her name was called. She and your mom were neck and neck in the standings, and I thought it was a lucky break for Kylie, because if this other girl didn't compete, Kylie would take home the buckle. But the next thing I knew, this other girl came streaking into the arena riding your mom's horse. Kylie had offered May June to the girl even though it meant that your mom might not win. Did she? asked Cody. At his voice, Addison sucked in a breath and hugged the brush to her chest. Paige tipped her head in contemplation. She didn't seem at all ruffled by his appearance, and he got the impression she'd known he was there the whole time. I don't remember. But I've always remembered what she did that day. Cody closed his eyes, letting the warm peace in the barn fill him from the toes up. The sense of rightness reminded him of the feeling he'd had in the car on his wedding day. The feeling that Kylie wanted Paige for Cody. Only this time, instead of letting the fear send the peace away, Cody hugged it close. In her emotionally open way, Paige let them all know she wasn't there to replace Kylie and didn't want them to forget her. Paige didn't want to forget her, which to Cody was as unique as it was precious. When he met Paige's gaze over the stall door, he was entranced. 
Instead of Paige's story tearing open his heart, it had been like a salve to the wounds. Kylie had never told him about that day. He had no idea who the other writer was or if Kylie even remembered the event. Somehow, Paige's words had comforted him. For the first time since Kylie's death, Cody didn't feel alone. Are you mad? Addison's voice was small and far away from the place Paige's eyes had taken Cody. They moved at the same time, breaking the spell into tiny pieces of desire, acceptance, and need that swirled around them like dust in the sunlight. Cody had to focus very hard to answer Addison. Who, me? Addison nodded. No. Why do you ask? Addison went back to brushing. The words seemed to come easier when she was in contact with the pony. You don't talk about my mom. Never, squeaked Paige. Addison shook her head. Paige sucked in a breath and held it. Where her hands had been steady before, they now shook. Unwilling to let her suffer under her uncertainty when she'd done everything so very right, Cody entered the stall and laid his hand over hers. The particles around them exploded at the touch of her skin. Paige gasped, and Cody held her fingers to keep her from pulling away. The sensations too pleasurable to release. It was only a moment before he realized she was holding just as tightly to him as he was to her. Cody answered Addison, though his eyes never left Paige. It was hard to talk about her because I missed her. I want to talk about her. Is that okay? Cody nodded. We can talk about her whenever you like. Can I talk to Penny Page, too? Page smiled, and Cody's hand went slack. Anytime, sweetie. Addison nodded. She finished the section of hair and brushed her hands off. I think Buttons is done. Throwing her arms around the pony's neck, Addison said, You're beautiful, Buttons. Paige slipped away and gathered several brushes and combs. Cody picked up what was left before following her into the tack room. He could hear Addison saying good night to each of the horses. Paige had given him something no other person could give, she'd given him permission to hang on to all the beautiful things he loved about Kylie, without the threat of a new woman wanting to take them away. Paige wouldn't urge him to get over Kylie, but her eyes held an invitation, a thrilling enticement. Paige dumped her things into a bucket. Cody crossed the small space between them, stopping mere inches away. The air filled with his ragged breaths and Paige's gasps. Cody, she squeaked. Cody couldn't find his voice. He reached out, slowly, cupping her face with his hand. Paige moaned and her eyes fluttered shut. Cody leaned in, intent on tasting her lips as though they were forbidden fruit. Dad? Addison called. Penny Page? Page jolted back, banging into the bucket and alerting Addison to their location. Her hand flew to her lips. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Sorry? Cody asked. There was nothing for Paige to be sorry for. He was the one who had touched her. He was the one who wanted her. Her eyes swirled, the greens and grays competing for space and indicating her uncertainty. Maybe he was the only one wanting here. And if he wasn't the only one, then he'd have to be careful he and Paige weren't caught by Addison. His daughter might have been the catalyst that brought them together, but Cody wanted a chance to win over Paige on his own. He stepped back just as Addison entered the room and threw his arms open. Smiling, Paige held out her hand. Come on, let's get you in the bath. Cody tried to catch her eye, but she kept her focus on Addison. He cleared his throat. I'll be in to tell you a bedtime story. How about one with a warrior princess? Cody's voice caught. This sharing memories was going to be harder than he thought. But with Paige around, he felt like he could do it. Addison's chin lifted, but no words came out. She nodded and hopped to the floor to take Paige's hand. Cody watched them go, waiting for that moment when Paige looked back. She never did, and her steps were absent her usual bounce. Cody kicked the wall. 
What must Paige think of him? One minute he's talking about Kylie, and the next he's trying to kiss her. If only he didn't feel so drawn to the woman. If only she didn't feel so, right. Chapter 23 By Wednesday they'd settled into a routine, and Paige felt herself relax within the structure of her days, though she wasn't any more relaxed when it came to Cody. Not after that almost kiss. She was so embarrassed at the way she'd reacted to his touch, offering her lips up like some desperate woman. Who does that? Not Paige. She'd never thrown herself at a man in her life. Yet there she was, puckering up like a lemon head. Cody didn't seem as affected by the moment as she'd been. He was Mr. Calm and collected, though he kept at least 24 inches between them at all times. After tucking in Addison and leaving her and Cody to share another warrior princess story, Paige made her way out to the barn. With the summer heating up, the days lengthened, giving her more time in the arena. A good thing, because every time she was not busy, her mind wandered to Cody. Cody's eyes. Cody's nearness. Cody's lips. It was enough to drive a woman insane. Christopher had said he'd be out for the evening, so Paige decided to put Kitty through a proper workout instead of just lunging her like she did when Annie May hogged the attention. She'd just finished saddling Kitty and was headed out to the arena when she saw Cody coming from the house. Stopping outside the gate, she waited for him to catch up, her stomach doing flips and dips at the sight of him. A part of her wished he'd pick up where they'd left off several days ago. Heaven knew her imagination had taken them to all sorts of places since then. How'd it go, she asked in an effort to keep it casual. Cody scratched his temple. Good. I guess. I wanted to ask you, do you think this is good for her? Why wouldn't it be? Addison had talked non-stop about her mom for the last two days. While the girl blossomed with each bit of information, Cody came out of their time together looking worn through. Twice Paige caught herself reaching out to him, and twice she dashed away. Cody needed physical comfort, but Paige was sure that if she allowed herself a little rain, her attraction would stampede right over the top of any good intentions. Cody kicked a pebble away. Knowing what I had and lost was excruciating. I thought I was protecting her from that pain and now I'm filling her head with all the wonderful things about her mom that she'll never know firsthand. I almost feel cruel. I don't think you're filling her head. I think you're filling the holes in her heart. Cody stepped closer. Six inches closer. How do you do that? He asked quietly. Paige's heart pounded like a Clydesdale at a run. Do what? How do you always know what to say? Paige squirmed under his intense gaze. I don't. Not always. Cody reached out and touched her elbow. Paige's skin tingled under his fingers, and her cheeks grew warm. Feeling as though she might fall right into Cody because her knees were weak, Paige tightened her grip on Kitty's lead. Kitty shook her head, jingling her halter and jerking Paige's arm from Cody's hand. He stepped back, leaving Paige to wonder exactly where that moment would have gone if Kitty hadn't interrupted. Have a good ride. Cody walked backward a few steps. Thanks. Paige opened the gate and brought Kitty through. She was about to shut it when Cody came trotting back. Was there something else? She hated the way her heart leapt with hope that he'd come back for her, to kiss her with all that she'd seen burn inside him the other night. Yes. I thought it might be fun for Addison to invite one or two friends from dance class over for a pool party. It's warm enough now, and the pool is heated. Paige's stomach nodded. Of course, Addison was his first and only concern. She hadn't made any more progress with the moms than Addison had made with the girls. Mostly because she hadn't tried. She and Addison were happy spending their time together. However, it was only natural that she should have some friends her own age. There was that one woman with the darling girl in pigtails. I'll see if we can't set something up. Great. Just put it on the calendar when you get it figured out. 
Paige nodded and gave what she hoped was a convincing smile. Sliding her foot in the stirrup, she swung her leg over the saddle and kicked Kitty into an easy trot around the fence line in an effort to put space between her and Cody. This attraction to him was distracting her from her true goal. Focus on the horses. Focus on the training. Focus on the little girl. And forget about Cody. Paige reined in Kitty and patted her neck, still forcing her thoughts to safe territory. She and Addison had formed a connection so quickly that Paige already ached at the thought of leaving. As hard as it would be for her, she couldn't imagine what it would do to Addison. She really should make finding friends for Addison a higher priority. The bigger network of support that the girl had when Paige left, the less of a trauma it would be on her. The girl had already lost one mother. A mother she was barely getting to know. And Paige didn't dare think of how she would feel losing another. She kicked Kitty into a lope. A warmth that had nothing to do with the setting sun washed over Paige, letting her know she was on the right track. Paige relaxed her hold on the reins and let the wind pull her hat off and her hair fly free. Cody watched Paige's hat fly off and fought the urge to retrieve it for her. He didn't want her to know he'd been watching her ride. Seeing Paige work her animals brought a sense of peace after the tumultuous exercise of talking about Kylie with Addison. Addison had reveled in his shared memories. While it wasn't unpleasant to introduce Addison to her mother, it drew on his emotional reserves. There was something in the steady rhythm of the horse's gait, the quiet evening air, and the blazing light at sunset that he could drink in and refuel. Usually, watching Paige calmed his troubled mind. However, tonight it had the opposite effect. Cody just had to speak to her. He'd concocted the idea of the playdate as an excuse, but when he was met by Paige's warm gray-green eyes full of concern, all rational thoughts had flown away and he'd ended up babbling on about his innermost fears of hurting Addison. Then he'd made the mistake of touching her. Sure, it was just her arm, but that touch was meant to pull her closer, to decrease the space between them, to what? What? He screamed inside his head. What were you going to do? Kiss her? Ridiculous. Kissing her was out of the question for several reasons. The first, they only met six days ago. The second, she was an employee of sorts, and that line should never be crossed. The third, this wasn't that type of marriage. Neither was Gabe's, and look how that turned out. Cody spun around and stormed into the house. Even though he wanted to kiss Paige and believed that by some miracle she wanted to kiss him back, he couldn't do it. Because if he allowed himself even the tiniest sample, he just knew he'd fall and fall hard for the woman. And that was something he couldn't allow himself to do. Love was wonderful when you didn't understand the risks involved. Cody knew the dangers of loving someone that deeply. That intimately. Surviving it once was a miracle, and Cody wasn't dumb enough to believe he'd be allotted another one. Chapter 24 Paige made sure Addison had her seatbelt on before she pulled out of the garage. Your dad said we could invite some people over for a pool party. Is there someone from your dance class you'd like to have over? Addison stared out the window. M. Why don't you look around today and see if there's someone you'd like to get to know better, and then I'll talk to her mom. Would that work? Paige hoped so. She wanted Addison to feel comfortable having a friend over and decided to let her choose who should come instead of taking the easy way out and picking a mom she felt comfortable approaching. Okay, replied Addison, though her voice was so soft Paige almost missed it. The class seemed to go well. When it was over, Addison ran to Paige. Can we invite Destiny? Which one is she? Paige whispered. Addison pointed to the girl who had sniffed at Paige's boots the first day. Paige wanted to ask, why her? Destiny was two years older than Addison, wore makeup like a 15-year-old, and barely looked Addison's way. Squaring her shoulders, Paige put on a brave face and made her way over to Destiny and her mom. Hi. I'm Paige, and this is Addison. Glancing up from her phone, the mom said, Faith. 
Destiny. Paige smiled at Destiny, who rolled her eyes and finished tying her street shoes. Determined to get through this, Paige said, we were wondering if you'd like to come swimming one day. No way. Destiny slung her bag over her shoulder. I'm way too fat to get into a swimsuit. Paige sputtered for a reply. The idea that an eight-year-old would think they were fat was incomprehensible. Faith didn't bat an eyelash at the remark. I guess that means no. She shoved Destiny towards the door. I'm late for Zumba. Move. Addison looked up at Paige and Paige looked down at her. They shrugged their shoulders at the same time. The hallway had gone quiet during their little exchange, and Paige could feel the pity from some, disdain from others, scratch against her skin. She shuffled her boots. As uncomfortable as it was to fail at making a friend in front of strangers, Paige dreaded telling Cody. He'd married her believing she could do something simple like get a couple six-year-olds together. And it shouldn't have been this hard. Paige had been herding children into social groups since she was barely in her teens. Addison hung her head, no doubt feeling the stares of those left waiting for their rides. She shouldn't take the rejection to heart. There was absolutely nothing wrong with her. She wasn't the best dancer in the class, but she wasn't a buffoon either. And she'd really come out of her shell the last couple of days. Destiny didn't know what she was missing. Paige searched for a way to distract them both and leave on a positive note. How about we paint my room? Addison gave Paige one of her full-face smiles. Yeah. Paige hoped a day of moving furniture around and painting walls would keep Addison from thinking about destiny and give her the chance to come up with a way to tell Cody she'd failed. Cody opened the door and was enveloped by the smell of roast chicken and gravy. You're spoiling us, he told Paige as he loosened his tie. She was a vision with her hair pulled back in a big, messy knot under her left ear, her turquoise apron, tight-fitting jeans, and bare feet. He immediately wanted to stand behind her, his hands on her hips, and kiss her bare neck. This? She pointed to the steaming platter in front of her. This is nothing. He grinned. Then I can't wait to see something. She threw a smile over her shoulder as she lifted a pan of ranch potato wedges from the oven. That would be dessert. Cody rolled up his sleeves, ready to help. The table was set and the food was out. Where's Addison? She's putting on her PJs. We made a bit of a mess of ourselves painting today, so she needed an early bath. Painting? Oh, her room. Cody washed his hands before sitting down at the table. He was kind of excited to see what she'd done. Can I see it? Sure. Addison came bounding down the stairs and took her seat. I made the salad. Cody smiled. It looks wonderful. Who cut the veggies? I did. Addison beamed. Cody's eyes cut to Paige. You let her use a chopping knife? Paige laughed. No. I picked up these kid-safe plastic knives today. They did great on everything but the tomatoes. Cody looked a little closer and saw that the tomatoes were indeed smashed and uneven. It looks delicious. Yep. And salad won't make you fat, added Addison. Cody chuckled. I suppose it won't. He tried to catch Paige's eye to share a little grown-up amusement at Addison's observation, but Paige was staring down at her napkin. He cleared his throat and they held hands to offer grace. Cody took a spoonful of potatoes for himself and then scooped one for Addison. No thanks, she said. But you love potatoes. I'm just eating salad. Paige's shoulders slumped and Cody wondered what was going on. You need to eat a little of everything to stay healthy. Addison shook her head. I don't want to look fat in my swimsuit so I can't eat as much. Cody saw red. He cursed silently. Paige finally met his questioning gaze, and he lifted an eyebrow in a silent demand for answers as to why his daughter thought she was fat. 
Instead of diving into an explanation, Paige put her hand on Addison's back. Sweetie, you are the perfect size for your age. And with all the work you did today, you need to eat so your body has energy. Addison pushed her plate away. Destiny thinks she's fat. And I heard Alexi ask if her dad's costume made her look fat. Squeezing his fork in his fist until it bent, Cody asked, Who are these people? Paige answered, They're girls in Addison's dance class. That class is supposed to be for six to eight year olds. Paige's eyes went all gray. It is. Cody set his misshapen fork on the table. Addison, look at me. She lifted her brown eyes, and Cody wished he could make all the pain in her life disappear with the snap of his fingers. Paige is right, you're perfect just like you are. Then why doesn't Destiny want to play with me? Cody wanted to yell out all sorts of obscenities and curse this child who had hurt his little girl. As he was editing his anger, Paige slid her seat out and pulled Addison onto her lap, where she wrapped her up in her arms. Cody moved over to Addison's seat so he could put his hand on her back. It was the closest he'd allowed himself to get to Paige in days, but he felt it safe with Addison between them. Funny how his little girl had brought them together and now was the best way to keep them apart. When I was in the second grade, there was this girl who made fun of my hair every day, said Paige. Addison sniffed. Why? Because it was different. No one else had hair like mine, and she told the other kids not to play with me. Great, one more little girl I want to let have it. Cody didn't have anything productive to add, so he bit his tongue. But it's pretty, said Addison. Thank you. And you know what? You are pretty, too. Just the way you are. Addison sniffed again. God made each of us, and he doesn't make mistakes. Addison snuggled into Paige. God also made food for us to eat, Paige tickled Addison's side. Addison giggled and squirmed to get away. Paige pecked a kiss on her cheek and let her slide off her lap. Cody moved back to his chair, feeling like a third wheel and extremely grateful for Paige's soft approach. Addison scooped herself some potatoes and Paige added a chicken leg to her plate. Paige might have taken care of this little incident, but he was going to make sure it never happened again. Hey, I have tomorrow morning off. Can I come see what you're working on in class? Addison nodded happily, her mouth too full to talk. Paige scrunched her brow. You're coming with us? Cody avoided her gaze. I thought I'd just take her. Your personal trainer is coming, isn't she? Yeah, but we should be done by eight. Cody picked up his fork and straightened it out as best he could, feeling chagrin that he'd let his anger get the better of him and vowing that he'd be in control tomorrow. The morning is yours. We'll go to an early lunch and be back around noon. He could feel Paige's eyes boring into him. She was upset that he was stepping in, he could hear it in her tone and feel in the air. How he'd become so attuned to her moods in such a short time, he'd never understand. Cody tucked into his dinner with gusto. In time, Paige would see that this was the right course of action. He was Addison's dad, it was his job to protect her, and he'd make sure he did. Paige went to bed still upset about Cody dismissing her for the morning. Yes, she'd messed up, but he didn't have to charge in and take over. Besides, he had no idea what he was in for. She tossed and turned on the upstairs sofa. Her room had still smelled heavily of fresh paint and she didn't want to sleep in the fumes, so she dragged a blanket out to the couch and fretted there. At six, her phone chirped with a text from Trish. Put on a swimsuit and meet me by the pool, we'll be there in five. Paige hurried to get dressed and then dashed out to the gate, where she saw a car coming down the lane. Trish hopped out and hurried over for a hug. I've been out of town and thinking about you constantly. I feel like I've dropped the ball with you. I'm so sorry. How are things? Not wanting to admit that Cody swooping in like an overzealous knight in shining armor made her feel less than adequate, Paige folded her arms and said, fine. 
How's Addison? This time the answer came easily. She loved the dress you picked out. She even wore it to church the next day. Oh. Trisha's hand went to her heart. Tires crunched on the drive, and Paige turned to see a red four-wheel drive jeep coming their way. Good, said Trish. I had a hard time finding a local trainer for you. Everyone I called said they only trained horses. Paige smirked. That's what you get when you live in a town that rivals Lexington for horse capital of the world. Trish wrinkled her nose, and Paige laughed. Landon should be good. He's a former professional swimmer. Paige lifted her eyebrows as a long and lean man slid out of the driver's side. He had on a pair of swim trunks and a white tank top. Paige couldn't help but compare him to Cody. Cody was a little taller and broader in the shoulders, while this guy was straight up and down. His hair was long and stringy, but then, that's the way a lot of athletes wore their hair these days. He had a friendly smile, and Paige, deciding he paled to Cody in looks, felt at ease right away. Within minutes, her new trainer had her doing laps in the pool. She surfaced in the shallow end next to Landon. Nice. Landon held up his fist, and Paige bumped it with her own. You take lessons? Paige brushed wet hair off her cheek. My parents have a pond and we all had to certify as lifeguards. Plus, I have a couple of competitive older brothers, so we raced a lot. Sweet. Landon bobbed his head. So, I wanted to start you in the pool because it's low impact, and over the summer it will be cooler than running on blacktop. Plus, Trish said you were outdoorsy. He quirked up one side of his mouth. What? Paige asked. You aren't what I had in mind. His eyes skimmed over her massive amount of hair. I'm never what someone has in mind. Paige shook her head. Just ask Cody. Cody lifted the blinds so he could see the pool. That guy was still there. He'd woken up to the sound of Paige's laughter. It was warm and inviting and had pulled Cody out of bed and to his window, where he saw Trish watching that guy strip off his shirt and dive into the pool. Trish left soon thereafter, and it was just Paige and that guy, which didn't sit well at all with Cody. He'd assumed her trainer would be female and hadn't worried about it. He should have worried about it. Cody checked his watch. 7.54 a.m., shouldn't they be almost done? They didn't look almost done. Not with the way the guy was standing much too close and holding Paige's arm. Holding was a strong word, it appeared he was working on her backstroke technique. Cody narrowed his eyes. Leaving Addison to sleep for a few more minutes, he jerked open his door and was poolside before he'd come up with a reasonable excuse for showing up. With Paige splashing across the pool, they didn't notice his appearance. Cody ran his hands through his hair. Why am I here? An irrational urge to protect what was his had overcome his brain and propelled him out the door. Cool it. Paige isn't yours. She's my wife, and I promised Noah I would look out for her. Yeah. That sounded as good a reason as any other. And if he used that excuse, he wouldn't have to dig for the real reason. Sorry, Paige called from the other end of the pool. Did we wake you? Cody looked down at his pajama bottoms and t-shirt. No. I was up. You woke me up. Addison came out, rubbing her eyes. Paige's laugh bounced off the water. Sorry. We'll be quieter next time, said the guy. Addison leaned into Cody's leg. Cody, this is my trainer, Landon. Landon, this is Cody. Paige pulled herself out of the pool, and Cody's mind blanked out at the sight of her in a swimsuit. He should look away. He really should. Ah, the husband. Nice to meet you. Landon held a dripping hand up for Cody to shake, drawing his attention away from Paige. Cody shook Landon's hand. You too. Landon climbed the steps. 
Don't forget to do those stretches tonight, or you'll be super sore in the morning. I won't. Thanks. Paige wrapped up in a towel. Cody watched for any sign that Paige was interested in Landon. She caught him staring, and he froze like a deer. This whole situation had him feeling like a doofus. He should have stayed inside, but he wanted to make sure Landon left. Here's a basic outline for your workouts this week. Landon handed Paige two laminated sheets of paper. Thanks. I'll see you later. Sounds good. The gate automatically locked behind Paige's trainer, and Cody felt the air whoosh out of his body. What did he mean, he'll see you later? Paige wrung out her hair. I think he meant he'll see me later. She went to the back door, and Addison skipped to her side. Suddenly, giving Paige the morning off seemed like a horrible idea. Are you guys meeting up today? No. Why? He said later, so I thought. Paige looked at him and then looked a little deeper. She pressed her lips together, the corners of her mouth twitching like she wanted to smile. I don't expect to see him until next Thursday. We could meet at a gym if the noise is a problem. A small smirk appeared for just a moment, and then it was gone again. Cody rolled his shoulders. She could laugh all she wanted. There was no way he was going to let Landon out of his sights. Here's fine. If you need equipment, treadmills, weights, whatever, let me know and I'll order it for the house. Paige quickly pressed her pointer finger to her lips. Thanks, she squeaked. I'm going to get dressed. She cleared her throat, twice, before she made it upstairs. It's not funny. Cody wanted to yell after her. Addison went to the kitchen and pulled out a box of cereal. Cody watched her for a minute, feeling overwhelmed. Mean girls in dance class. Stories that drained him every night. And now he had to worry about his wife frolicking in the pool with a twenty-something personal trainer. He threw his arms in the air. My family is out of control. His arms dropped, slapping against his sides. My family? Since when did we become a family? Cody shook his head. They weren't a family. Not a real one. Real families don't plan to break up in a year. Yet he couldn't deny the sense of belonging, home, and family that had followed Paige through the door. It was like she carried that stuff around in her pockets and sprinkled it like fairy dust. A family. The feeling wasn't new, but the label was. It would take a while for Cody to get used to it. Chapter 25 Paige exited her shower and sighed at the disorderly state of her bedroom. The walls, now a beautiful blue lagoon green, looked darn good, even if she did say so herself. She'd moved the antique armoire right next to the bed so Addison could fit behind it to paint, and the dresser was smushed against the bottom of the bed. The garbage can, lamp, throw pillows, and dirty clothes basket were piled on the bed itself and covered with a thin plastic sheet. Blue tape outlined the ceiling, doors, and windows, and the place still smelled like paint. While she appreciated having primer and paint in one application, the fumes were a bit much. Once she got it put back together, it would be the room she always wanted. It may have turned into the space TV shows were made of, but Paige couldn't forget that it wasn't hers. The dresser, the bed, heck, even the paint would stay here when she left. An overwhelming need to be surrounded by familiar people and things rushed through Paige. Instead of sticking around Cody's house and putting her room back together, she was going home. Running product through her hair and throwing on an old pair of jeans and a t-shirt took no time at all. Paige stopped at the table on her way out to kiss Addison goodbye. You look happy. Headed to the barn, asked Cody. He still hadn't changed out of his pajamas. Paige forced her eyes up from the flat stomach and muscular chest visible through his white t-shirt. I'm going to camp. Addison perked up. Camp? Yep. Paige found her purse by the fridge and slung it over her shoulder. Tell Noah I said hi. Cody smiled. 
Me too, chirped Addison. Will do. Paige wiggled her fingers in a wave as she shut the glass doors. Her truck rumbled to a start, bringing a smile to her face. The drive didn't take nearly as long as Paige remembered, and pretty soon she pulled into a regular spot and set the brake. David lifted a hand in greeting, his other firmly holding a lead rope. The mare wasn't familiar, and Paige jumped out to meet the new addition. Howdy, stranger, said Matthew as he came out of the barn with a bucket of oats. Hi. The new horse heard the oats shift in the bucket and turned toward Matthew, her ears forward. Paige slugged David in the shoulder and rubbed Matthew's head by way of a proper greeting, making his hair stand up. I'd return the favor, but then the neighbors would send the fire department over to put out your hair, teased Matthew. Paige laughed. How are things going? Not bad. This is Angel. Hello, Angel. Paige rubbed her neck, and Angel sidestepped, nervous about meeting someone new. Where'd you get her? Recycler.com, said David. Paige nodded, acknowledging the online classifieds for four-legged friends. Matthew held the bucket under Angel's nose. She dug in. What are you doing here, he asked. I had the morning off and thought I'd drop by. Where's mom and dad? They're running errands. You guys ready for camp to open next week? The boys shrugged. Paige waited for an awkward minute. It's been good talking with ya, she said sarcastically. Noah pulled in and laid on his horn, which didn't have the same effect as if he had a real horn. The ahuga was cute, not demanding. Paige waved. Get that sorry excuse for a truck out of my parking spot, he yelled across the cab and through the open passenger seat. At least my truck has air conditioning, Paige shot back. Noah got out and slammed his door. That's about all she's got, cause we both know there's no horsepower under that hood. Paige grinned and threw her arms around Noah's neck. Arguing with Noah was as at home as she could get. If she's hugging people, I'm outta here. David took the bucket away from Angel, and she strained to follow him. Matthew let her have her way, and they headed out to the arena. Noah let go, and Paige stepped back as he scrutinized her. I'd like to say marriage agrees with you, but after that welcome I'm a little worried. Paige hugged herself. Things are fine. Fine? Just fine? Paige rolled her eyes. Fine. Come on. You can tell me all about it while I inventory tack. They made their way to the barn, and Noah took a clipboard off the nail by the door where they kept track of all the gear and recorded repairs. Paige lifted herself to sit the counter and watched as Noah counted halters. Her feelings were all jumbled. I don't know where to start, she admitted. Start with Addison. She's fantastic. I think she spent a lot of time with adults. She's in this dance class and kind of keeps to herself, but when it's just me and her, she's so cute. She'll come around. You've seen that here plenty of times. True. I wish I could bring her to camp for a week. She'd love it. You should see her with buttons. Noah wrote something down and then smiled. Remember that time you put a skirt on him? Paige chuckled. That poor pony. Kitty, prompted Noah. Good. She's healthy and happy. Paige jolted. Christopher agreed to help me train Annie Mae. Christopher? Paige waved her hands. I should start over. Do you remember Kylie Roberts? She was Jacob's age, wasn't she? Paige nodded. I think so. Anyway, that's Addison's mom. No way. Yes. So Christopher helped her get May June ready for the NFR. Wait. Noah held up his palm. So you bought Cody's horse before you married him? I know. Crazy, right? Yeah, it kind of is. 
Well, the reason he freaked out about the horses was because after Kylie died he couldn't stand to have them around, because they reminded him of her. Noah grunted. Where are they now? They're still at his place. She waved her hands again. But that's not the point. So the other day I was brushing buttons with Addison and she said something about her mom and the next thing I know she tells me Cody doesn't talk about Kylie. Ever. And then suddenly Cody was there and now they talk about her all the time. Has he loosened up? Paige scowled. Noah laughed. That bad, huh? No, Paige denied. Well, sort of. She huffed. He's not bad. I think a lot of his stress that day was due to unresolved feelings about his wife's death. He's still got things to work through. I think he's lonely. Noah's eyes narrowed. Why would you say that? Has he said so? Is he pushing himself on you? Of course not. Paige kicked her legs, all the looks, heated moments, and desires, keeping her from holding still. He just seemed sad. And you want to fix that? Noah folded his arms. No. Yes. I mean. It's not up to me to fix it. It's up to Cody. But I'd be willing to help. Paige's face burned. I mean, I feel like in just a few short days so much has happened. He's not the same guy we thought he was. How's that, now? Paige ducked her head. He's protective. You should have seen him this morning when my trainer showed up. It was like having a bulldog standing over me. You get a trainer? Noah stroked his cheek. Yeah. BMB issued and approved. But that's not the point. Right. The point is, Cody was jealous. Was not. Paige tried to kick him. But Noah danced out of the way. Was too. Paige stuck out her tongue. Noah shook his head and went back to sorting tie-downs. Could Cody be jealous? He certainly gave Landon the cold shoulder. And Paige had felt almost giddy after seeing him run Landon off. She'd certainly felt like she'd been accepted into Cody's circle. Before then, Addison was the only one in there, but after this morning Paige had felt like she was part of the crew. Paige chewed her bottom lip. Was Cody accepting her into his life as a friend, or did he have something else in mind? Her phone chirped, and she dug it out of her pocket to check the text. Coming home early, said Cody. Paige hopped off the counter. I've got to get back. Anything wrong? I don't think so. I really hope not. Paige stopped at the door. For the record, my truck could outpull yours any day. She squealed and ducked as Noah threw a handful of rags at her. Smiling, she scrambled into her truck. Cody turned onto his drive with a heavy heart. His attendance to dance class was a disaster, and now Addison sat in the back seat as quiet as a stone and about as lively. As soon as he shut off the engine, Addison bolted from the car and into the barn. Wanting to make the situation better, to just fix his little girl's heart, he went after her. He was halfway to the barn when Paige pulled up. Cody waited for her to join him. She was going to find out everything eventually, so she might as well find out from him instead of Addison. Hey, how was dance? Cody groaned. Awful. Oh no. What happened? Cody glanced at the barn. He longed to hold Addison close and figure out what had hurt her, however, Paige was much better at this sort of thing, and he needed her help. He needed her. When things had gone south, his only thought had been to get to Paige so she could make everything better. I should never have gone down there. Why? It was like. Cody stopped himself from saying throwing a stake to a pack of hyenas, because even though it was true, it sounded conceited. He settled for there are just places men should not tread. Paige giggled. I can only imagine. 
Cody failed to see how this was funny. I felt like a creeper lurking in the hall outside a girls' dance class. Half the moms glared me down and the other half sized me up. Paige's giggle changed into a snicker. It was bad. Worse than Cody could explain. Some woman named Faith propositioned me right there in front of Addison. At least you got her name. Paige laughed again. Cody covered his eyes. I know I said I was going to take Addison to lunch, but all I wanted to do was get home and hide out. Paige patted his arm comfortingly, although it did anything but calm Cody down. Don't worry, you're safe now, she cooed. I'm glad you find this funny. I do. I really do. Paige grinned. That's what you get for going all Neanderthal on us. Cody liked the way she used the word us, like she and Addison were a team and maybe he could be on that team too. Her laughter was lifting the dark clouds that had followed him home. Cody bumped her shoulder, a smile tugging at his mouth. Neanderthal? She shoved him back. Me Cody. Me protect girl. You G. I was not like that, he protested with a grin. Paige poked his arm. You were. You were practically oozing testosterone when I left. Those women didn't stand a chance. Cody cocked his head to the side. I have to be extra manly, I'm outnumbered here. Two to one. Poor thing. Paige patted his cheek. Perhaps it was the Neanderthal within that caused Cody to grab her hand and press it against his skin. The laughter in Paige's eyes changed to something mysterious and mischievous. Her fingers rubbed his skin once before spreading apart and sliding into his hair. Cody's eyes fell shut as he soaked in the pleasure of a gentle caress. After Faith had shimmied up to him and brushed her chest against his arm, Cody felt dirty and used. Nothing in what had transpired between him and Paige brought about those feelings. In fact, she rejuvenated him. Dang it all of being near her didn't feel, right, proper, decent, desirable. Paige's hand brushed his neck before coming to rest on his chest. Cody opened his eyes and found that his arms had encircled her waist. Her body fit naturally against his. So naturally that he hadn't consciously noticed that he'd pulled her in, and he was having a hard time remembering how they'd gotten in this situation. Where's Addison? Paige whispered. Addison? Something happened with Addison. Cody moved his hands to Paige's hips and pushed her back in order to have room to think. The added space didn't do a lot to clear his mind, but it did do just enough. In the barn. Something happened and she won't tell me what. She's really upset. Paige put more distance between them. Tossing her hair over her shoulder, she said, I'll go check on her. Cody gave himself a firm mental shake to clear his head. I'll come. K. The walk to the door was a bit awkward, with Cody trying to keep enough space between them that they didn't touch, but wanting to reach out and hold her hand. They were met by Christopher, leaning against Kitty's stall, and quiet sniffles coming from Button's pen. Cody's steps increased in speed. He reached for the latch, but Christopher held up his hand to stop him from going in. Pressing one finger over his lips, he motioned for Cody and Paige to listen without interrupting Addison. Addison's voice was barely audible as she poured her heart out to Button's. And then she said that her mom thought my dad was stupid and there was no way she'd ever come over to my house. Paige pressed her palm over her stomach, her bottom lip protruding. Cody balled his hands into fists. Addison continued, I don't care if she ever comes over as long as I have you. You'll always be my friend. Cody took a chance and peeked over the stall door. Addison had her face buried in Button's mane. For his part, Button seemed to take her tears well. He twisted until he could nudge her side, which brought a smile to Addison's face. I love you, Buttons, she said. Cody motioned for Paige and Christopher to follow him outside. Once they were twenty paces from the barn, he stopped. Did you call the boarding facility to reserve a place? 
Cody asked Christopher. Cody, Paige's voice held a note of warning. Cody touched her shoulder to hold her off, the contact calmed him. I did. Christopher scowled. Call them back. Tell them we don't need the stalls after all. Offer to pay for a month to keep us in their good graces. As long as Addison wants them here, those horses stay right where they are. Cody lifted his chest. He suddenly realized where Paige got the Neanderthal reference from. He felt like pounding his fists and shouting, Me Cody. Me want horses. Paige exchanged a surprised look with Christopher. You're the boss, he said. Cody nodded once. Good. Addison is never going back to dance. I'm not sure. Paige began. Never. Cody set his jaw. Paige put her hands on her hips and scrutinized him. Finally, she blew out a breath and rolled her eyes. Fine. Now that that's taken care of, I had better get to work. He kept his steps even despite his desire to slink away. He'd overreacted once again. Jumped in when he probably should have tiptoed. What are you doing today? Paige called after him, her tone full of tease. Hunting or gathering? Cody spun so he was walking backwards. Me hunt, he grunted, then sent her a wink. Though he got what he wanted out of Paige. A giggle and a flash of green in her eyes. Christopher's jaw hit the dirt. Heat filled Cody's face, and he turned so he faced the house. Once he settled into the commute, Cody's face cooled. His thoughts, on the other hand, heated up. Christopher would get over his shock. It was thoughts of Paige that kept Cody warm. Somehow, he could still feel her in his arms, as if her shape had been branded into his skin and muscle. If her touch could accomplish that, what would her kiss do? Cody wondered if he'd ever find out. Was it possible for him to court his wife? He figured he could probably figure out a few ways to woo her, but then wondered if it was such a good idea, since she was leaving in a year. Maybe she didn't have to go. If he could convince her to stay on. Stay on as what? Addison's mother? It probably wouldn't be too hard to show her how much Addison needed her to stay. What about staying as his wife? Would Paige be willing to become his wife in more than just name? Cody glanced down at his left hand. Could he ask her to be his wife? No matter how he rolled the idea over in his mind, Cody couldn't get it to iron out. Paige was there for now, and he needed to be content with that. But he wasn't. Frustrated, Cody parked his car and decided focusing on work would be his saving grace. Chapter 26 The weekend passed quickly. Paige took advantage of her free morning Friday to reassemble her room. Addison wasn't at all ruffled about skipping dance class. In fact, she looked relieved when Paige told her they were done. Paige wondered if she should ask about what happened, but figured there were some things that were better left between a girl and her horse. Kitty certainly knew more about Paige than most of her family, except Noah, he had always been a good confidant. Well, most of the time. Paige smiled. Saturday, Cody had to work. Paige assumed that happened often in the car business. She and Addison did the food shopping, reorganized the pantry, and rode in the arena while Christopher worked with Annie Mae. Sunday, they once again attended church as a family. Are you still planning on tomorrow? asked Vicky. Paige nodded enthusiastically. Now that Addison wasn't in dance, helping the ladies' auxiliary with their blanket drive was top on Paige's list of ways to help Addison make friends. Vicky said children were welcome, and Paige had seen several about Addison's age in the congregation. We wouldn't miss it. Cody put his hand on the small of her back, and Paige leaned into him without thinking. By the time she was aware of what she'd done, there was no way to create distance without making it obvious, so she stayed, and enjoyed every second. Is there anything I can do to help the cause, Mrs. Herrera? asked Cody. She peered over her half-moon glasses at him. Not unless you know how to sew. 
I'm a bit rusty. Cody threw Vicky a wink. But if you were there to give me a refresher course, I'm sure I'd be back up to snuff. Vicky twittered. Oh, get on with you. She lightly slapped his arm. Paige smiled to herself. For whatever reason, Church brought out Cody's rascally side, and it was adorable. What if I donated material for quilts, he asked. Vicky smiled, fondly. Cody had effectively won her over. That would be wonderful. He leaned closer to Paige, his body brushing hers and sending her heart into a tailspin. Addison and I are going to talk to Pastor Levi. Take your time. Hmm, was her only intelligible response, and even that was iffy. Vicky sighed as she watched Cody walk away. You've got a good one there, sweetie. Paige released her own contented sigh. He is a good father. Father. Vicky threw her hands up. He's a good man. Caveman, maybe. Man, and he adores you, Vicky insisted. Pfft, Paige brushed away the comment with a wave of her hand. Cody didn't love her. He'd soften toward her, that was for sure. After their little moment in the barnyard, when he'd practically melted at her touch, he had been much more open and relaxed. They just needed to become used to being together. Although Paige wasn't getting any more used to having Cody close. If anything, his touch had her walking backwards and stumbling over her words. He put that ring on your finger, didn't he? Yeah, but... Not because he loves me. Paige frowned down at her ring. She couldn't tell Vicky about BMB. It doesn't matter. Paige pulled herself out of the dumps. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon? Vicky looked like she wanted to shake some sense into Paige, but she let her off the hook. Tomorrow. Or was she off the hook? Vicky had a gleam in her eye that Paige wasn't too sure she liked. Paige and Addison browsed the fabric selection at Sewn Together, a sewing supply store that had everything a quilter's heart desired. Cody told her to buy whatever she wanted on the household card, so she and Addison mixed and matched patterns of the cotton fabric to their heart's content. Addison leaned heavily toward the pinks and purples. They got enough for six baby quilts and four twin-sized quilts in girly colors. With all that yardage, Paige was also able to purchase some for a quilt for Addison's room. She planned to work on it once Addison was back in school and then wrap it up for Christmas. Perhaps by then, she'd convince Cody to let her paint Addison's room too. They made it to the church in time to help move folding tables and chairs out of the storage closet. Vicky bustled over to give them both hugs. We're so grateful for your help today. We're glad we could be here. Paige smiled. Where would you like the fabric? Vicky fanned her face. Goodness, that's quite a bit of work. She opened the first bag. Oh. Look at those colors. And they coordinate so well. Most of our quilts are made from donated scraps, and we have to make do. These will look like they came from a designer. I just love them. Addison smiled up at Paige clearly taking the compliment to heart. Vicky's attention was called away by a mother struggling through the doors with a stroller. Another woman held the door and invited her in. Paige's eyes roved over the room. The tables were lined up in three rows with cut squares of fabric on one end, then a chair and space for someone to lay out the quilting blocks in a pleasing pattern, then the sewing machine, and then another chair for someone to clip strings and corners as needed. One corner of the room had old blankets spread over the floor and a bunch of toys. There was also a box of books, puzzles, and games. Mom set their young ones over there and kept an eye on them as they finished hauling out supplies and tools. Vicky's attention came back to Paige and Addison. If you will take a seat at one of the machines, we can get started. Most of these ladies don't know how to sew. She patted the back of her hair. I've tried to tell them that sewing squares isn't that hard, but they just won't listen. I think it's the machine they are afraid of. Paige smiled. I'll be happy to. 
she took Addison's hand, and they settled in at the table in the middle of the room. Paige figured that would give both her and Addison plenty of opportunities to chat and make some friends. In just a few minutes, Paige's table filled with volunteers. Tabitha pinned the squares together and handed them to Paige, who sewed them in place and then handed them to Alexis, who ironed the seams flat. Addison ran the pieces back to Tabitha to link to the next square. Or line, as it were. Tabitha's son woke up from his nap and began pointing to the toys. Addison, Tabitha asked, will you play with Sam? Addison's eyes brightened up in a way Paige had never seen before. Tabitha unbuckled Sam and set him on his feet. Addison offered her hand, and Sam pulled her to the fun part of the room. They settled on a blanket to build a tower out of blocks. Paige watched for a moment to make sure everything was okay. There were lots of young moms and lots of grandmas, but there weren't any children Addison's age. Disappointed that the afternoon wasn't turning out as she'd hoped, she set her eyes on the project before her and asked, is it the same group every week? Alexis took the completed line of fabric and sprayed it with water before pressing the seams to one side. We have a few others who are out of town. Do they have older children? Tabitha shook her head. Seems like once the kids turn five they get busy with other things. What type of other things? Piano lessons, soccer, baseball, football, dance, day camps. You name it. Five is the golden age. Before that, they're stuck at home. Paige frowned. I like having Addison at home. That's because you only have one. Once baby number two comes along, you'll be happy to send her off for a few hours a day. Paige fumbled with a pin and had to realign the squares before she could continue. We aren't planning. Addison's your stepdaughter, isn't she? Don't you want one of your own? Maybe one day, Paige let the implication hang there as she worked. She and Cody weren't going to have any children, but Paige had always wanted to. It was just a matter of timing. And finding a husband. She looked at her ring. Would she ever find a man who was as good a father as Cody? She hadn't reckoned on collecting a measuring stick, yet she knew she'd compare any man she dated to him. Heck, she already compared the men she just met to Cody. A young boy toddled over to Alexis and handed her a book. She scooped him up and blew raspberries on his cheek before setting him down to toddle back to the play area. Paige found herself longing after a pair of chubby cheeks. What would it be like to hold a baby in her arms? Her baby? Cody's baby? She shook her head against the torrent of sadness at the thought of never holding Cody's son in her arms. Addison is a gift and I love her dearly, but I missed out on her baby years. Ah, the diapers. Tabitha made a face. And the sleepless nights. Alexis groaned. And the spit-up. Tantrums. Blowouts. Paige laughed and held up her hands. Okay, I'm never having a baby now. Don't get me wrong, said Alexis, there is nothing as wonderful as snuggling with a baby. It's like holding a piece of heaven. Paige's neck swiveled around to see Tabitha staring off with a contented smile on her face, which started an ache in Paige's chest. Like these women, she had a husband and a child, but unlike these women, her marriage had an end date, and eventually she would fade in Addison's memory. The thought nearly made her break down into tears right there in the middle of the church's sewing circle. She looked toward the vaulted ceiling and blinked rapidly to force the moisture back. Um, did I say something I shouldn't have? Alexis placed a hand on Paige's shoulder. Paige laughed at her burst of motherly desires. It was natural that, having spent the better part of the last month acting like a mother, she would start to feel like one. Even the desire to increase her children wasn't completely out of place with the lifestyle she'd adopted, was it? I'm fine, really. She sniffed once and then grinned. Children are a blessing, no matter how they come into your life. Amen, agreed Tabitha. She offered Paige another set of squares and a sad smile. Paige read the concern. 
Who knew what these women were thinking? Paige needed to change the subject, and fast. Did you grow up around here? She asked Tabitha. For the next hour, they traded background information, chased children, and shared funny stories. Paige felt the group's efforts to include her, and she was grateful for their kindness, especially knowing that she'd have to report to Cody that the day was a complete failure as far as making friends for Addison. Keeping her chin up and shoulders back as they left was a monumental effort when she was surrounded by so many young moms and their adorable babies. How could she even think about having a baby? Putting aside the fact that she wasn't exactly in a relationship that lent itself to conceiving a child, Paige had other issues to consider. The first and biggest was not being able to accomplish the simple task of finding a friend for Addison. What kind of a mother was she, anyway? True, her position was only temporary, but it wasn't like she'd been asked to do the impossible. Yet the more she tried, the harder she failed. Paige and Addison climbed into the truck. Paige didn't want to go home. She just couldn't face Cody's expectations with empty hands once again. So she sat there, her hands on the wheel and the keys dangling in the ignition. What was she going to tell him? Can we get a shaved ice? asked Addison. Paige shrugged. Sure. Addison grinned and then turned her head to watch the homes and businesses fly by. At her lowest, Paige barely noticed the traffic lights. They pulled up to the snow shack and got out. The little island-type hut had two windows, one for ordering and one for pickup. Addison got a rainbow cone, which wasn't a cone at all, just a bunch of shaved ice in a styrofoam cup drenched in flavoring, Paige got a peach colada. Just as they picked up their order, Paige's phone rang. She dug through her purse to find it. Checking the caller ID, she whimpered. Of all the days Trish could call to check in, she had to call when Paige had no idea why she'd been hired in the first place. Hi, Trish. Hi. I noticed you had a double date this Friday, so I booked a salon close to your house for you and Addison. That wasn't what Paige had expected. She hadn't thought much about the dinner with Gabe and, and, what was her name? Paige sighed. She needed to get her act together so she could play the happy wife and act like she and Cody talked about things like the name of his best friend's wife. That's not a good sound, said Trish. What? That sigh. I've heard it before. What's going on? Paige pointed to the folding tables, and Addison went over to take a seat. Paige hung back where she could watch and Addison couldn't hear. I'm a little stressed she admitted. Spill it. Paige took a scoopful of her snow cone while building her answer. Her contemplation didn't matter, because it all spilled out. Everything. The dance class disaster, the sewing circle debacle, and the horse havoc. Paige placed the cold cup against her aching forehead. So do I file for the annulment, or does he? Trish laughed. Neither but I'm painting the wrong fence here. I shouldn't be a mother and I sure as shootin' shouldn't be a bride. I don't know what I was thinking. Paige. Trish spoke sharply, and Paige snapped her knees together and stood up straight like a soldier called to attention. You are not the first bride to question herself. I'm not? No. So what do I do? Usually, all it takes is a shot of confidence. She says that like it's a snow cone flavor I can order at the first window. You've been doing all the things Cody wanted you to do, right? Right. She could definitely say that she'd made an effort. Well, stop it. Excuse me? If Addison were your child, what would you do? Paige bristled at the if she were your child part of that. Addison was hers, at least for a year. Once she got over her defensiveness, she contemplated Trisha's comment. All I know is camp and horses. Who were your friends when you were young? My brothers and cousins. Paige fumbled her cup in her excitement. I have a niece Addison's age. I could call Taylor and set up a playdate. Good, what else? 
Paige set her cup down on the nearest chair and began pacing. I could do a day camp. The dance studio had a bulletin board, and there's one at the church too. Images of age-appropriate crafts flashed through her mind, and the tune to one of her favorite camp songs played in the back of her head. Addison would love that. You bet she would. Okay, I'm going to do it. Good luck. And don't forget that appointment. Paige forced a smile. I won't. Day camp for five to seven six-year-olds? Piece of cake. A date with her husband, the man who drank in her touch like a dehydrated animal and left her standing on jelly knees? Not so much. One thing at a time. There was no point worrying about a dinner that was days away when she had so much work to do. Chapter 27 Can you pick up takeout? Cody answered the text with a yes and stopped on his way home to pick up the orange chicken Paige liked. Things must have gone well at the quilting thing if they were too busy with friends to get dinner going. Humming to himself, Cody swung through the door to find his kitchen in complete disarray. Pipe cleaners and fuzzy balls were scattered across the table. Bits of yarn drooped off the sides, and there was glitter everywhere. There were also pine cones and containers of peanut butter and bird food on the counter. Plastic bags with a craft store logo on the side littered the floor and in the middle of it all sat Paige, her hair pulled back and held in place with a twisty tie. What in the? Paige whipped around and her face lit up. Hey! Her eyes dropped to the bags in his hands. Oh, good. I'm starved. Cody's mouth went dry. She wasn't the only one starved for a little nourishment. Where's Addison? Cody made his way across the floor by kicking aside pom-poms. She's watching a movie upstairs. Paige set down the pinecone in her hands and reached for the container Cody had just set on the counter. She opened it eagerly and snagged a piece of chicken between her fingers. Popping it into her mouth, she moaned. Oh my gosh, it's heaven in a box. Cody chuckled. He grabbed two forks from the drawer. Handing one to Paige, he used the other to spear a piece of chicken in the box she held. She scowled, and then smiled to let him know she was teasing. He popped open the other containers, and they stood at the counter eating in silence for a few minutes. Cody surveyed the mess, and finally had to ask. Sue, what's with the... He waved his fork around, indicating the entire room. We are hosting a day camp for kids. Cody choked on his ham-fried rice. Paige pounded him on the back. You're purple. She dashed around him, filled a cup with water, and commenced pounding him between the shoulder blades. Cody's eyes watered. He gasped, took a drink, and gasped again. Finally, he took a deep breath. We're what? Paige grinned. I put up a couple flyers today and called Taylor to see if Maria could come. Holding the chicken container in her left hand, she dug a fluorescent blue paper out from under a bunch of glue sticks. Happy Camper Day Camp for Children Ages 6 to 7, Cody read out loud. He scanned down the page, taking in the start time, activities listed, including writing instructions, and fee. I don't understand. Paige ran her fingers back and forth across the box's flap. You wanted me to help Addison make friends. She pointed to the paper but wouldn't meet his eyes. This will help. Cody ground his teeth. How will charging kids to make those? He threw his hand toward the pile of junk on the table. And ride in our arena help Addison make friends? What happened to the church sewing thing? Paige settled into her chair at the table. She stared down. The kids were all too young for Addison. She had a good time, but only because she was the oldest and a babysitter. Cody longed to place his hands on Paige's shoulders and work the knots out of her muscles until she leaned against him, content and kissable. Instead, he pulled his hand down his face. And you think this, camp thing, will be better? Paige nodded. I do. 
Then why charge? Paige tipped her chin up. Perceived value. Cody shook his head. Addison isn't some prize to be bought by another child. We're the ones looking for friends. It's strategic. If I did it for free, people wouldn't see it as worth their time. By charging, I not only cover supplies, but it becomes desirable. The higher the cost, the higher the value in the buyer's eyes, even if it's only perceived and not actually realized. Like a BMB bride? Paige sputtered. Cody wished he could swallow the words back in and never let them out. He didn't mean to imply that Paige wasn't worth every penny he'd handed over to get her. Having seen her in action with Addison, he would have paid double. Having held her in his arms, he would have given everything he owned. He sputtered, looking for a way to explain all that without giving away his feelings for her. Slamming the chicken container on the table, Paige stood and planted her hands on her hips. My credentials and background as a camp director are worth more than the $75 on that flyer, thank you very much. Cody carefully set the rice container on the counter. Paige, he began, I didn't mean. Paige cut him off with a glare. As for my value as a bride, she pulled in a deep breath, and Cody saw the flash of uncertainty. I ask that you reserve judgment until after I've finished with camp. If Addison doesn't have at least one good friend by then, I'll drive you down to BMB, and we can sign the annulment papers. Cody groped behind him to find the counter. He needed the help staying upright after that sucker punch. You want to leave? The indignation flapped out of Paige's stance. No. But I can't take your money if I can't do the job. She glanced around the room. I'll come down later and clean up. She headed for the stairs. Paige? Cody called, so softly he wasn't even sure the word left his lips. Paige looked over her shoulder. I'll send Addison down for some dinner. She ran up the stairs, taking them two at a time with her long legs, and Cody sank to the floor. He shoved his head back against the cabinet. How was it possible to muddle things the way he had? He didn't mean to imply that Paige wasn't doing her job. Since they'd been married, Addison had blossomed with a new level of confidence. Cody couldn't blame her. Knowing Paige would be there for a year, though it seemed like too short of a time now, had rejuvenated his desire to live and not just survive. Each day had meaning, and color, and laughter, and desire. Closing his eyes, he relived the feel of Paige's fingers on his cheek, his neck. Yes, there was desire there, and something else. Something stronger than time, stronger than petty arguments and miscommunications, something stronger than Cody's grief. Something he knew he needed to hang on to, or risk falling back into his state of zombie-like survival. Paige was life, and Cody had finally found his desire to live. He couldn't lose that. He wouldn't lose that. He would help Paige see the change in Addison, in their home, and most especially in him. He wasn't the grumpy old troll she believed him to be, and he intended to prove it. Paige had given herself a week to find Addison a friend, and Cody adopted the same deadline to convince her he was worth sticking around for. He popped to his feet and grinned, because he did his best work under a deadline. Chapter 28 Early Friday morning, Paige hurried out to the pool for her training session with Landon. She'd been up late planning camp activities and had skipped her last two workouts. Feeling a little guilty, she promised to throw herself into this session and wear herself out. Stepping outside, she was surprised to find Cody and Landon chatting easily. What surprised her more was seeing Cody in swim trunks. What's going on? she asked the two of them. Cody shuffled his feet. I thought I'd join you guys this morning. If that's okay. Paige set her towel on one of the deck chairs. I thought you already had your workout schedule figured out. I do. Well, did. I just thought this would be fun. Paige crinkled her nose. What? It's just. I can't think of one thing you've done since we've been, her eyes cut to the side. 
married that was just for fun. Cody pulled off his shirt and set it next to her towel. Paige took in his flat stomach and defined muscles and felt her thoughts clatter like Legos to the floor. Dang if he wasn't fit. Fit for mountain climbing, fit for ripping open car doors with his bare hands, fit for all sorts of activities that made Paige's temperature climb. A lot of things have changed around here lately, said Cody. Paige could only nod. She found herself biting her lip as she surveyed Cody and quickly turned away. She didn't hear any sarcasm when he talked about things changing. If anything, Cody sounded keen on the idea. Since the changes had provided her with a view worth taking in during her torture session with Landon, Paige was pretty happy with them too. Landon took the quiet as an opportunity to jump into the conversation. We're starting with 10 easy laps. Don't push yourself too hard. We're just warming up. Paige stood on the edge of the pool and tested the water with her toes. Warm, but not as hot as bathwater. She was just about ready to dive in when she found herself falling. The water whooshed over her head and she flailed her arms to reach the surface. Gasping for air and wiping her hair off her face, she glared at Cody, who was smiling like a kid. See? Fun. This view is fun. Shocked at Cody's playful attitude and her own admiration of the man's body, Paige could only tread water as Landon snuck up behind Cody and pushed him into the pool. Cody, his arms whirling, flopped next to her, sending a wave of water over her head. Laughing, she waited for him to surface. You could have warned me, he sputtered. Oh no. It was much more fun to just watch. Paige laughed again. You're going down. Cody cupped his hand and sent another wave in her direction. You'll have to catch me first. Paige ducked under the water and shot toward the other end of the pool. When she came up, lengthening her stroke, she heard Landon yell, Swim now, flirt later, you too. I'm on the clock. Cody's hand brushed her leg, and Paige squealed, sure he was going to pull her under. Instead he matched her stroke for stroke, and they finished their laps at the same time. Landon hadn't been kidding when he said the 10 laps were just a warm-up. Next they did a 200-meter kick, and then a 300-meter pull. Then Landon had them do four sets of 400 meters. On the first one, only go at 70%. We'll push a little harder each time. By the fourth 400, Paige thought her arms were going to fall off, and her whole body was tight. Landon gave them a minute to rest and Paige threw her arms out, floating dead man style. Cody floated nearby. I take it back. This isn't fun, it's brutality. Serves you right for pushing me in. Cody lifted his head out of the water. Then what are you being punished for? I stole your fortune cookie last night, confessed Paige. She had seen the cookies in the bag when she was cleaning up the mess she'd made and had munched through two of them while she worked. That was you? Cody gave her a serious frown. The fortune cookie is the best part. No way, the food is the best part. It's not the flavor of the cookie, it's the fortune. He gave her a half grin. At least tell me what my fortune would have been. Paige thought for a minute. The place that may seem like the end is a new beginning. Cody stared. Did it really say that? Yep. That's appropriate. Before Paige could ask him why, Landon blew his whistle. Breaks over, sweethearts. Paige wondered whether Landon was calling her and Cody sweethearts as in a couple in love, or if he was insulting Cody by calling him a nickname usually reserved for girls. Cody didn't respond to the comment either way, so Paige ignored it as well. She wished it was as easy to ignore Cody. All morning he was charming and happy and not at all his usual self. When she'd accidentally moved into his lane, he had playfully bumped her back. While Landon coached with Cody on his technique, he'd made a joke about his backstroke that had them all snickering. And that body of his? She had the feeling her brain wasn't about to let that image slip away anytime soon. D 
Do you want to make this interesting? asked Cody as he positioned himself so that he could push off from the wall. How so? asked Paige. Loser makes breakfast tomorrow. Paige rolled her eyes. Even if I win, I lose. Cody mocked offense. I'll have you know. Paige had no idea what she should have known, because Landon blew his whistle and she pushed off the wall with all she had left. After the first hundred, Paige's legs began to tire and her shoulders burned. But her little maneuver had gained her a strong advantage, and she wasn't about to lose it. With 50 meters left to go, Cody closed the distance, and she was only an arm's length ahead of him. Digging deep, Paige kicked with all she had. Her fingers hit the end of the pool and she threw her hands in the air, knowing she'd won. Cody, his impressive chest heaving with every breath, grinned. Admit it, you're shocked I won. Paige shoved him. Not as shocked as you're going to be when you taste my French toast tomorrow. Paige held up her right hand. I promise to eat it in front of Addison to set a good example. Ha! You'll be begging for seconds. They climbed out of the pool, water dripping and sliding in all directions. Landon handed Cody his shirt and Paige her towel. I'm leaving. Not that you two will notice. Paige massaged her triceps. Believe me, I'll notice. Landon pointed at both of them. Now that I know what you're capable of, we're going to have a lot of fun. Paige groaned as Landon went out the gate. She hooked her finger at Cody. This is all your fault. My fault? I had him believing I was a total wimp. Paige wrapped up in her towel. You are a total wimp, Cody shot back. Ugh. Paige put her hands on her hips. I would argue with you, but I'm too tired. I think I'll take a nap right here. She sank into the lounge chair and felt her muscles throb. Cody held out his hand. Come on. I have a better idea. Paige slipped her fingers into his, and goosebumps flushed her skin. No. 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 Do not like him. Paige felt like she was standing in the middle of a teeter-totter, trying to keep it balanced and not fall flat on her face. She'd told Cody she would leave if she couldn't do the job. Leaving Addison would tear her to pieces, but if it was what was best for the girl, then it must be done. If she liked Cody, it would only make leaving that much harder. Biting her lip, she stood, and Cody pulled her over to the waterfall and opened a secret door. Inside was a bench, a heat lamp, and a whole lot of steam. Rest in here for about twenty minutes, and you'll feel like new. Paige eyed the small space dubiously. I should get Addison up. We have an appointment today. I'll get her going. Rest. Cody pointed to the teasing, swirling mist. There's cushions. He pumped his eyebrows up and down. Paige stepped over the threshold. You're the boss. A look of disappointment crossed Cody's face, quickly replaced by a smile. Enjoy. He disappeared into the house right about the time Paige settled into a reclining bench. The steam clung to her skin, and the moist heat softened her tight muscles. She moaned. That's the stuff. Why did Cody have to be nice today, of all days? Why couldn't he glare at Landon and complain about the horses and be grumpy? It would make following through with her decision to leave so much easier. Twenty minutes later, when the steam cut off and the world seemed eerily quiet without the noise, Paige still didn't have an answer. Chapter 29 Cody tied and retied his tie at least five times. He wanted everything to be perfect. He'd hoped that after swimming and flirting Paige would see how good they could be together as clearly as he did. However, he was disappointed when Paige had pointed out he was the boss. Still, it felt like they'd crossed a bridge. Tonight he wanted to show her that he saw her as the desirable woman she was, and not just as Addison's mother. That's why he'd made special arrangements for Addison while the two of them went out with Gabe and Michaela. At six on the dot, he answered the door for Noah. 
Thanks for coming. Noah sauntered in. I had to cancel a date, but my niece is worth it. Cody's hand slid off the doorknob. In all the time he'd thought of Paige as Addison's mother, he'd never once thought of Noah as her uncle. Or Paige's parents as Addison's grandparents. Yet the words rang true as toast the minute he heard them, and despite his first surly impression of Noah, Cody liked the idea of him being Addison's uncle. Noah had gone out of his way, several times, to help Paige with horses and moving. He'd been a mite overprotective at first, but Cody couldn't blame him. And when it had come time to finding a babysitter, Noah was the obvious choice. Paige had other siblings. He tugged on his shirt cuff. By the end of the night, he planned to know Paige's life history, dreams, and everything from her favorite flavor of cake to her favorite pair of shoes, though on the shoes he could take an educated guess, as a pair of silver-tipped boots appeared on the landing. Paige and Addison came down the stairs. Paige looked stunning in a flowing skirt and tight shirt. She had on chunky jewelry, and Cody wondered if she'd made it herself. Her hair hung in controlled chaos, just the way he liked it. She smiled shyly, ducking her head under Cody's scrutiny. He took a moment to evaluate Addison's outfit. She had on a skirt much like Paige's and a pair of boots that were clunky. They didn't exactly go with the outfit, but he found Addison's desire to imitate Paige adorable. Noah cleared his throat, and Paige broke eye contact. She smiled. What are you doing here? Addison hugged Paige's side. Noah bent over and peeked around Paige's other side. I thought I saw a princess. Addison giggled and scooted in front of Paige. Noah stood up and scratched his head. I could have sworn. Addison clutched her hands together. Noah stuck his nose over Paige's shoulder. There she is. In one swift move, Paige stepped aside and Noah scooped Addison up to swing her around. Cody smiled. It looked like a routine they'd done before. Noah stopped twirling, and Addison put her hands on his shoulders. Princess Addison, will you rescue me? he asked. Addison's face grew serious. From what? Noah placed his cheek against hers and stage whispered, boredom. I need someone to watch a movie with and pop popcorn with and eat ice cream with. Are you up for the job? Addison frowned. I can't. I have to go to dinner with Daddy and Penny Page. Noah's shoulders slumped, his back slouched, and he stuck his bottom lip out. Addison looked expectantly at Cody. Page jerked her head toward Noah, indicating he should step in. Cody started, like an actor who barely remembered his lines. Maybe you could stay with Noah, just this once. I'll get the popcorn. Dad hides the caramel in the back. Addison took off toward the pantry. Paige cocked out her hip. All this time you've had caramel popcorn, and I had no idea. Sheet sked. Cody lifted both palms. He thoroughly enjoyed the fact that her light-hearted teasing was directed his way. Come on. We'd better get out of here before I find out you have cinnamon bears in your nightstand. Cody placed his hand on the small of her back to guide her out to the garage, making a mental note to stash something gummy in his top drawer. They opened the door, and he turned back to offer a discreet wave goodbye. Noah was busy reading the instructions for the caramel popcorn, and Addison was digging through the pantry. No doubt she was in search of his jelly bean stash. Oh well, it was a small price to pay. Once settled into the drive to the restaurant, Cody noticed Paige was anything but settled. She plucked at her skirt and crossed and uncrossed her legs. Trying to put her at ease, he asked, tell me about this camp. What kinds of things are you doing with the kids? Paige leaned back and folded her hands in her lap. I picked a theme for each day. Monday is birds. We're going to do some fun activities in the arena that should help the kids learn to guide the horses with their legs while their arms are flapping. Cody felt his instincts kick in. Make sure you let Badger out, and maybe Christopher should be there. 
It's not uncommon to have snakes in the yard and Badger is always the first to find them. Paige shrugged. If it will make you feel better, I'll invite Badger. The kids will love him anyway. After that we'll have berries and nuts for a snack. You know, bird food. And if there is time, we'll make feathered masks the kids can take home. She tapped her foot. I might switch things around and do the craft first. That will grab their attention. Have you had any interest? Paige grinned so big she could have run the car with the wattage in her smile. Four girls signed up, and I closed registration this morning. I'm impressed. That's pretty good for the short amount of time. He shook his head. I don't know what I'd do with five Addisons running around. I have a hard enough time keeping track of just one. Paige laughed, and the sound was like heavenly music as it rolled over Cody. The trick is to keep them occupied. Downtime is your enemy. I'll keep that in mind. He glanced at the clock. They still had 15 minutes of drive time. So, tell me about your family. Cody spent the rest of the ride listening to Paige describe her hardworking, and big, family. Her love for them was evident in the softening of her eyes and the way her hands flew about as she described her brother's antics or her sister's pranks. The more she talked, the more Cody wanted to meet them. The minute Cody handed his keys to the valet, Paige's nerves came back full force. She'd been a bit defensive explaining her idea for the camp, but Cody had seemed genuinely interested and not at all judgmental, which was lovely. Talking about her family came easy. She could have gone on for hours and not run out of material in that department. But now that she was back to thinking and acting the part of a blushing bride, she found she was truly blushing. Mostly because, since their swim this morning, she was acutely aware of the muscles under her hand as she held Cody's arm to walk into the restaurant. She didn't have much time to compose herself before meeting Cody's friends, as they were waiting in the reception area. She shook both their hands, hoping her smile looked natural, because her teeth were starting to feel dry and itchy. Michaela was stunning in a cream-colored wrap dress with emerald accents. She had long dark hair and a professionally polished demeanor. Paige could tell right away that this woman was comfortable in the boardroom. She wanted to tug on her bohemian-style skirt, but refrained from fidgeting. Gabe took her hand with a twinkle in his eye. You have knockout hair, he said, with a wicked half-smile, sent Cody's direction. Knockout? Paige asked. It's the kind that knocks guys to their knees. Cody pushed their hands apart with a that's enough glare at Gabe, and said, I think our table's ready. Michaela walked with Paige, leaving Cody and Gabe to follow. What was that about? Paige shrugged. I have no idea. But this hair makes for some strange conversations. I've learned to let them roll off my back. What's the strangest? No contest. I had a guy ask if he could use it for pillow stuffing. He was serious. Completely. Michaela made a face as she took the seat next to Paige's, with Gabe on her other side. The guys had started a conversation on the upcoming football season and looked like they were digging in for the long haul. Michaela scooted her chair closer to Paige. I'm so glad you came. Last time we met for dinner, I had to listen to the best running back debate. She sighed. Looks like it's quarterbacks tonight. Why? Was Cody's date into football too? Paige was curious about the women Cody normally dated. More importantly, she wondered if she fit the mold. Michaela gave her a look that said she'd stepped off the crazy truck. Cody never brings a date, unless it's Addison. Oh. Paige turned to her menu. Cody never dated? Well, it made sense. He had been so in love with Kylie that her death must have crushed him. And he'd been particularly clear about marrying her for Addison's sake. He never said he needed or wanted a bride. All he'd ever asked her to do or be was Addison's mom, and that wasn't a chore in any way. So what am I doing here? 
couldn't Cody come alone like he normally did? Why include her if she wasn't supposed to be his wife? Why not leave her home with Addison and bring Noah? She turned to ask Cody if he'd ever had the chicken parmesan and placed her hand on his wrist to get his attention. He cut off mid-sentence at her touch and turned to her. When their eyes met, he winked. Feeling her face turn the same shade as her hair, Paige slipped her hand under the table and ducked. With only a brief pause, Cody went back to his conversation on the Destroyer's new quarterback. I'm telling you, his head isn't in the game. Paige took a sip of ice water. Just because he's a mess off the field doesn't mean he can't get it together before kickoff, said Gabe. Young's got the experience, said Cody. And the running game. Dumont may be able to throw, but he hesitates to tuck and run, added Paige. All eyes turned to her, and she licked her lips. What? Aren't girls allowed to watch football? Cody closed his eyes as if he were offering a prayer of gratitude. I can't believe you just asked that. Michaela rolled her eyes. I may be sending Gabe to your place on Sundays. He'll have to get there early. Once my brothers see the big screen in our living room, they're going to stake their claim. Paige bit her lip. Cody had invited Noah over, but that didn't mean he was ready for her whole clan to descend upon his extremely clean and noticeably white living room. Cody smiled warmly as he brushed Paige's hair over her shoulder. We'll invest in some extra chairs. Paige tingled. Visions of her and Cody hosting her entire family filled her with joy. She smiled up at him and moistened her lips. Cody's hand rested on her back. Paige felt herself leaning his direction and cleared her throat before she fell into his chest. Cody smiled and withdrew his arm. Paige looked away. How is Addison adjusting? asked Michaela. Thankful for Michaela's tact, for she had to have seen the exchange between Paige and Cody and Paige's ensuing shy spell, Paige gushed about Addison. She helped me paint my room this stunning Caribbean blue, and she's so polite. Tell them about the camp. Cody gestured for her to talk, but Paige was momentarily made speechless by the obvious pride in his eyes. He didn't miss a beat. She's organized a week-long day camp for kids Addison's age. With only a few days for sign-ups, the camp is full. That's wonderful. Michaela exchanged a look with Gabe. You should hear what she has planned. I mean, I want to go to this camp. The more Cody bragged, the warmer Paige's face felt. Thankfully, the waiter appeared to take their order before she burst into flame. While Gabe and Michaela asked about the chef's special, she leaned over to Cody and said, I thought you didn't like my idea. What made you think that? You totally scorned it when I first mentioned it. Cody shook his head, his eyes remorseful. I'm sorry that's the way it came across. I'll watch my tone. He put his hand over hers, and goosebumps trailed up Paige's arms. It's a brilliant idea, and you're going to do great. He released her hand, and Paige stopped herself from groping to get it back. Her mind swirled, and it had nothing to do with the menu options. She always felt like the camp was a good idea but Cody's initial reaction had sown seeds of doubt. Seeds she'd worked hard not to feed, but like weeds, they grew in the worst soil. With one complimenting swoop, Cody had whacked down the doubts. If he'd said she was brilliant in front of Michaela and Gabe, Paige could have easily written off the comment and Cody as two-faced. But what he'd said had been for her ears alone, and that meant more to her than a thousand public declarations. Feeling good all the way down to her pink passion toes, Paige gave Cody's arm a light squeeze before ordering the chicken parmesan. Cody kept his eyes on the waiter's face even as he felt his world shift at Paige's touch. Her purposeful contact had the same effect on him as it had the day outside the barn when it carried him to another level of awareness. It took every ounce of concentration to stay focused on Gabe's argument that Roman Walker could outplay Dumont which was ridiculous. But for the life of him, he couldn't think of a single intelligent reason why the seasoned player should start in the first game. As the meal progressed, Cody kept an eye on Paige. 
Michaela was adept at drawing even the grumpiest old men into conversation, and Paige was nothing like an old man. Not in attitude, not in age, and definitely not in looks. The way her hair shone in the candlelight should be illegal, it was so beautiful. And her laugh, throaty and female, did funny things to his stomach. He was grateful the girls were getting along, but he was getting tired of sharing Paige's attention. However, she seemed to be having a good time and he didn't want to pull her away. When the dessert cart came around, he could have easily foregone the sweets and planned to take the long way home, but he decided that Paige deserved some girl time. Paige had the giant slice of chocolate mousse cake in front of Cody. Michaela moaned. We'll share, Paige said as she set a slice between her and Michaela. Michaela nodded. I'm going to have to run morning and night to work this off. Paige fell back into her seat as the dark cocoa and blueberry filling hit her tongue. She sighed. I'll have to swim to Hawaii. But this cake is so worth it. Cody half laughed, half choked. He took a sip of water. I promise not to tell Landon if you don't. I'm not telling. Paige's heart did a shuffle step at Cody's boyish grin. They'd just shared their first inside joke. Gabe said something about touchdowns thrown, and Paige turned back to Michaela. Feeling like she'd monopolized most of the evening by talking about her camp and Addison, Paige asked, How did you and Gabe meet? Michaela's eyes flicked to Cody accusingly. He didn't tell you? No, the cake suddenly tasted like hay cubes in Paige's mouth. A hundred horrible thoughts flashed through Paige's head. Paige prepared to hear the worst. Michaela glared once more at Cody. Pamela Jones. Paige set her cup on the table, catching the edge of the plate and spilling the small amount of water left. Using her napkin to blot it, she exclaimed, You were a BMB bride? Michaela tipped her chin up and laughed. Is that so hard to believe? Gabe slung his arm over the back of Michaela's chair. Obviously they were way more comfortable with each other than Paige and Cody were. Gabe and Cody had ceased discussing passing games, and Cody was watching Paige intently, she could feel his gaze on her face, but had to get to the bottom of this. Paige leaned closer. I thought you two were, you know, a normal married couple. Michaela put her hand on Gabe's chest. We are. No. We didn't start out that way. Paige folded her arms. I don't believe it. Why not? asked Gabe. Every insecurity in Paige lined up against every perfect feature on Michaela and came up grossly lacking. Paige gestured to Michaela. Look at her. She's way too refined and put together to be a mail order bride. I'm not buying it. It's true. Pamela found me working at a hotel and recruited me. Paige wilted. She found me at a horse auction. Cody barked a laugh, and soon the others joined in. Paige shook her head, her insecurities fading in the acceptance she saw in Cody's eyes. That doesn't sound very good, does it? Gabe leaned forward. Obviously it was a thoroughbred auction. Paige tipped her head. Thanks. I think. They laughed again, and this time Paige joined in. Despite all their money and success, no one at the table took themselves too seriously, and Paige felt comfortable mingling. Paige put down her cup without drinking. I can't believe Pamela picked me when she has women like you to choose from. Michaela shook her head. First off, the more I learn about Pamela, the more I realize she never makes mistakes. Second, you're stunning. I love your hair. In fact, she eyed Cody as he dug through his wallet for his credit card. Your beautiful hair was one of the first things Cody mentioned to Gabe. My mom always said my hair was a force of nature. Michaela laughed. It is, in the best of ways. There isn't one guy in this restaurant who didn't follow you across the room. I doubt that very much. Paige brushed off the idea of a bunch of strangers following her through the dining room. It was the idea that Cody had told Gabe he found her attractive. Well, her hair attractive. 
That caught her attention. All this time, she thought he'd disliked her, and he'd been saying nice things about her to other people. And tonight, he'd said nice things to her. She thought back to his comment that morning that things were changing all around them. What if he was talking about his feelings for her? What if having dinner with Gabe and Michaela was his way of showing her they could have more, be more? At the end of the evening, while waiting for the valet to bring their cars around, Michaela offered Paige her cell number and email address. I'd like to keep in touch, and maybe we can go out without the boys. Paige saved the info in her phone. I'd like that. Paige often fought against her dad's beliefs that those with money would place themselves above those without. Tonight's dinner, and Gabe and Michaela's obvious acceptance of her, went a long way to defeat the voice in her head that told her she wasn't good enough. Being a BMB bride wasn't an act of desperation, as she'd first perceived the title. If Pamela considered Paige in the same class as Michaela, then maybe Dad was the only one who thought their family was lower than others. The thought made Paige sad for her dad. She didn't know what had happened to make him that way, but she ached for his pain. The other thing that weighed heavy on her mind was the possibility of something more than a year, more than a contract, from a BMB marriage. Paige didn't miss the way Gabe's thumb stroked Michaela's knuckles tenderly. She longed to ask more questions about the two. To find out how they had gone from their BMB arrangement to what they had now. Where did the love come from, and how did Michaela ask to stay? Or was it Gabe who had asked her? Paige truly felt like Addison was hers, but she didn't want to live in a loveless marriage. Of course, she'd have Addison's love, but a woman's heart needed more than the love of a child. She needed the love of a good man. Cody was a good man. He obviously cared for and loved his first wife, and he put his life on hold to take care of Addison. Selfish men didn't do those things. Paige sighed. Tonight did feel like a date. An honest-to-goodness date with Cody. Would he be different when Addison was around, or would he still wink and touch her shoulder and share long, knowing looks her? She'd have to wait and see if Cody's behavior remained consistent. That would be the deciding factor. Chapter 30 At work on Monday, Cody checked his phone a dozen times, hoping for one of Paige's pictures or texts to come through. Unfortunately for his nerves, it had been radio silence all morning. At 11 o'clock he dropped his phone in his shirt pocket with a grunt. There was no sense hanging around the dealership when all he could think about was Paige and her day camp. It was supposed to be over at noon. He decided to get there at 11.30 and check things out. Then he thought of the mess in the kitchen and wondered if it wouldn't be better to wait a few hours. Shooting from his chair, he hurried out to his car. Mess or no mess, he wanted to be there. To be with Paige. He prayed she was happy with the morning, that the kids behaved, and that the parents were kind. Cody pulled down his drive and found four trucks and four horse trailers parked in front of the barn. Little girls in jeans and belts with jewels all over them seemed to be everywhere. The yard hadn't seen this much activity since, since Serenity Stables was in full swing. Cody pressed his hand to his chest, ready for the ache and the pain to hit as he took in the scene. Two ponies and three horses bounced their riders around the arena as Paige called out instructions and encouragement. A couple moms were in camp chairs, watching between the fence posts. Badger made his way from group to group, getting as much attention as he could. Two small boys played with shovels and buckets in the sand, off to one side where the horses weren't kicking up dust. Instead of pain emptying him out, Cody felt pride fill him up. That was his bride out there, expertly leading children through a drill. She had them flapping their arms like birds and using their legs to direct the horses. Cody's heart dropped when he saw Addison atop Paige's horse, Kitty. She looked so small and inconsequential up there. So vulnerable. Or maybe it was him who was vulnerable. Cody leaned against his car to watch the rest of the activities. He was amazed at Paige's patience with the kids and her command of the group. The way she cared for them was reflected right back, and each girl wanted to do her best. 
How could one woman be full of so much love that it flowed out to envelop those around her so easily? She just gave it away, and it multiplied. Her source never running out. At noon, Paige hustled the group to the fence. You promised. Addison called to Paige. Paige laughed. Do you really want to see her run? Yes, the girls shouted. Okay, but just this once. And remember, you promised not to try this unless your parents say it's okay. There were solemn nods and bright eyes all around. Paige trotted Annie May around in a circle a couple times and then yelled hiya and dug her heels into the horse's flanks. Annie May shot toward the first barrel like a boomerang. Paige made a clean turn and headed for barrel number two, her legs flapping as she encouraged Annie May to sprint. This time Paige's toe nicked the barrel, and it tottered but did not tip. She thrust her hand forward and gave Annie May her lead into the third turn. Annie May's rear end slid, but she recovered quickly and she thundered home. The girls squealed, and even the parents clapped and hollered. Paige waved her hat, her smile as big as the sky. Cody's breath caught. With the sun behind her, Paige lit up like an angel. Her skin glowed and her hair burned. She was amazing, and he wanted her for his own. Paige caught sight of Cody and waved as she dismounted. He trotted over to take the reins. I've got this. Go see the kids off. Thanks. She threw the word over her shoulder as she jogged away. Addison walked by, taking Kitty to her stall. Do you need any help? He called after her. Nope. Addison continued on. She was growing up so fast this summer, it made his stomach hurt. Cody patted Annie May's neck. She brushed her head against his chest, shoving Cody back a step. I see how you are. You want to push me around, huh? Cody moved back so he could lean his shoulder into her side and soon felt the whip of a tail on his arm. He laughed. You've got spunk, I'll give you that. He turned and rubbed under the bridle. Annie May held perfectly still, enjoying the respite from the leather. You've got speed, too. Man, you are fun to watch. I'll bet you're fun to ride, too, aren't you? Cody took his time getting to know the horse. He hadn't been this close to her since she was four months old. The familiar smells of dust and sweat brought back a piece of Cody's life that he tried hard to put behind him. This time, he opened the door and just relaxed into the moment. He finally understood what Paige meant when she said there were some things better left between a girl, or in his case, a man, and a horse. Once the trailers had pulled away, Paige came back and reached for Annie May's lead. I'm surprised to see you. We weren't expecting you until dinner. You have been so excited, I had to see this for myself. They made their way into the barn. Paige checked in on Kitty and Addison and gave Cody a thumbs up. Did you see Addison? It's like she was born in an arena or something. Paige winked, silently asking Cody to jump in and build up Addison's confidence. I had no idea she was such a good rider. I was a little nervous about loaning her kitty, but she did everything she was asked to do, and she's taken really good care of her. I think they can finish out the week together. There was a gasp from Kitty's stall, and Paige gave Cody's arm a little squeeze, indicating that he'd done well. Her eyes grew moist, and she whispered, I just love that girl. Moving into the stall with Annie May, Paige unhooked the tie-down and cinch before pulling the saddle off the horse. Cody leaned against the wall, content to watch. So Brenna's mom said there is a summer junior rodeo circuit that starts in two weeks. They have three rodeos a year. One per month. And there's a banquet in the fall. I think it would be a good place for Addison to try competing. The blood that had been coursing hot through Cody's veins as he watched Paige's elegant movements suddenly went cold. I don't think so. What? Why not? I don't think she's ready, replied Cody. Though he knew it was a lie. Addison was more than ready to compete, and that's what scared him the most. 
I disagree. She has more control than most kids her age. Rodeo's in her blood, Cody. Cody shoved away from the wall. That's exactly why she won't rodeo. I want to. Addison was suddenly in the stall, staring up at him with her big brown eyes. Cody brushed her hair off her face. My answer is no. You're so mean. Addison took a step back. You never let me to do anything fun. She turned quickly. Addison. Paige spoke with a calmness Cody couldn't come close to. Is Kitty taken care of? Addison stopped, but didn't turn. I know you're upset, but you can't leave your horse saddled. No matter how angry you are, you have to take care of her. Understand? Addison nodded and stomped back to Kitty's stall. Cody gave Paige a questioning look. Paige shook her head. They heard grunting, a couple sniffs, and the sound of a saddle hitting the floor. I'll go. Paige moved around him and entered Kitty's stall. Her voice was like oil over a bubbling pot with Addison and Cody. I'll take your saddle to the tack room while you brush her down, okay? Okay. Sniff. Paige passed the door and smiled at Cody. Before she got back, Addison had hung the brush on the peg and dashed to the house without saying goodbye. He hated having her mad at him, and she'd never yelled. Never. Where had his quiet, reserved child disappeared to? Or was this spirited thing the true Addison? If she was this passionate, it was all the more reason to keep her out of rodeo. Cody fought against the building frustration. Why couldn't anyone see that he was just wanted to keep his little girl safe? Paige heard Addison's distinct clump-clump as she left and shook her head. Addison had matured since her exposure to horses, and even today the girl had been relaxed with the other campers. She'd gravitated toward Brenna, a sweet little thing with blonde hair and a ready smile. When Maria came into the picture, it was like the three musketeers had finally found one another. Their giggles and whispers warned of sleepovers and late nights. This was the environment Addison was comfortable in. Not dance class or piano lessons or art studio. The barn was her natural habitat. Cody had to see that. She slipped into Annie Mae's stall and found a saddle thrown over the high wall and Cody brushing down the mare. I didn't know you knew how to unsaddle a horse. Cody kept his chin down. I used to love to go riding. His voice was deep with memories. Used to? Once Kylie died, there didn't seem much point in it. Paige moved beside him. I can imagine there didn't seem much point in anything after that. Cody gave her that look. The one that asked, how did you know? She shrugged. There wasn't. Except for Addison. She became my sole purpose. Paige slipped the bridle off of Annie Mae. She's pretty upset at you right now. Cody moved around the back of the horse, his shoulder brushing against her so she knew he was there and wouldn't spook. He didn't respond. You want to tell me why you won't let her rodeo? I mean, I can guess, but I'd like to hear it from you. Cody turned his back to her so he faced the saddle. He ran his hand down the stirrup. Kylie was on her way to a rodeo when she was hit by a trucker who had fallen asleep at the wheel. They said she died on impact. Not even a chance to fight for life. May June was in the trailer. Her neck broken, just like Kylie's. He shuddered. Addison was just getting over a cold, and I wanted to ask Kylie to skip the rodeo and stay home. Just this once. But I knew how much she loved it and I wanted her to be happy, so I encouraged her to go. I told her, we'll be fine. He snorted. Rodeo was as much a part of her as Addison and I. If she hadn't had to compete. If she didn't love it so much. She might still be here. He threw the brush against the wall, and Annie May snorted and pranced. Why? Why didn't I ask? Why didn't I give her the choice? 
Paige moved beside Cody and placed her hand on his shoulder. She'd ignored her intuition to offer him physical comfort all week, but at the sight of his anguish, she couldn't hold back any longer. Even if it meant losing a part of her heart. She always had a choice, Cody. His shoulders rose and fell, swelling like a balloon. She didn't choose to die. No, but you can't carry this. This one isn't on you. Cody flipped around, his face contorted with pain. Do you know what the pastor said at the funeral? He said God called Kylie home. How could a loving God do that us, to her? How could he possibly think he needed her more than Addison and I do? Tell me. You always have the answers. Tell me, what's God's purpose in this? Paige closed her eyes. She wrapped her arms around his middle and clung to him, wishing her arms could hold him together as he was falling apart. After a moment, his hands trailed across her back and he pulled her close, his gasp slowing. He buried his face in her hair and held on. Paige swallowed. I don't know the mind or will of the Lord, Cody. Any more than you do. She paused, and a thought popped into her head. But I do know life isn't a contest in longevity. What? His voice was muffled by her hair, and he nuzzled deeper, his breath warm and tantalizing on her neck. We don't come to earth with the goal to stay the longest. We come, we do our work, and we return home. This life isn't the destination, it's the journey to get us to heaven. Some people have shorter trips than others. Kylie was so good, so good-hearted when I knew her, I can't imagine she'd have much more to learn from this life. Cody felt Paige's words burn into his soul. He'd been so focused on the here and now that he hadn't taken the time to look up, to see the horizon, to consider an eternal perspective. What about me and Addison? Paige's hands made soothing circles on his back, and Cody felt himself relaxing into her. The love that he'd seen earlier with the girls, that openness, the fearless gift Paige shared with the world, saturated the atmosphere. That was what had filled in the holes in Cody's heart and soul, that was what inspired Addison's boldness. Paige was a conduit for love. Paige put her hand on Cody's cheek. His skin, so sensitive to her touch, sent shockwaves through his body. Trust in the Lord, Cody. He will provide. Caught up in the burning in his chest and the pounding of his heart, Cody moved his hands onto Paige's hips and leaned back. He gently brushed her hair over her shoulder, loving the softness. I think he already has. Paige's eyes grew warm. I've been so caught up in what was taken that I haven't paid attention to what I've been given. He fingered her hair. You've brought light into our home. Cody didn't need to glance at Paige's lips to know where they were, every part of him was attuned to every part of her. Without hesitation, he pulled her close and covered her mouth with his own. With the touch of their lips and the soft moan in the back of Paige's throat, Cody felt their souls uniting. He'd been so wrong to believe Paige wasn't for him. She had been made for him. They were created from the same material and formed by the same hand. God had provided for him, for both him and Addison, in one beautiful copper-haired angel. Chapter 31 The next night, after a frustrating dinner where Addison refused to speak to him, Cody decided to head out to the barn to watch Paige work with Annie Mae. She hadn't missed a night with the horses, except for Sundays and the evening they'd spent with Gabe and Michaela. Cody admired her work ethic. Even more than that, he admired her skill. Annie Mae would be an even better runner than her mother had been. As he made his way across the parking area, he heard Are You Lonesome Tonight coming from the barn and decided to investigate. He found Christopher in the tack room, oiling a saddle. Cody turned the radio down a few notches, and Christopher's head jerked up. He lifted his shoulder defensively, but said, Hey, boss. Cody squinted and could make out Addison's name on the saddle. He found himself drawn close enough to run his fingers over the leaves and stitching. The saddle was an exact duplicate of Kylie's competition saddle, and suddenly Cody could feel her there. 
Unlike his wedding day, he didn't see Kylie, but she was there nevertheless. Her essence flooded his being, and he felt the love she had for him and for Addison and for Rodeo. It was all mixed up into what she was made of, and Cody knew she would be incomplete without it. He hung his head, understanding that by denying Addison the chance to ride, he was stifling her soul. He nodded once to let Kylie know he understood her message. She wasn't quite done, though. She nudged Cody to remember Christopher. She knew he was lonely and needed family. Cody agreed. Before Kylie left, he heard her whisper goodbye. The word carried a sweet and glorious feeling. Like she'd be able to rest now, knowing they were settled. Cody blinked several times against the moisture in his eyes. With his kiss being a declaration of his intentions with Paige, his family was on a new path. One that wouldn't include Kylie, but wouldn't forget her, either. Clearing his throat twice, Cody reached across the saddle and placed his hand on Christopher's shoulder. I. I'm sorry I kept Addison from you and sent Serenity Stables away. I didn't mean for you to go too. I've been so out of it, out of life. I didn't realize that you, Cody wasn't sure what he was trying to say. He dropped his hand. You know your family, right? Christopher focused on the saddle. I didn't blame you, Cody. Why not? I was in a low place when Kylie found me. I was hooked on prescription painkillers. I'd messed up with a couple horses, but then she came along and acted like I was saving her. She made me feel useful again, like a surrogate father, like I had something worthwhile to give. I think I was her mission in this life, and once she fixed me up, she was done. Is that dumb? Cody thought about what Paige had told him, about looking at life with an eternal perspective. I don't think it's dumb at all. They were silent for a moment, Christopher still working oil into the saddle and Cody just watching. Finally, Christopher said, you'd think Paige would remind me of Kylie because they both love to ride, but they're different. Cody couldn't agree more, but he wanted to hear Christopher's take on things. How so? I don't think Paige is a gatherer like Kylie was. I think she's more of a beacon for lost souls. You know, for a man who doesn't attend church, you sure are waxing spiritual. Christopher shrugged. My point was, I think she's a safe bet if you were so inclined to keep her around. Cody folded his arms and regarded Christopher through heavy-lidded eyes. You think I'm scared? Christopher grinned like a fox in the henhouse. I think you're sweet on her. Cody scratched his chin. I might be. He heard the clip-clop of Annie Mae's shoes in the barn. But don't you dare tell her I told you first. Christopher was still chuckling when Paige popped her head in a second later. She smiled at the two of them and slipped in, leaning against the workbench. You two sound like a couple of old ladies at a church picnic. Cody shot Christopher a warning look, which Paige ignored. Speaking of that, Christopher, I'd like to introduce you to the head of the ladies' auxiliary. She's a real spark of life. Christopher's neck turned red. I guess I wouldn't mind making her acquaintance. Good. Church starts at 10, you can ride with us. She was gone before Christopher could make an excuse, and Cody stared after her with his mouth hanging open. Did she just trick me into going to church? Yep. Cody nodded. But before you shine your boots, I'm going to need your help. Chapter 32 Early Friday evening, long after the final camper had gone home and Paige had cleaned the last of the glue off the kitchen table, she and Addison decided to give Christopher a break and feed the horses. Are you excited to go to Maria's house on Monday? Addison nodded. They have kittens. Should we bring one home? Paige asked. Having a cat around would help keep snakes out of the yard, which would make Cody happy, and Badger was so congenial Paige believed he'd adapt to having a cat around in no time. Addison shook her head. Maria says they're too small. Well, maybe we can pick out our favorite and I'll ask Taylor to reserve it for us. Yeah. Addison skipped ahead. 
Paige's heart lifted. This was the first time outside of camp that the girl had shown any spark of joy since Cody put his foot down over the rodeo issue. Paige didn't agree with his decision. Not only was it made out of fear, but it was holding Addison back. She hoped that over time, Cody would change his mind. They had just entered the barn when a loud ahuga startled them both. Uncle Noah! Paige smiled. Since the night he'd babysat Addison, or filled her with so much junk food she had a stomachache the next morning. Addison had added uncle to Noah, and Paige loved it. Noah's truck lumbered down the lane, their old horse trailer behind. Paige held Addison's hand and kept her just inside the barn doors as Noah made a big circle. Who's that? Addison pointed to a second truck. Paige shielded her eyes. That's Christopher. He too was pulling a trailer, and he followed Noah's ark in the yard to pull alongside the restored Ford. What on earth? asked Paige as she spied a third truck and trailer making their way into the yard. Addison bounced on her toes, the anticipation in the air palpable. Noah opened his door and waved. Addison ripped free of Paige's hold and dashed into his arms for a spin. Paige gasped as Cody got out of the third truck. A brand new heavy-duty Ford F-250 quad cab. The trailer behind it was white with blue detailing that matched the truck perfectly. It was a beautiful set, but her eyes were glued to Cody and his cowboy hat. Paige felt her knees wobble at the sight. He was so darn sexy in that thing, she thought she'd explode. Trying desperately to get her mind on safer topics especially with her brother and Addison looking on. She asked, what's all this? Cody didn't stop a few feet away, he didn't stop once his arm was around her waist, and he didn't stop after brushing her lips with his once. Three breathless kisses later, Paige gripped his plaid shirt in her hands to remain upright. Cody nuzzled her neck, and she giggled. Rodeo may very well be in Addison's blood, and if that's the case, she'll need a way to get to the venues. You bought a truck and a trailer? asked Paige. It wasn't that big of a deal. He owns both dealerships, griped Noah as he grinned at the two of them. Addison had a smile so big she could have plastered the house with it. Paige placed her hand on Cody's chest and sighed with contentment. This, however, is a big deal, called Christopher as he unloaded matching chestnut maras from the trailer hooked to his truck. Paige scanned the trailers, they were all full. I don't understand. Paige tipped her chin up to meet Cody's gaze. Serenity Stables is coming home, Paige. Chills swept over Paige's arms. She could hardly wrap her head around what this meant and blurted the first thing that came to mind. Do we have enough stalls? Cody threw his head back and laughed. If not, I'll build another barn. Paige pressed her palm to forehead. Cody, I, I am floored. What changed your mind? Cody brushed a kiss over her temple. Love. Paige went still. He'd kissed her in front of her brother and his daughter and God and everybody, but to say the word, the word loaded with commitment and meaning and promises and forevers, was a statement that went straight to Paige's heart. I love you, Paige. I think I loved you the first time I laid eyes on you. He chuckled. I'm not any closer to understanding God's will, but I know you are meant to be Addison's mother. Paige dipped her head. That was it, then. He still saw her as just a mom. Cody moved his hands to her cheeks and lifted her face. And my wife. I just took a little longer to see it than Addison did. He got down on one knee and Paige thought her heart would burst. I want to do it right. I want to meet your family and ask your father for your hand. I want to have the wedding of your dreams. Too overcome to speak, Paige tipped Cody's hat back on his head and kissed him with everything she had. If that's a no, I can't wait for a yes. Cody grinned against her lips. Paige laughed and finally said yes. I love you, Cody. They kissed again, Paige wondering if she could ever get enough of Cody's pepper and passion kisses. The sound of horses moving past and a few whistles didn't break through their circle. 
It was Addison throwing her arms around both of them that had Paige and Cody laughing. Christopher came forward with a stunning roan that caught Paige's attention. She followed them into the barn. Who is this? she asked. That's my horse. Cody took the lead rope. Christopher tipped his hat and went out to finish unloading with Noah. The stalls were filling up fast. Your horse? Cody patted the horse affectionately. I've missed you, Sultan. Sultan? asked Addison. The horse began sniffing Cody all over. See, he's always looking for treasure. Cody pulled an apple out of his back pocket and fed it to Sultan. Cody's face lit up. Addison, let's go for a ride. Addison tore into the tack room, her purple boots smacking away. I'll get my saddle. Cody turned to Paige. She grinned. I'll get Annie Mae. Cody hooks his arm around her middle to keep her from leaving. That won't be necessary. Sultan here can carry us both. Paige snuggled her back against his chest, his chin resting on her shoulder. I like the idea of riding double. Hmm, Cody kissed her ear. I think we are a perfect fit. Paige agreed. I've always felt like this is where I need to be. You are needed and wanted forever, my love. At his words, Paige melted against him. Chapter 33 Nine months later. Paige carried two bowls of chips out to the patio, where two folding tables held enough food to feed all the horses in the barn. Or Paige's family. Cody was busy arranging paper plates and cups at one end. He winked rakishly and mouthed tomorrow. Paige's face flamed. Tomorrow indeed. Tomorrow they would head to the chapel and renew their vows in front of friends and family. Addison was beside herself over being a flower girl. She and Maria were going to walk down the aisle, scattering daisy petals. Paige had originally ordered rose petals, but Addison insisted they use daisies, just like she'd had in her first wedding bouquet, and Paige thought it was a wonderful idea. Paige took a moment to survey the group. She and Cody had opted for a relaxed rehearsal dinner, which quickly morphed into a swimming party once her brothers caught sight of the pool. They were in the deep end, doing their best to drown each other. Paige shook her head at their antics. Her sisters were in the shallow end, throwing coins and diving down to retrieve them. Addison, Maria, and Brenna blended in easily. They'd been able to get Addison into the charter school Taylor recommended, and all year there had been three sets of pigtails running around the arena, through the house and barn, and falling asleep in front of the latest princess movie. The school had a special reading program that was doing wonders for Addison. Mom and Dad were in the hot tub. Dad had the massage jets going, and honestly, this was the most relaxed Paige had seen him since she'd confessed her secret wedding. He hadn't spoken to her for three weeks, and only relented when she asked him to walk her down the aisle. She hadn't meant to steal that moment from him, and after Cody explained the feelings a father had for his oldest daughter, she wanted to make up for it in the worst way. Christopher sat in the corner with Vicky. They went out every other Saturday, insisting that they were keeping it casual and had no intention of becoming fodder for the church gossip circle, but Paige saw the way they snuck looks at each other across the Sunday school classroom. Cody, having finished with the plates, stood behind her and wrapped his arms across her midsection. He propped his chin on her shoulder. Tomorrow can't come fast enough for me. Me neither, replied Paige. They decided to put off the wedding until after the spring rodeo season. Addison had done really well on Kitty. She'd won a buckle in barrels and cash in poles. Paige estimated she'd be ready to ride Annie Mae in a couple of years and planned to give her the horse for a birthday present. Cody had offered to buy Annie Mae back, but Paige had refused. Addison is my girl, she'd said. Cody had grown thoughtful. That's a lot of horse for an eight-year-old. But if anyone can handle her, it would be Addison. She has rodeo in her blood from Kylie, and in her heart because of you. She's every bit as much yours as she was Kylie's. Paige had teared up. 
and you say I always know what to say. Cody had kissed her tears away, and Paige, knowing she was right where she was supposed to be, matched him kiss for kiss. Cody's wedding present to Paige was already in the barn. He bought a roan, every bit as beautiful as his own, for her training business. He was so gorgeous, Paige didn't know if she'd ever be able to sell him. Caught up in her thoughts, Paige was startled when the pastor asked everyone to settle down so they could bless the food. After the prayer, a line formed and Paige was soon busy making sure there was enough food for everyone. Noah saddled up between Paige and Cody. You don't mind if I cut out a few minutes early tomorrow, do you? Hot date? asked Paige. Noah shook his head. Job interview. Cody grunted, and Paige bit back her smile. He'd been trying for months to get Noah on at the trailer dealership. With who? demanded Cody. BMB. Noah gave them a smug grin. Paige slapped his shoulder. What? Noah rubbed his arm. With Cody pestering me about getting out on my own and making some real money, I got to thinking, why should the girls have all the fun? I called Pamela and asked if they needed grooms. She said to come in for an interview. He smirked. Paige considered him. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Why not? Noah looked truly offended. Because now that I know how good a marriage can be, I don't want you to settle for anything less. She moved around him and snuggled into Cody's side. It's only for a year. Famous last words, said Cody. He kissed Paige's head. Noah raised his soda can. To famous last words. Taking a large gulp, he patted his stomach. Hand me a plate, will you? Paige reached across Cody and picked up a paper plate. Cody didn't release her, and Paige's whole body was alive with the nearness of him. He kissed her shoulder and then her neck, and finally found her lips. You two are burning the napkins, said Gabe. Paige leaned her head on Cody's chest. Leave them alone. Michaela smacked Gabe on the rear with the back of her empty plate. Congratulations, you two. Thanks, she and Cody said in unison. And thanks for babysitting while we're away, Paige added. Michaela and Gabe had offered to spend the week in their home with Addison. Michaela had confided in Paige that they were considering adopting a child. This week would be a good trial run. Are there any more chips? asked Joseph from down the table. Paige rolled her eyes. Her brothers could eat. I'll go get some. I'll help. Cody hooked his finger in her belt loop and followed her inside. Once they were out of view of the party, he pulled back on her loop and spun her into his arms. His kisses were slow and thoughtful. I feel like there's something on your mind. Paige ran her fingers over his chin. Cody had been so easygoing during all the wedding preparations, it almost made her nervous. Do you find all this anticlimactic after having been married before? I know you've already had a big wedding. And I can't help but wonder if, since we've been married for a while, that this is kind of silly for you. Cody picked up a strand of her hair and let it fall through his fingers. The gentle sensation sent a thrill through Paige. You're so amazing, I find myself sitting back and just watching you go. But that doesn't mean I'm not highly invested in the outcome. So you're happy? I'm more than that. Cody kissed her lightly. What's the word for content and happy and excited all rolled into one? Joyful. Yes. That is what I am. He kissed her again. If you two are done in here, said Joseph through the open door. Paige grinned, grabbed two bags of chips, and tossed them at her brother. We'll be out when we're good and ready. She ran her fingers lightly up Cody's neck and pulled him down to kiss him good. Joseph grunted and shut the door. Paige and Cody emerged as the solar lights began to glow and just before her family was ready to leave. She took quite a ribbing for missing the meal, but she didn't mind, she'd enjoyed plenty of kisses to help her keep the smile on her face, despite the teasing. Cody laced their fingers together, 
and she whispered tomorrow into his ear. Tomorrow and forever, he replied. You've been listening to The Country Bride A Billionaire Marriage Broker's Marriage Romance Novel Written by Lucy McConnell Narrated by Christina Dimmick all right. I hope you enjoyed my breakout novel, The Country Bride, A Billionaire Marriage Broker's Romance. And I hope you're looking forward to learning about Paige's brother next week in the Protective Groom book, which is really fun. So if you have any comments, leave them below. I read all of my comments. Well, <laughs> I read all of your comments and sometimes I even comment back <laughs> um, and hit the subscribe button so that you are alerted every time I upload a new book and hit the like button because that helps other listeners find this channel and these good books. And yeah, if you want to get in touch with me, um, you can email me. You can find me on my webpage, authorlucymcconnell.com. And I hope you have a really, really fantastic weekend. See you later.